be very very difficult for them to do anything from this moment in time um and also last lap Rogers did get two seconds quicker, but um, Kalpanen leading the race also got two seconds quicker. So the gap between them was 11 seconds again on that previous lap. As a Peter goes all the way oh. around the outside, and wow, that was close. But that's also just to, due to the fact that he's so slow. Yeah, exactly. And you can see a bit of a shake of the head. You can see he's looking a little bit flustered, trying to see all the data as quick as he can. Eyes darting all over the screen. Um, he's trying to read all the data as quick as possible whilst trying to juggle this circuit. You've got about five minutes left before we uh, dump you off uh, and out of here, Cam. But also, we do have five minutes. If you're watching on YouTube, by the way, we do have about five minutes before you have to uh, jump over to part two. It should automatically redirect you there. But uh, just in case, uh, I will let you know now. If you are going for a cup of tea and you don't want to miss anything, um, go now collect it, be back in five minutes and then you'll be able to see a switch over. Or you can just switch over and then go and collect your tea or whatever. If not, you'll come back and you'll be watching some weird video about what if the entire planet was turned into gold or something. I don't know. YouTube. <laughs> the 3 a.m. moment um, when you've got an exam the next day. Oh, something so like that. bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't even explain some of the videos I'm watching at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm just like, why, why am I watching this? About how if you throw a ball down under the table and it bounces and it hits the top of the table, it'll actually bounce back. When why am I watching that video? It's it is kind of interesting, but why is the uh, why you're watching is the uh, is the important factor there. As uh, we're still seeing Rogers there getting overtaken uh, by multiple cars. Um, so definitely not the like right decision. Their teammate has come into the pit lane, though. Let's see if De Jong, because obviously he's pit much later, so is De Jong then going to actually decide maybe it's still time to go to the slicks? Or is he going to realise, no, wets are the right time? But because he's gone later, he's going to have less time on the wets. So Hawkins did message me and said uh, that he reckons it might be that Coanda are trying to use the 8 car as a bit of a dummy for the 18 to see what's right on strategy. But I would agree. Better. Yeah, but then they might be. Yeah, this, this is why I was like, I would agree, but I just... Even even if the eight was in a better spot, and maybe they think the eighteen is going to run better for the end of the race, or I don't know, you wouldn't just completely sacrifice one of your cars unless you're absolutely crazy. Um, so Seb, maybe you are correct. Uh, for a little while, by the way, uh, the reason why I didn't want to read that out is because I was like, well, yeah, Williams don't want to give away their strategy, and I was like, that hasn't been a part of Williams for a year now. <sighs> oh my god, my brain is still very much in the past. Um, oh yeah <laughs> wrong team yeah yeah uh where is it guild it is guild yeah, yeah he's, uh, he's gone to guild hasn't he 18 is on the wets no i shock. would say proper decision especially as he's come out in second place so now he's the same as everyone else and he's still in a good position so maybe the, the eight was but the eight should have been somewhere in that gap uh in between and then it should have been you know uh a two three for kwanda not a uh a two five and uh ever getting lower <laughs> yeah indeed so uh like i say interesting interesting calls here um but the, like i say at least for one car i mean they're out on the right tires then even then this is like too late who knows uh, an absolute disaster uh for the uh, for the vrs commander number eight um uh, to the point where they're not that far away from going a lap down um which will be not great for them uh trying to work out uh the number six this is looking at the 18 is fair enough um the number six the race leader williams esports chill blast car uh is currently running down into the hairpin at turn six the vrs coanda car is maybe a third of a lap ahead that's how close they are to going a lap down well great not the ideal situation um but then it was their choice and they took the risk sometimes it works if you remember to um nico hilkenberg uh back in the day and then his now teammate uh magnuson they uh it sometimes works out going to the six at the right time but in an endurance race you have less uh choice sometimes because they had to come in because of fuel and they decided to uh to choose to go onto the slicks at that time but uh, what lap is he on of the stint? He's already on lap six of the stint. Um, so, you know, it's 12 minutes ago now. And look how wet the track still was. So I think you're right, Lewis. As we get further and further into the uh, rain being on the service, people will learn how long these things take.
Exactly. We are 60 seconds away from booting Cam out of here again. A reminder, the uh, part two, by the way, is live at the moment. If you want to manually switch over, if you are watching on YouTube, if you're watching on Twitch, um, don't press a button. Don't go anywhere because we're not. Uh, well, Cam is. Um, what have you made of your uh, of your four hours of, of mixed conditions here at Sebring? Uh, uh, yeah, it's been interesting. It has actually, and I'm glad I managed to see a uh, a dry to wet transition, and we also had a bit of a wet to dry at the beginning part, and also working with our Juno and yourself, Lewis, has been uh, it's been Aww. good, uh, been good fun again to see this uh, this top split action, and um, just the the last note is obviously Williams. How good are they in these special events? And I do hope, you know, for their sake, that they go on to uh, to win the race, Contest guys. Um, but we'll definitely uh, see them in the future, I'm sure. They're just doing such a good job uh, so far in these races. Yes, indeed. So about halfway done in the race, Comrade Modger jumping out of the commentary booth. Uh, we'll kick him out. Uh, we'll probably see him again at some point in the near future, but not during this race. It's fine. Like you say, Williams are leading in both the GTPs and the LMP2 category. Uh, and of course, we do have the number two car, the Drago Racing one, leading in the GTDs. Uh, joining me for the next couple of hours will be one Mr. Joey Tebben, who's on for a little four-hour stint himself. You've got two hours of me, two hours of, uh, of Arjuna. Um, I, I won't be uh, doing a weather report, so that's fine. Darn. I'm going I'm to leave now. I'm so disappointed. I expected <laughs> two weather reports. No, no, no. I'm not, I, can't, I can't replace Arjuna like that. Um, how you doing? Have you been watching the race? Been, been paying attention I've been watching all? a little bit. I've been, I've been keeping track of the transitions between the wets and the dries. I've been watching the strategies and the unfortunate reality of this strategy for VOS, VRS Coanda not working out for the number eight. I also applaud the strategy. It was worth a shot, but it just didn't work out. It's kind of... With this new style of racing, with this wet racing, you get a little bit tricked when the sun comes out. It looks so bright. The track looks dry. It gets matted out in places, but unfortunately, that water seeps into the asphalt. It's wetter than it looks for a longer time than you think. And now after, how long has it been? About 15 minutes since they last made that pit stop. The times have finally started to equalize. The uh, the eight is down into the two minute or into the, the 159s rather. So they're, they're not losing time anymore, but all that time they lost over the last 15 minutes. Unfortunately, I think they're going to learn from that and uh, they'll have to make all that time back the old fashioned way in the second half of the day. Yeah, they're, they're going to, they, they're going to get to the point, the VRS Quantico. Well, for one, they don't have to stop. So they'll gain that time back um, to go under the slicks, whereas everyone else does have to stop to go under the slicks. And there will be a portion of this where they'll probably be running about three or four seconds a lap, maybe even five seconds a lap faster than those on the wet tyres. That's fine, um, because that's, that's basically what happened earlier on in the race. You know, when you're on the slicks, if you've gone onto them a little bit earlier, you will be lapping um, significantly faster. That's fine. The problem was is they were losing 11, 12, 13 seconds a lap. So for every one lap they did on the slicks, um, uh, they were losing two laps of what they can gain back, uh, if you follow my logic. Now, what that means is if you're in the Williams Esports Chill Blast car, you've actually got quite a lot of time to kind of like leave the circuit at the moment to really dry out so that it's safer uh, for you going on. Here's a replay to see what's happened. Ooh, to the Simify LMP2 car, out to the barrier. I think we're going to see quite a lot of this, Joey. A lot of cars binning it off. They did a lot in the previous wet to dry sequence. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of that because... Again, it's just drivers getting used to their cars, not driving the same way they used to. This is not like when you're driving in the rain on the road. You're going at about 200 miles per hour through some of these corners. There's going to be less grip. It's going to be different than you're used to uh, tackling at Sebring. And even these drivers who have probably done thousands of laps of practice since this rain was first released, they've done this practice specifically around Sebring in these setups it's just such a wild card. The, the track changes with every lap. The level of grip changes with every, with every lap. I'm glad we have this because now even the best in the world where sometimes they can get locked in and minimize those mistakes, they're finally being forced into mistakes. They're finally human again for the first time in a while. Yeah, and they will be probably, like say, for another six months and then they get used to it and then it'll be as if nothing's happened. Um, classic. That's when we introduce snow. Yes, and I am all for that. Um, and then after that, I don't know, we'll introduce fire or something, aren't we? We'll, we'll, figure, it, we'll figure it out. Um, but no, it, like I say, it is, it is very interesting. It has been a, a great equalizer. This, by the way, is the battle for seconds at the moment in GTD. It's a Drago 1-2 um, with the number two car running in first position, the four car running in second. Marla Racing Team, the uh, previous leader is currently running in third position as there's the 26 off and into the barrier they are the first casualty of this 
wet to dry uh, sequence into sunset i promise you they will not be the last that corner a bit hard earlier on in the race we had the apex racing team car in the lmp2 category go into it we had both the team redline uh, gtps uh, go into it earlier on what a disaster day it's been for them uh, we will see a lot more visited it is a very hard corner at the best of times in these conditions it's up to 11. It really is. And all of these GTD runners as well, they also tell you how early that decision was for VOS, VRS Coanda to come in and put on those dry tires. You saw Ryan Barneveld in the Mala Lamborghini come down pit lane. You saw Gustavo Ariel in the red line number 70 as well. They also put on the wet tires. They are not ready to switch to slicks, which is an interesting choice because GT3 cars at the end of the day, a little bit heavier. They're not going to be so affected by the uh, by the wet as a lighter weight car would. Doesn't have as much gravity to press it down against the contact patch on the ground. But even in GT3, these drivers not ready to switch to the wets. Still just that little bit too slippery. And you can see the rooster tails coming out of every class of vehicle here. It's still wet on track. It might look dry in a couple places. It might look like there's a dry line. But even that dry line isn't especially dry yet. It's still slower yeah, exactly. than uh, just sticking out in the wet tires. Yeah, I mean, look at it around here. Cunningham Collier uh, down towards Tower. Still very wet. Um, Josh Rogers finally, by the way, in the previous lap was faster than the race leader. It's taken him that long uh, on the sides. The best way to see how wet the circuit is uh, still and how narrow that dry line is at one point. Look, there, were, there was a head-on shot at T1. Um, going into that first corner uh, when we were seeing them come through a little bit earlier on. We'll probably get it as well when they come around this time. Um, that showed perfectly how narrow the racing line is and what happens when you make a mistake because you're just in the puddles and if you're on slick tyres and you hit that, you are taking a one-way trip at high speed into the barrier and most likely out of the second of the VCA Grand Slams of 2024. And that's another dynamic that we've literally never seen in one of these events before. It's not the same track anymore. We always talk in these multi-class events about how it essentially becomes another track. You've got about 50 extra chicanes to deal with every single lap. Well, now not only do you have those extra chicanes, you have chicanes that lead into puddles of death that surely mean you're going straight off the track. It's, it's Sebring 3 now, finally. It's not just Sebring 2 anymore. We're, we're getting even deeper into the series. Again, I'm uh, I'm I'm all for. It. I'm uh, again. I'm very intrigued. I'm I'm enjoying this. I have enjoyed it. The thing is, once it dries up, uh, this is kind of the risk of, of basically what happens in this uh, is that we will enter podcast mode. Um, so if you aren't ready yeah. for podcast, we'll be mode, back to Sebring One, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. If you if you aren't ready for a podcast over the final couple of hours of the race, I am very sorry. It might well be like that. It might be very exciting. I don't know. It could be. Um, but the thing is, when it comes to wet weather and the changes, the GTDs, by the way, are in pit lane, Gustavo Ariel and Ryan Barnavel getting ready for those slick tyres. We were talking about this in when the rain stopped in the first portion. We were like two hours into the race, hour and a half into the race, and we already had like seven or eight basically retirements we already had um i think it was only like the top eight or nine in the gtps on the lead lap now if it was dry we'd still be dealing with eight or nine gtps on the lead lap now like comfortably um because it would be a lot of time we wouldn't have anywhere near the amount of retirements um because that's what this circuit does it bites especially when it rains doesn't i just looked at ryan barneveld's tires very closely as he drove off pit lane they have indeed put on the slicks lewis Barneveld's put on the slicks, oh, yeah. Gustavo Ariel's put on the slicks, and have to imagine that Johnny Vecchio behind them has done exactly the same thing. But there's no dry line on pit exit. He's driving through the puddles. Those tires are soaking wet right now as he breaks for turn three. You can see there is a little bit of a dry line through the middle of the corner. He's got to send it wide through turn five, go around the, uh, the water. It's almost like dirt track racing where you're avoiding all the stuff that's built up in the place where you want to go. You do have to make sure, though, not to touch the curbs. You want to touch the curbs through the exit of the hairpin, through that uh, previous section, through turns two, three, and four, and five, but they're soaking wet. Water on paint, you can slip on a crosswalk when you're just walking in your shoes, let alone when you're in a Lamborghini. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, the reason why you're that that... that drying line is, is kind of in some places offline uh, in a sense is because obviously when you're on the wet tires you're driving offline uh, quite a lot to obviously it's where the where the superior grip is so even though you're in this scenario where the fastest line you'd want to be is on the normal race line because you're on the slick tires you can't quite do it because of you have to bring the car onto the wet stuff because that's where it's dry. it's so complicated you have to be so adaptable in these conditions and just let the let the circuit dry up bit by bit you can see here on pit lane uh, Mitchell De Jong uh, is in 
pit lane uh, for the VRS Coranda team, as is the Williams Esports BenQ car, Alexander Spets. Whoa, that's a safety car! It's not doing anything, don't worry. Uh, Alexander Spets leaving uh, the pit lane on the slick tyres. Ate Kalpinen also brings it in. So Josh Rogers is going to be in second position. It's about what the gap's going to be. It was 20 seconds, or really 25 seconds before the pit stops. How big is it going to be? I suspect it might be quite large. I do wonder what the pace advantage is going to be for Atta Kalpinen now because he's no longer Wata Kalpinen. We, we have to find another name for him. He just has to go back to regular old Atta now and, and hope that his regular old skills are going to do him well. Disappointing. Enough. Disappointing. Well, we do need to think of nicknames for various people. Um, obviously, with the Team Redline ones, we've got quite a lot of them, like Silly Lully. We can do Alexander uh, Spitz. Alexander Spitz, yeah. I mean, maybe. Uh, I don't know what else I'd call him, though. Um, I don't know. We, what else, what else is, he's, he's got what else is water his, words exactly exactly yeah, yeah but this is the thing is that some of the water words you, you kind of like it almost sounds like an in, insult like Alexander Spitz sounds like an insult <laughs> that just sounds uh, like a sentence yeah, yeah. What's he? What's he doing? Uh, exactly. Gap's gone out. I will say, Josh Rogers has done really good to make sure that it's only effectively over that entire sequence. Despite all the time he was lo losing lap on lap, he's only really lost about ten to fifteen seconds compared to where he was. That's not yeah. bad at all. I mean, thirty-five seconds with six hours to go at Sebring. That's that's basically nothing. That could change very, very quickly. This is going to be a first real test, though. Into the brakes, into the hairpin for the uh, the Duracell Williams Esports number six, and Otto Kalpin's making it look easy. I don't think he's too worried about this transition right now, but it can bite, and it can bite surprisingly. You can't really fight against aquaplaning or hydroplaning, depending on which side of the uh, the hydro slash aqua ocean you're on. Seems to be in total control, though, even with those giant rooster tails coming out the back. This level of control, this level of comfortability in the braking zones tells us that I think we are truly in dry mode right now. We're back to Sebring 1 and 2, so for a couple of hours, I think we can probably calm down a little bit, and oh, yeah. uh, I think the drivers are going to be able to calm down a little bit, too. They'll be, they'll be comfortable for a little bit. What side are you on, Hydro or Aqua? I think I'm on the Aquaplane side. Yeah, I mean, I am. I, 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 if if I'm using it in a sentence, I would I would use aquaplane. Like, but I, I will say, hydroplaning does sound way cooler. It sounds cool, but that sounds like that sounds like one of those planes that like lands, lands on a on lake. Water. Yeah, exactly. Like fire and rescue. Which what what are they called? Because the thing is, there's there, there's there, are they called are they called flying boats? I think they're called seaplanes, but I don't know. That, that yeah, could be another thing I where we call them seaplanes and you I guys think, call them flying boats. No, 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 no. I think it is seaplanes, but flying boats sounds way cooler. That sounds incredible. That's yeah, like we shouldn't I, call them helicopters. We should call them flying cars. Yeah, exactly. Um, or death traps. Um, that too. Uh, big fans. <laughs> Literally. Uh, yeah, right. Helicopter invented, by Kine in, uh, invented in Connecticut, by the way. We'll just drop That's that really fun fact for you. Nice. I have only uh, I've not I've not I've not been, I've not been on a helicopter. Uh, I've I've only seen them like like take off next to me once, and I will tell you that was terrifying. That's where you realise how much power a helicopter has. It was at the Assen uh, in Assen for the MotoGP in 2018, um, and I just went for a little explore. And I crossed over the this is after the race. Uh, I crossed over the circuit. It's Mitchell Dion goes straight on GG. The second time he's done that this lap, by the way, um, trying to close down on Dom Hoffman. Um, uh, yeah, I went for a little explore. I crossed over the circuit because post race and all that kind of stuff. I was just kind of seeing what was happening in the pit lane. And, you know, why not? Um, and then when I was trying to walk back over, the way you have to walk back over the circuit, you have to pass basically where the helicopter, where the um, the medical helicopter is, um, which is fine most of the time. But obviously that gets closed off when they have to take off the he medical helicopter, um, which they had to do because the race is over. So they want to get rid of it so they can go and do some other stuff. Blah blah blah. blah. And I stood next to it whilst it took off. And I was like, oh, I'm just going to like video this. I'm stood there looking at it, being like, oh my god. God, the amount of air that thing is pushing around, obviously, but that is scary. That is a lot of power. And all I can think about is what if one of those blades comes loose? You can't help but think about it when you're next. And that was how we lost Lewis McGlade. It's such a shame. This this broadcast would have been so much better if he was oh, here. It, it almost sounds like he is here, but I, I miss it's him weird. every day. I am, uh, yeah, and I'm just uh, uh, this Lewis this McBlade. The... <laughs> that is terrible. There we go. Arjuna uh, will not be happy with you. Um, no, I'm just, I'm an AI generation now. I mean, that's always possible. Exactly. Well, these days it is. Um, but yeah, no, I know Arjuna hates puns, so he'll Good. he'll he'll hate that. Um, by the way, I have looked uh, for the next four hours at least. Uh, dry. 
there is no more rain uh, happening and it like I say it could be that until the end of the race that you know t- will take us into the night it will be night time in four hours uh, around here I'm not sure what time the sun is supposed to set but 8.30 in game you'd have to say probably the sun will at least be dipping or gone down the horizon what is the date oh it's March oh yeah the sun will be gone by that point um, it is actually March in game as well so yeah the sun will be long gone and it's not quite as bad on the east coast anymore we did just switch into daylight savings time so yeah. there's no more seasonal effective depression it's not dark at 5.30 anymore when you walk out of work but it does still get dark around uh, 7.30 8 so yeah around then a couple of hours time it won't only be wet won't only be wet it'll be wet and dark like a guinness uh we'll need to go and see a replay from mitch de jong who is exploring parts of sebring in fact if we could could we cut to him can we cut to oh that's fine he's he's that's fine oh dear he's i thought he'd gone much further than he did there he goes he's exploring parts of sebring i genuinely (laughs) never have been to yeah I, don't know. yeah, I don't know how you really end up out there. I don't know if there was a little bit of contact or if that was just pure aquaplaning that ended up out there. But once he got in that spin, oh, yeah, there was definitely a little bit of contact with an LMP2 car coming into sunset there. But once you're out on the outside there, that's not a racing surface. There's been no vehicular traffic out there to clear the water. So you're essentially like a skimming rock over a lake and you're just a passenger as you as you slide into the wall. He's lucky that was a little bit less worse of a collision than it could have been if that wall was a little bit closer. Honestly, there it is, I, Lewis I, McBlade. A Lewis McBlade. To be fair, it should be a small C, but we're not going to talk about it, that's fine. Um, no, to be, I, I've, I thought, because I was looking at Mitchell Young when that happened, I thought that he'd actually gone straight on and had cleared the barrier and like gone down some like oh, weird no. escape road Like or that something. Camaro in that YouTube video where right, he ended exactly. up on the, uh, in the hotel? Exactly. I, th- I thought it'd like, like it'd gone off that way, but no, clearly not. It's fine. Mostly because I wanted to go and explore that then. Um, but no, it's actually really disappointing. I always, you can't do it on iRacing. Um, but we used to always do it um, when it came to me doing some 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 race. This is normally in like in other sims like with with uh, when you have like custom built circuits. The Sherrod Esports blue car, by the way, on the uh, on the right hand side, um, just basically kind of drives into Mitchell De Jong a little. They, they kind of come together a little bit, but um, that is De Jong out into the barrier with now a very broken uh, Porsche 963. Uh, but yeah, we always used to do this thing, but like so you do all your practice, you know, your hundreds, whatever, how many ever many laps of practice um, for the event. And then obviously you've got like the, the the actual practice for the event just before it, so like the two hours or whatever it is where you warm yourself up, and that's fine for about an hour. But then you get really bored, and then we just always used to start exploring the track. So we'd find a way of flipping ourselves over the barrier as Dominic Hoffman's going to go straight on whilst battling with Alexander Spets, uh, and Spets is going to be able to clear off into the distance now. Big moments as Dominic Hoffman uh, tries to rejoin. Yeah, it was a little bit like that as we would flip over the circuit and go and explore what was happening. Yeah, Can't you thought that. the asphalt on the outside of Sunset was wet for uh, Josh Rogers to be sliding around imagine ending up in the wet grass and ending up yeah. in the mud here where there's even more of a risk as one of the Audis takes a backwards trip into the tires and I think Dominic Hoffman might be coming onto the scene just a couple of corners after that not really target fixation the Audi was very much out of the way but once again showing that it might be slightly dry it might be possible to make it around in the slicks but the second you have one little bobble the second you end up being the slightest bit out of control suddenly the water takes control of your vehicle and you can just you can just enjoy the trip into the wall and hope it's not too bad yeah indeed that i mean like the, again the grass is going to remain pretty wet for a long time so if you do go out onto there at some point in the race yeah you're still probably visiting a barrier um but uh, either way the 119 by the way the uh, pgz car is into pit lane as well from uh, second in lmp2 uh, as well as uh, a couple of other cars yes yeah, so we're at that point where just there's, there's going to be a few people in pit lane to be fair i think joshua rogers isn't a million miles away from coming into pit lane obviously because he did pit significantly earlier i would suspect as this circuit does get drier and drier that portion 93 is going to get stronger let's see what happens happened on this replay we're gonna get quite a lot of these this is obviously uh, what happened to the drago racing car so it's just committed to the outside just catch that puddle yeah i mean it was far less uh, far less bad than it really could have been and he was lucky kept the car rolling i don't think he got in the throttle while he was in the grass and got it back on the asphalt as quickly as he could you do have to be careful a little bit more in open wheel cars when you're dealing with very very wet tracks and wet grass because you can actually get stuck in the mud now if you spin up the tires too fast the car can dig into the mud and uh, you're basically you're basically forced to tow at that point which 
is another realistic bit of uh, realistic bit of physics here on iRacing now because that's exactly what happens if it's swamped in the mud on a real racetrack and you're digging the tires in full throttle, you're not getting out of there in real life either. Yeah, like I said, commentating on uh, real motorsports championships in the UK. I commentate on, on, on GB3, which is uh, open wheels uh, in the UK. Um, and I, I can tell you that definitely does happen. I saw it quite a lot last year uh, of drivers ending up in the mud, in a gravel trap or something in the wet as Simify uh, are exploring a whole new part of Sebring there uh, in their LMP2 category. They have gone right down the escape road. They won't be the last one to do so, but... I, I think just that was a, actually the uh, the Camaro escape road potentially really from the YouTube was. video. It's just it's gone. Yeah, they hey, they're back. They have found their way back onto the race surface, and also I don't believe with any damage. So at least there's that. Let's see what happened. Straight Bye. on. That's actually not the Camaro escape road. It's not the hairpin, but it's a, it's a whole other place. It's kind of like how on GTA, where to unlock the map, you actually have to drive there for the first right. place. I think we're we we might have unlocked all of Sebring finally. We might have covered all of it today. We've, we've certainly used all of the escape roads, that's for sure. Um, unfortunately, we've not uh, got far enough into the game to unlock the next island yet, so there's still all uh, barricades and stuff all over the place. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, it's just... Yeesh. Just uh, some, some big, big moments there coming in. But, uh, oh, did he hit the barrier there? He did. Don't that was tell, a... don't it's tell me. It's not going well. Don't tell me you've locked up, gone straight down an escape road, avoided the barrier, and then you hit the barrier a few corners later in the final corner. My God. How? I think Lucas Camba Moreno wants us to take the camera away from him. We're putting too much pressure on. We're, we're, making, him, we're making him choke a little bit. Which is different to this commentator's broadcaster's curse. There is a thing where it's like, if you know the camera's on you, that you do, like your heart starts racing a little bit. So it's fine. I remember once I was uh, I was running in. Uh, anyway, we'll see we'll see them drive straight into the barrier. Uh, I was running in the uh, in the lead of a race, and I started thinking about what I was going to say in the post race interview. Then binned it really hard. Uh, just out two wheels was on the wet stuff there on the uh, on the left. Try to keep your foot in. Bounce off the barrier. Yeesh. A little bit of a bonk. And at that point, it's kind of like when you're in an indie car on an oval and you're in the dirty air, you're approaching the wall. Once you once you realize you're a little bit too committed, yeah. the only thing you could have done is probably think back about five oh. seconds earlier and they're off again in the same place as before not quite as far off as the last time but the mistakes stack up when you uh, when you get in a rhythm like this you're getting the tires very very wet you're probably heating them up as well again as you're getting back on track and trying to get heat in them as as fast as humanly possible when you start to make one mistake in the wet it is especially difficult to get back in the rhythm and i do feel bad for old uh, old lucas here because yeah, he's, he's having a tough old time of things, and it's not going to get any easier until maybe about 40 minutes from now when the track is completely dry. And it is being viewed by every single person watching this broadcast on uh, RaceBot YouTube, on uh, iRacing's YouTube, on iRacing's Twitch. Um, so sozzles, um, but hashtag blame Dane. Um, oh, he's going, he's going for an overtake anyway, though. He's got a little bit of confidence. Uh, backs out of it. That, I mean, to be fair... I would have respected that so much. It wasn't also, that wasn't an actual move for position. That was just for the lap. They're going to come into pit lane now uh, to get that car repaired. I think I think part of the other offs would, would have been, or the other, the, that, that final off would have been down to the, uh, the maybe some damage. Uh, the 18, by the way, still in pit lane. Uh, another one of the LMP2s came in pit lane just behind this. So um, maybe, maybe, maybe pit lane is fairly busy. We'll look at our race leader in the GTP category, just flying away. Pulled out an extra second on. On Josh Rogers has uh, has Kalpinen. Hey, he might not be Watt to Kalpinen anymore, but he's certainly in control. Here's the Acura under the braking, coming into the same corner that we saw the Simify go off a little bit earlier. And yeah, same thing. Little bit of a lockup. That started to look a little bit more like a dry weather mistake, though. That didn't look like aquaplaning as much as it just looked like a little bit too much speed carried, maybe a little bit too much confidence in uh, thinking the track was slightly grippier than it was and uh, just throwing it off the road into the grass. But no harm, no foul there. Just a little bit of time lost and get to live to fight another day. I mean, you've got to remember when it comes down, we actually see it here as we uh, keep our eye on the, uh, the, the the Williams Esports Chill Blast car. Uh, the problem with, uh, the reason why coming in, the, the braking zone for coming in for turn 10 is, is, is so high is because you're kind of coming across the race circuit. You're not driving across it in, uh, in you know, you're not, bring, you're not coming out of the Fangio uh, S's, bringing it back over to the left-hand side and then getting onto the brakes in a straight line. You're kind of dragging it 
diagonally across uh, the race surface. And when you do that, it's so easy to kind of take the dry line normally, uh, which will take you basically almost out to the grass. Um, and in doing so, clipping a puddle, which will instantly lock that front left. Um, or even giving a little bit too much room to it and then snagging a puddle on the right side, instantly locking the uh, the front right. It's kind of generally where those uh, lockups come from. It's why those are so, you know, so, so tricky. Where it, you know, That's why we see so many problems coming down into the final corner. Because again, the braking zone isn't in a straight line. When it's in a straight line, it's fine, in the, even in the wet. Like, for example, going down realistically into the hairpin at turn six, it shouldn't really be much of a problem um, down there. But those diagonal uh, braking zones where you're effectively trail braking, they're an absolute nightmare in these conditions. And Sebring's difficult enough with that just because of the bumps where you have to think about slightly alternate lines that you would think about otherwise if Sebring was totally repaved and totally flat like it was back when it was uh, first paved as the World War II airfield. But now it, it's almost like a dirt track in that way where you do need to think about where the dry line is when you're dealing with rain. You need to think about where the bumps aren't in terms of getting the tires lifted up and throwing yourself off the road because you can't brake when the tires are in the air. And you also have to think about stuff like this, where you're dealing with all three classes of traffic. Kalpanen's going to get around the uh, the BS LMP2, but the LMP2 later on the brakes. And that is not good news for Atte. He was forced out a little bit wide into the water again. That's a slot in line. And that is the BS competition car that's running five laps down the LMP2 category. Now jumping out of the way of uh, Williams Esports Chill Blast. He's lost out uh, two or three seconds to VRS Commander. Obviously, that's going to ebb and flow. Don't worry about it. Um, but we'll keep our eye on that for more of the, uh, the bigger picture to see what's, uh, what is going to happen in that, uh, in that grouping, in that battle for the race lead. Whether uh, the VRS Commander team are going to be able to drag that one back. At the moment, everything's very calm. Uh, relatively speaking, around Sebring when it comes to positional battles, because there's uh, not really any. It's quite close to third, uh, realistically, in the GTP category. I say quite close. It's, like, it's five seconds between them, whatever it is. Um, so, you know, relatively speaking, it's fairly close. So there's the Williams Esports BenQ car. Uh, Drago Racing is about five seconds behind. Uh, is this your first, uh, obviously, chance to see the new Williams liveries? Uh, thoughts? Um, I mean, I'm a fan. The The leading one, the number six, it's got the silver on the front. I'm a fan of that. And the really? Ben Q car has the purple on the front. I, th I think that's easily differentiable enough. I do miss like the creamy white one that they used to have, but I think they're I think they're good enough. Interesting. The me and I, I, I actually, I quite like them. Uh, I don't know if it's still in the race, but the um, Williams Esports Academy car in the GTD category, in my opinion, is their best one. Um, mostly because, again, the, 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 the sort of like the day glow yellow, almost like lime green-esque. It's, it's Valentino Rossi yellow, basically. Uh, it looks great with the purple. I am not sold on this sort of grey. I think it would look better, but you said silver. I think it would look much better as like silver or even like chrome. I think, I think it's really it's not being good. helped by the fact that we're racing in bad weather, so the sky's gray and yeah. it's reflecting the gray sky on the the slightly matte silver. I think it was a, if it was a sunny day, it might look a little bit better, a little bit shinier. Uh, no, I've, uh, we saw it earlier on in the in the sun. It doesn't. Um, sorry, I'm just I'm just very negative. Instant. No, um, look, will it, it wouldn't be a uh, an iRacing racing special event if I wasn't complaining about some part. Of exactly. Williams livery. Um, thankfully, we don't have the question of you know, brown, orange gate, whatever you want to call it, where uh, I did say it was brown. Uh, Arjuna is 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 slam dunking that the fact that it wasn't brown, but they did change it to a more orange, orange, um, thus proving that they did admit that it wasn't orange enough. Um, and then they did change the entire livery. But they have kept the orange orange. They, I have noticed that they, because they do still have the placey one. And they have made sure that it is as orange as possible. Um, so there's that. Uh, and this and yes, one's we, absolutely gray, by the way. The GTD car, when it's got more of that gray on it and this uh, Sotomuto Audi. Yeah, that's, that's absolutely gray. That's not silver. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, the number board, uh, as you can see, the position, the position board, uh, the position readout, slapped straight over the golf logo. Uh, or really, the golf logo has tried slapping it straight over the position board, um, but they've uh, they've failed on that one. Zero out of ten. I say, I, I think the livery does look good. The way they've actually introduced the Duracell logo on the, um, the 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 wing end plates as well is is quite a nice one. Um, as they're trying to close down on the Marla car that is laps ahead of them. Don't worry about it. It's Ryan Barnevel currently behind the wheel of that one. 
Um, this car, by the way, was leading until it dis... Oh, no, sorry, I'm thinking of the BenQ car, I think, actually. Uh, it was leading until it disconnected from the race, team, which is brutal. More technical issues. Never like to see those, but I suppose it is realistic in some way. You have your engine failures and your parts failures in real life, and then when you get into sim racing, you have your computer failures and you have your internet failures and you have your power getting cut to your house. Extra realism, extra anger. How about that? Yeah, indeed. I was telling uh, some people, I, I feel like every time I contact on a race in Sebring, I feel like I have to tell this story. Uh, but I was in, uh, sorry, no, was I, no, I was actually in uh, a race. Uh, I was driving in this one um, at Sebring, uh, a Sebring 12 hour in a different sim. Um, and it's not the time I ran out of fuel. Well, no, it was, it was the time I ran out of fuel from the race lead, but it's a different story uh, from that one. Um, basically what happened, we were in the middle of the race and all of the Italians disconnected. Which we were all like, that's a little bit weird. One or two people disconnecting is fair enough, whatever things happen. But when all of, very specifically, all of the Italians, every single one, disconnected, we were like, there's something weird with that. It at least uh, been wiped off the map. It was, it was to do, genuinely, it was a proper thing with uh, a certain Italian internet supplier uh, mm. that had a major fault. It, disconnected the entire lot they were out for about an hour when they did rejoin the race director was nice enough to give them most of their laps back <laughs> most of their laps back uh, as, as, me as many as as many as they could without giving them an extra lap right? uh -huh. it's kind of one of those ones like you can get let's say for example you lose 10 and a half laps or even 10.8 laps right you can give back 10 laps you can't really give back the 0.8 and it's unfair to give them an 11th lap back. So it's kind of like, it's just, it sucks. You've just yeah. got to accept this 10. Sorry. That makes sense. Poor Italy. Poor Italy. Uh, we don't say that like often it. enough. <laughs> Poor old Italy. Um, yeah, it's fine. It is, uh, it's, it's, it's fine. It is what I'm it sure is. they're fine now. They've got the undersea cable reconnected. I'm, I, I hope so. They play, yeah, exactly. They, they unplugged it. They, they blew on it like it was a... a, a a cartridge for an old video game, exactly. slapped it back in, off we go. And then the internet's back. I've always wanted to visit one of those undersea cables. I've never seen one. I'm sure it's underwhelming. <laughs> it's it's undersea, without a doubt. <laughs> I want to go well, down yeah. there. I'd hope so. I want to go would... straight out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, take one of those James Cameron diver things down and, and see the cable. Because how, how many people get to see those? Yeah, as long as... Uh, no. No. No, we're just no, no, no. Sorry, that's, that's sorry. That that topic is just it's too open for me uh, digging my own <laughs> grave. So we're going to move straight on from that. Uh, we've got five and a half hours left to go in this race. Uh, Dewar Esports, the focus of our attention here uh, in the LMP2 category is this four position with one of the grid and go cards. I believe it might well be. Um, it's hard to tell. It is hard to tell. There's too there's too many cars, too many different laps, and with LMP2 and GTP in the wet. It's a very odd situation and now the LMP2 cars are actually a little bit faster in the full wet. That's that's kind of switched back now that everybody's on slicks, but everybody's kind of intersected. There's GTPs ahead of LMP2s, there's LMP2s ahead of GTPs, but now you can see with the uh, handy dandy race spot ticker, you can see this this is the battle for third, four position, Dory Sports, Grid and Go. And how about that? The uh, the closest battle on track. We finally got something that's actually for position and we might, uh, we might just see the battle for the podium, at least for now. Could even be the battle for the win if something happens to Williams Esports Chill Blast, then suddenly first through third separated by only about 15 seconds. Oh, Janssen will not be happy that you said something might potentially happen to him in this race. Um, but uh, at the moment, I say a minute 20 ahead of Team PGZ. This is the, as you say, in the battle for third position. Uh, Gabriel Straitmatter behind the wheel of the uh, Grid and Go car. Uh, Jonas Wanner, the one behind the wheel of the Dura Esports car. And they've also been joined by uh, one of the GTPs as we'll see the switch in position now going out onto the Ullman straight. Little cheeky bit of three wide as our overall, sorry, as uh, our overall third position car works its way through. Uh, it might be the race leader. It's, it's hard to tell from them sometimes. Um, it was indeed Ate Kalpen and our overall race leader working its way past as the Dura Esports car very easily and very relaxed makes its way past the Grid and Go car because it kind of just let him go, which is disappointing. Yeah, Gabriel, straight matter. I mean... There wasn't even really a battle into the corner. It was entirely a straight matter. I was going to say, yeah. No, I, I, I was going to say something that wasn't quite as good as that. That's a good one. My, my was, yeah, no, that's good. I'm basically at just least, going by puns per hour. At least an 8 out of 10. 
You're not. You don't, you're I'll not as that. bad as, as other people that I've commentated with when it comes to puns. Because basically, uh, if I give enough puns per hour, I get to uh, leave early. So if I do like ten puns per hour after three hours, I get uh, the same amount oh, of pay as four hours, and I, I was get to go say, home. You're paid per pun. Exactly. Nice. Five That's million a... dollars per pun, everybody. That's the race spot Ra money we're I was going to say. I was going to say race spot, race spot TV global. You know, we're, uh, we're, we, we're it's, it's, we've got the cheddar cheese. Exactly. Um, and to be fair, it's VC. It's probably VCO's money you're spending there with that. So you've clearly uh, hooked up some excellent deal with uh, with Florian. He does love a good pun. To be fair, who but doesn't? He don't, don't think he loves them that much. <laughs> oh, Juna hates puns. Exactly. That's why. That's why he's paying me per pun. If I say enough of them, I can just waste the uh, the race spot money supply, and then they have to fire me. Gotcha. But how about some Audi GT3 trouble here? Our old uh, our old favorite corner through Cunningham hasn't caused much trouble in a while, and then it finally does, but that was with the uh, the old classic grass clip instead of the old classic water clip. And uh, also that wasn't through Cunningham. That was a little bit later through turn 13. Yeah, indeed. It was the uh, the Falcon uh, Sim Racing Team car as well that uh, had its uh, dart off there. I still, I don't know, a, a Falcon Sim Racing, a, a Falcon delivery on a uh, on an Audi R8 just, I don't know, it just doesn't, doesn't feel right for me. There is the uh, the forecast. Don't need no meteorologist Arjuna to jump into the scene to tell us that this one's uh, clear all the way for the next four hours. Um, so if you wanted to see any more rain, tough. Um, as far as we're aware, by the way, because I didn't, we, we, we were kind of wondering how this was going to work. Um, as far as we're aware, the weather is different time slot to time slot. So, for example, if you do like the uh, the one earlier on in the day and then this one, the, the, that time slot weather is slightly different just because of how it is. But in like the split, whether you're in split one or split 37 or split 61 or whatever, like the weather should be the same in each of them, which I think is great. That's how it should be. Yeah, I mean, you, you want to have the same race, essentially, when you're in the same time slot, just split up by skill level with the uh, the splitting system. So I would, I would be surprised if it was something different. And uh, there may there may be some splits that are slightly different just with the way things go. But, yeah, that's a, that's a good thing that everybody in split 21 or whatever is going to be dealing with exactly the same conditions as the pros. And well, apparently trying to not seeing how well they're doing, although there may have been some uh, some slight differences. Apparently, split twenty one didn't get the, uh, the the second band of rain. Um, oh, no. who, I don't I don't know if that's that's uh, our broadcast director at the moment, Dane Baird. Uh, if he's got contacts in every single split and it's only split twenty one, I'm complaining. Um, Dane's actually yeah. secretly driving oh, in uh, split twenty one right now. Oh, sorry, no, he did say split two, not twenty one. It's hard there to read whilst you talk. It is. But to be fair, if he'd have typed it correctly the first time, then <laughs> we wouldn't have the problem, would it? Blame Dane. blame Dane. Exactly. Exactly. It's too easy. It is too easy. Poor Dane. It's all right. Arjuna's going to be back uh, in an hour and 20 minutes to save us from Dane, um, who did have the lovely time of showing us a replay of absolutely nothing earlier on. That was quality. <laughs> I like when we that. saw the safety car a little bit earlier. That was fun. Uh, that was really nice as well. Yeah, no, I just, we, don't, we don't get to see the safety car very often. So that's, Does the uh, safety car put on wets or slicks? Or do they, uh, do they have a, a tire for all seasons? Sure, surely it's on a road tire. That's just it must be good for all of it. Surely, um, love this shot. Love there the it is. There it, can we can we get a, a hard zoom in? Can we see the the tread on the iRacing you are stand pace car? A lot from Dane. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy, he's just telling me like, no, I can't have the, we don't have the facilities for that big man. Um, there you go. That's as close as you're gonna get. They look the flat, flat. Unfortunately, yeah, they're sunk into the ground. Which one of those fans was it? I think it was the guy in the green shirt. You I think he I mean, slashed having, him. That, no, I think it's the guy on the right-hand side who's constantly cheering. He's having, <laughs> no. a, he's having an absolute whale of a time. Are any of those people a doctor? Because that might be that might be an issue. He might have lock arm. Uh huh. The old the, yeah. That's a, a famous. There's a famous syndrome of, uh, of of race fans. Lock arm. You don't want to get uh, that. No, certainly not. But uh, he look. He's just he's he's living his best life. That's the important bit. Um, he is in Florida, as, so probably not. Well, yeah, but he's, he's spent the last six hours and 40 minutes staring at a safety car. <laughs> so, what, what what more could you possibly want in your life, Lewis? That sounds like a dream. Something has been consumed between that group. It's fine. Um, and uh, again, they're, they're, they're just having a, a whale of a time uh, as Williams Esports Steel Blast head down into the uh, into the final corner. This race really has calmed down. Think, some gaps are still fairly close, but for the most part, all the gaps 
are either large um, or, 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 or growing. Um, or they're, they're, they're closing and staying the same. There you go. I do know want me to take that one off. Um, but at the moment, basically, it's just... It's un it's fairly unchanging. VRS Commander have closed it down to 26 seconds. It was 35 earlier, so I guess it's that. Yeah, that could be that could that could develop. Here we here's, go. Here's this is potentially a replay of nothing. I'm hearing, <laughs> but that, that could be wrong. Let's see if is it nothing or is it something into tower or it's, into Cunningham? It, it, Cunningham. No, God, it you is need nothing. to get this. You need to get that. They look exactly out. the they look exactly the same until you see the runoff. That's the problem. What do you mean they look exactly? One of them has got this curvy. Oh, he's slowing it down as well. That's it. And it this is tower. Slightly. Oh, this is the one we already saw. Now I get it. See, it's see the thing is that you don't know if it's going to be a replay of nothing or we're going to get some deep information. <laughs> That's fire uh, going off right into the barrier. Oh, you can't cut. No. There. We'll never know. We'll never know. Unreal. <laughs> that, that, that car was absolutely slapping the barrier. Uh, VRS Commander, by the way, into pit lane, the uh, the number eight, Charles Collins. Uh, Sir Charles, sorry. Uh, Collins jumps behind the wheel. They've already uh, flicked tyres, I do believe, uh, onto a fresh set of slicks. So uh, Josh Rogers will be able to breathe, probably be back in for the final stint um, of this race before we'll see uh, Collins back out. He did qualify that car in fourth place earlier on. I like Sir Charles Collins. I like Sir Charles uh, Collins. Charles Lord Collins. Yeah, indeed. Well, he is he is English. This is the thing is it gets put down as being a Welshman because he does live in Wales. Um, but I got the opportunity to talk to him in Sweden where we had a conversation. He was born and raised in London. I had yeah. no idea. I, I think thought, it was, it was Chalins. Was it Chalins at Daytona? Chalins and Brolins. Yeah, yeah, Chalins exactly. and Brolins. Chollins and Brolins. We don't have Brolins in this one, though, I don't believe. Darn. Um, he might be racing in a different split, I don't know, but he's not in this split anyway. It's old Brolins. Um, lots, of, lots of Brolies umbrellas. That is true. I like how you had to clarify that as if no one knows what a Broly is. It's, it's probably about 50-50 out of the viewership, I'd say. Yeah. There's about 50 people who've got their Brolies out right now, and there's 50 that have got their umbrellas out. That's true, and some of them don't even have that. They just wear a warp. Exactly, just like those people by the safety car. That's true. Oh, to be fair, we haven't even checked that out. That's, just, that's such a small and stupid thing. There's so many details when it comes to wet weather stuff in iRacing, like with how the the, 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 the drying line, blah, 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 blah. I didn't ever think to check to see if the fans pop out any umbrellas or anything, or if there's anything like that. Or, or they just stood out there in a t-shirt in the pouring rain. I didn't see any umbrellas over there, but that may have been that may have been slightly covered. You got fans in the tent over there. They're covered yeah, but by it's not their raining at the moment. Though, so that is fine. true. Yeah, we might have to wait. Well, we got to wait four hours now until next time. Yeah, exactly. Although to be fair, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Who knows? You know, I was going to say to be fair, anything, but I don't know. I'm just going to. Maybe if I look it. deeply in my graphic settings, it'll be like umbrella tick, mode. Tick fan umbrella opening. <laughs> I just and I hope you it. get one of them who's got like the cartoon thing where it blows out the other way. Nice. Flips around. Yeah, I mean, I've all dealt with it. Let's be honest. Um, my my umbrella is massive though, because it's a golf umbrella, so it's just huge. So I just get blown around by it on a windy day. <laughs> it is quite windy out there. Uh, we got poncho watch. But, yeah, but the thing is, it's not raining at the moment. So unless that's yeah. like a a speedy re. Oh, okay. So he's looking back for some rain. Hold on, let's keep our eye open. No. It's either not raining there, it's dry. We're seeing some old replays here. WSRE Sports Butt Kicker and Fira. Um, that's That was from ages ago. We're literally just looking. We're not We're not worried about the content of the replay here, ladies and gents. We're worried about the umbrellas. I didn't see one. No, I think in this universe, because as we know, iRacing is not stationed in the real universe. It's in its own dimension. It's in its own realm. Maybe these people have like a hydrophobic coating on them, on their skin that they've evolved. So when it rains, they don't have to use umbrellas anymore. Oh God, I'd love that. That'd be, that'd be so handy. I think we're doing be, science fiction today, folks. It, it would be, well, I mean, you wouldn't be able to, yeah, you wouldn't be able to sweat. So it would be, I think it'd be disastrous for you. You can't just spray yourself down in rain -X. Um, so don't do it. Um, cause it'll be that, that, that is bad for you. Very bad for you. Uh, but still, who knows? Um, all we do know is that they don't have umbrellas, do the fans? Uh, and so that is hopefully coming out in the uh, that's next season. That's the next season job. I want a big trailer for that, by the way. Yeah, that'll be a big yeah. release. 
Yeah. <laughs> you see all the fans opening the uh, opening the umbrellas at the uh, same time, and it'll be like one of those North Korean like military displays where it's like a painting. Uh, I honestly, I would love um, to see. See that it's right. They've not even they've not even reacted. No. Even well, the, those the safety car turns on its windscreen wipers, and no one <laughs> in the crowd reacts. Yeah, I, the pace car driver's not even offering them, like, a seat in the back seat and get out of the rain. I'm sure there's a, a rule, probably, on that one. Um, I just, I don't know, I just, I, I, I feel like now that there is the opportunity. They've, they've only got, like, a week, but there is a great April Fool's trailer in there for that. Really dramatic, like, you know, you've got to imagine it. Like, really dramatic music, the, the clouds are rolling in, it starts raining, and then you have one of the fans open up an umbrella, and then it's just sort of like really dramatic close-ups of umbrellas opening and stuff. Boom. Next iRacing patch. There we go. I mean, if that comes out, you've got, like, you've got an email to send. Exactly. Took my idea. Well, well, yeah, exactly. Give me everything for free on iRacing now. Exactly. As From if you don't own all of it already? I don't own all of it already. You own Millbridge Speedway yet? I don't own Millbridge Speedway. I don't you gotta own do the, it. Uh, Super Formula Lights. Oh. I, 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 I was watching a race in them last night. They look, look quite good, actually. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's the new the new edition of the F3 car. And if I'm not mistaken, tell me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Super Formula Lights car the same as your GB3 car? I actually don't know. That's a good point. I don't really know. I'm trying Let's to think see. of... Let's our, check the Our one is, a, is, a, is the Tartus MSV 022. Oh, I think I think definitely not because this is a Delara. Then yeah, yeah, I can't be. Yeah, I was gonna say I did. I did think that it was a Delara and the uh, Super Formula lights. Of course, yeah, the Super Formula will be Delara. Yeah, no, we're we're definitely Tartus or Tartus or Tatus. I don't know what you call them. Delara three twenty um, is Super Formula lights. So that is. I think it's very Euro Formula similar. Open. Um, no, Euro Formula Open still uses the um, uh, the old F three car. The old one. Yeah. Mm. But I, I, I don't, you, you, this is the thing with with, ju, with junior formula at the moment at the same kind of level as like GB3. Obviously, you've got so obviously you know you could probably chuck um, super formula lights in there. You could probably chuck over even like, Indy lights is a little ahead of it, but yeah, fair enough. Yeah, in that kind of category, that kind of speed of car, you've obviously got uh, GB3. You've got uh, Freca. Um, you've got uh, Euro Formula Open. You've got Euro Cup 3 as well, which is a championship I'm sure most people haven't heard of. Um, but Euro Cup 3 is a fairly new one. started last year. Um, all of them basically in the same kind of kettle of fish when it comes to speed. And this year at Zandvoort, there is a, um, a, a, a sports car-y type meet. I think there's like some uh, LMP3 stuff that's happening there. And there is, at Zandvoort, there is GB3, British Formula 4, and Euro Cup 3, all on the same weekend. How about a little that? open wheel special weekend, yeah. Bring me out to the Netherlands. I'll, I'll show up, I'll pull up. Indeed. I might not be going, I might be in Snetterton for that one. Um, Darn. For various reasons. Uh, I also went to Zandvoort last year and it was cold and miserable. <laughs> so, um, my want to return is fairly low. And we were talking about uh, exploring the the radius of the track or whatever and finding places that aren't on track and exploring. If you do buy Millbridge, there's actually a house that you can Is go there? to. The, the guy's house who owns Millbridge Speedway, it's been scanned. So you can just you can go over there, too. Nice. Because it's on the property. The, the racetrack is basically in his backyard. Are you speaking um, from experience? Have you gone to explore? I haven't gone, well, I have gone to explore in the sim. Unfortunately, I haven't gone to his in house person, yet. I did yeah. actually, I will I will tell all you people right now, I did actually race against the guy who owns that house at a go-kart track in Charlotte earlier this year. So I'll uh, I'll have that to, to tell the people until I get to go to his house. Uh, yeah, no, it, well, fair enough. I mean, that's, um, it's, it's some claim to fame, I guess. Exactly. Um, I haven't carted against anyone. Uh, no, I was going to say I haven't carted against anyone famous, but I have carted against the first ever gb4 champion um Ooh. which i got absolutely slapped uh, of <laughs> course because i'm not very good in a car mostly because i weigh a fair amount um, yeah that's always the problem with go especially indoor go-karting it's like if you're not an 80 pound kid you're losing yeah exactly i weigh uh 105 kilos and i can tell you on the straights that makes a difference <laughs> um so yeah, it's not yeah that that can be that can be fairly frustrating. I do enjoy karting, but then you know, it is what it is. Everyone, I think everyone enjoys karting. It's just I'm not very good at it. 
Uh, that's yeah. why I choose sim racing, where weight doesn't matter. Sim exactly. racing is the way forward. Exactly. We've got uh, we've got so many sizes and shapes of people in sim racing. We haven't seen the uh, the cameras for a while, unfortunately. We haven't seen how the no, drivers. No, because Dane's are... terrified of them. Exactly. We haven't seen how the drivers are coping with their uh, their wet to dry switch, but. Unfortunately, I have a feeling we'll just be seeing a lot of sim racer face. They don't tend to emote much when they're in hour seven of a 12 hour race. No, that's true. We don't get the um, the, the Mark Marquez, Valentino Rossi leans quite as much in uh, endurance racing. You do obviously see it a lot in sprint racing. There's, there's uh, one. There's one. Yeah. Nicholas Patea. Uh, obviously, we saw Josh Rogers a little bit earlier on and uh, we've had a little bit of, 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 of no cap Carl, um, who I don't believe is behind the wheel anymore. Is, uh, is Carl Janssen or is he? Huh? He is still behind the wheel. My goodness, yeah. how many laps has he done? There he is, no cap Carl. Well, look at him. He's, he's having a chill blast right now. <laughs> That's, that is terrible. <laughs> That's, uh, that, that has to have been done before. How, yeah, how, I mean, how long has chill blast been around? Somebody's definitely done that before. Yeah, for sure. He's done the last 80 laps. He did 60 laps at the start of the race. He's done the last 80 laps behind the wheel of the, uh, of the Williams Esports chill blast car. Um... I mean, he is from Sweden, so maybe it is quite cold out there. It was cold when I went, to be fair. Um, I can't remember where he is from in Sweden. I think he's from, like, I don't want to say North Sweden, but I think it's... Let's see. I'll do a little bit of doxing on my second screen. Nice. See nice. if he has it. Does he have it I'm, listed anywhere? I'm pretty sure he was living from somewhere. That, I, I think it was within an hour of... Um, oh, my God. I can't remember where he went. I can't remember where uh, DreamHack is. I've, done, I've, I've completed, I've blanked Yonkshiping. Goodness me, that took way too long to figure out. I think it's like, he's, he's within an hour of that kind of area. I don't think it's, I don't think it's Gothenburg. I think it's the other way from Gothenburg, from Yonkshiping, but I don't know. Um, but that, that kind of, that kind of area. We are just like, <laughs> this, so we are very sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is full waffle o'clock. Nothing <laughs> is happening in this race. Literally exactly. nothing. Uh, and when it comes to weather, by the way, uh, nothing is happening weather-wise until the I'm, I'm pretty sure until the end of the race now and we'll be we'll be waiting for a couple of hours also carl jansen only has three instagram posts and none of them have his uh have his location he has an old photo from go-karting from like five years ago and two like sim racing announcements and that's it that that does to be fair sound like carl jansen he's a busy man doing things in sweden yeah. um and driving very quickly um, I'm pretty sure this is a bit faster than what he drives normally uh, in real life, but um, yeah. I, the thing is, I can imagine, right? This is the whole. Uh, I've said this all with like complacency and stuff and sim racing, and um, you know, the most dangerous part of, uh, of, of of driving is complacency. There is challenge um, behind the wheel. It, when you're literally just driving around, it, normally at this part of, of, of a special event, you're still like battling someone on strategy. You're still like being really close. Whereas there's quite a lot of cars that they're literally just driving around by themselves at the moment. That there's just not really anything happening. You got the odd bit of traffic, and that's it. And I wonder how different this is from a normal 12 hours of Sebring, because in every other year before this, this is exactly the conditions you would have been practicing in. You would have had thousands upon thousands of laps in the dry, and it would just come down to uh, who could be the most consistent and minimize those tiny little mistakes that you get at the highest level for 12 hours. But now there's been a lot of wet practice, I'm sure, as everybody's been trying their best to figure out a whole new way of racing in this sim. And now suddenly they're back to normal. Did they do a special amount of dry practice over the course of the last couple of weeks and months? Or is everybody falling back on their expertise and their experience from previous years? I don't know. Is there a little bit of rust that comes into this? Because right now it looks like everybody is just kind of back to 2023 mode. And it looks like it looks like a typical race at Sebring where everybody's got this under control. Yeah, indeed. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. Uh, we saw a little bit of uh, challenge there. Poncho, watch. I don't think it is. I think this is uh, something else. Watch. It's Oof. watch a car go into the barrier. And that is the Dewar Esports. There we go. Thank you, uh, Broadcast Director Dane. Uh, a bit of a shame there for uh, for Dewar Esports. Uh, out and into the barrier uh, in, the, uh, in the GTD category. Uh, they were a fair way down. I think they were running in... No, I'm gonna have to count. Out. I'm in game. They're running outside of the top ten. Let's put it that way. I think it's like a 14th or 15th position, uh, and they have returned into pit lane. And they were like 11 laps down on the next car. Yeah, that's basically just getting yeah. punched while you're down. And if yeah, you already exactly. have that little bit of damage, it is still a little bit slick out there as well. 
all that stacks up, unfortunately, to uh, another mistake in the door esports number 20. I'm sure they'll get more repairs. They'll get back out there. There's still five hours to go. They're not going to give up just yet, but that is just an, another unfortunate punch. And uh, that'll that'll hurt even more considering they were already 11 laps down. So what you could say is they've not quite closed the door on this race yet. Not quite. It's still very much open. Nice. Fantastic. Uh, race clutch here uh, on our screen, currently running in fifth position. But again, I, I cannot recall the, the last time where... I'm looking at a grid in in top split. I don't, in fact, I don't believe this has ever happened, where we're not that far past halfway in this race, um, in top split. The race clutch car here, Sean Carroll behind the wheel, who was so disappointed with himself, he posted on YouTube chat earlier on, um, is is one lap down and still inside the top five. Seven hours into it, like that is crazy. That is very uncommon. Let's see what's happened. Unfortunately, once more to the Parnell racing car, it's going to go straight under the barrier. I can feel it. Ooh no! Yep, there she goes. Wasn't that hard to be fair? Yeah, that was uh, that was Mal Dinka, and it was a very big Dinka in the wall. Unfortunately, a little bit of onomatopoeia for you there. How about that? Nice. Yeah, and it's it's still not dry out there. It, it's it's absolutely dry on the racetrack now, but it's a little bit like Hockenheim a couple of years ago in F1. You end up out on the drag strip out there, and yeah, straight on into the wall. No hope. That, for anyone who didn't join us earlier on, that is basically what happened to the um, uh, red line cars uh, earlier on, only much, much harder uh, into the barrier. So uh, at least they're in good company of those that have taken a little visit out into the uh, into the barrier there. Uh, as we'll see this battle, it is Fyra. It's not for the position. Uh, it is uh, Fyra, though, trying to keep the uh, Williams Esports... Oh, it is the position. Never mind. I've just checked this. I didn't realise the Williams Esports Chill Blast car was that far down. Um, but so to Muto, behind the wheel, trying to get past a fire. We do actually have a battle for position. Yeah. I don't I don't know how long this is going to last because I feel like Sotomuto Muto is a little bit lower in the order than he should really be. He's definitely going to be looking forward, but it's tough when you're in Audi versus Audi land. You got a little bit of LMP2 traffic coming through as well. He's got to find the opportunity to force uh, Rasmus Christensen into a mistake into turn 13, though. Door might be open by the LMP2 car. Not quite open, though. Still one by one by one. I think this is a little bit of a foregone conclusion, though. We can continue to watch this because Sota's got to find a way to get past somehow, but he absolutely has a pace advantage right now. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely a, a faster car right now, but he's got to wait maybe until sunset to actually try and get it done. And you can see there's a little bit of damage on the uh, the rear of that car. Oh, oh that's waiting until sunset. sunset. My goodness me, straight on the inside at Le Mans corner. Dives it in with a bit of a slide in the exit as well as the uh, Porsche Coanta will work its way past. Uh, that one being the Mitchell de Jong driven number 18 um, uh, VRS. I said I keep saying Porsche Coanda. I'm so used to saying Porsche Coanda. The VRS Coanda. Uh, make sure we're ticking all our boxes, making sure they're happy. Um, yeah, just a bit of a slide there. Big big dive there from Sotomuto. Lovely move. Uh, highly committed. Just a really nice one. Disappointed, by the way, that Fire haven't submitted a livery. Um, just because I really like the Fire livery. Yeah. It's have you, have you seen the Fire livery? Do you know what it looks like? Uh, not recently, but it's mm. confusing with this one because it kind of just looks like the Falcon car with the uh, default black and teal. Either that, or this is that's generally like the livery that Triton used to enter in um, back in the day. They, they, if they were entering in a generic livery, those are the Triton colours. Um, a Polish uh, sim racing team. Uh, it's not Triton. Uh, that is Fira. Uh, Fira. They're generally it's, it's like a black, red, and pink yeah. sort of like gradient across the car. Yeah, I'm looking great. at it now, it's like it's like a galaxy. It's like a nebula. Yeah, cause, yeah, cause exactly. Because we're in game, we can actually see it on our own. They've not submitted it, so we don't have it. Um, but in game, it looks great. Um, yeah. So. Zero out of ten. Get, be get better next time, guys. And also, I think the reason you saw that move from Sotomuto that was so aggressive was I think he agreed exactly with what I was saying, that he was absolutely faster. He was deeper in the field than he should really be. And uh, he said, you know what? It's not worth it to wait at all. I can make this move. I can get aggressive, and I'll probably not be fought too hard. And it worked out for him. It was calculated risk. Yeah, indeed. Um, William D. Sports, uh, Chill Blast, by the way, uh, are out of the pit lane and finally out of the car uh, for the first time in about 85 laps. Uh, we do have Carl Janssen out. Kenneth uh, Gobranson is behind the wheel now of the William D. Sports Chill Blast car that remains our race leader in the LMP2 category. William D. Sports Chill Blast, the other Chill Blast uh, leading in the GTP car, uh, the other, other 
Chill Blast car uh, is down the order, but still inside the top 10 in the GTZ category. That is your Williams Esports Chill Blast update. Why they entered three different cars with the same sponsorship. I get it. I, I, yeah, obviously, yeah, fair enough. It's very frustrating as a commentator to have three cars with this exact, basically the exact same name. Gotta spread your net wide. But also, it's very Scandinavian in LMP2. They got a Swede and a Norwegian in the same car. I'm surprised I actually got them to get along, um, to be honest, because there's there's quite a lot of infighting between Swedes and you know, Scandinavians. Interesting. Let's be honest. If if you're in if you if you're watching like the Olympic Games, right, and Sweden gets knocked out of something, no Swede is going to go and support a Norwegian as their <laughs> second country. You know what I mean? Yeah. Really That's weird way of putting it, but it's true. Though. Interesting. It's just true. Yeah. We're uh, we're bringing down national and political barriers with uh, exactly. with sim racing swedes and norwegians like each other how about that they're having a they're having a blast together maybe maybe maybe, maybe right now i'm still like this the whole thing with like, the whole like support in a second country the reason why i talk about it is because uh, everyone always says england is no one's second country to support and it's so true uh, as soon as like let's say for example like in the uh, in the euros which is coming up this year uh, football something uh, or, or, or whatever i don't know um or kick, eurovision for that matter kick, no I, I, I that's that's too far for me that's, uh, all, that's all the sports, way down on the you. bottom um, when he was these sports chill blaster in the pit lane yeah no that that i can't do um that's too far for me no thank you uh but when when like say would like say if you're if you like support i don't know the netherlands if you, you're dutch uh as soon as like you get kicked out of like uh, I, I don't know you're no longer in contention for like time trial of cycling gold at no point do you go i want team gb to win this you don't do it you're always like straight onto like ghana or whatever from from oh so that's confusing now that i said that people are ghana from italy not ghana from ghana Fine, we'll just move on. It's fine. <laughs> England is no one's second country. It's without nor is the United States, so have it. That's true. We'll we'll get you to watch Eurovision this year, though, Lewis. Absolutely not. You even me, not. even me as an American, Why? I'm tuning into Eurovision. Why is it Eurovision when Australia is in it? That is also a good question. And like Azerbaijan and like yeah. That's but more it's that's fun. more of a yeah, twisted topic, but yeah. No, I just Lots I don't know. I'm not I'm not about it. I am not about it. I can't I just can't do it. It's just it's, it, every time like everyone when it's on, it it's like it's overwhelmingly like everyone's like so into it. And every yeah. time like maybe it's not what I thought it was, and then I turn it on. The exact same thing happened with Love Island, right? <laughs> um, is that I knew quite a lot of people that I thought were like very intelligent. Um, I'm actually going to say it, Oscar Hardwick. Um, I, I I I I looked up to Oscar, and Oscar was watching. Uh, <laughs> Oh, guys, get absolutely named off this broadcast for, for watching Love Island ages ago. Uh, and I thought maybe I was thinking about it, maybe 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 I got it wrong about the show. And it's the same thing about Eurovision. Maybe I got it wrong about it, what it is. So I started watching it. Uh, and no, it's total garbage. Um, anyway, uh, well, <laughs> I would agree with that for Love Island, racing. but you heard it here first, folks. Today, Lewis McGlade comes out as music hater number one. Whoa, that's a big move from Drago Racing. I might be a music hater, but I do love a good move. <laughs> that's a big one from Drago Racing. He's going to see it side by side on the start finish straight to Drago's clear of this topic. Continuing down to the first corner, Drago Racing straight around the outside. Dominic Hoffman and Alexander Spets, welcome back to uh, to top split I Racing Special Event Racing uh, as Spets is able to fend off the Drago racing car. That ends that conversation. Yes, it does. Proper Motorsports has finally returned. And uh, I don't think this battle is going to be over anytime soon either, as Hoffman still very much within draft range. Might be a little bit too far back to think about a move into the hairpin. But this is not as treacherous of a track as it once was. There's multiple dry lines. There's still a little bit of water out there, a little bit of puddling. But other than that, it is clean, it is fresh, and it is very, very grippy as the sun starts to come out. So Dominic Hoffman thinking about where he can make this move, just trying to stay as close as humanly possible to the back of Spets, probably until they get onto the back straight, and he'll maybe think about repaying the favor into Sunset. Right now, though, in the middle sector through these 90-degree corners and high-speed corners, it's all about minimizing the dirty air and staying as close as possible to make sure you're still in draft range for those long straights. Yeah, we weren't ready for actual racing on the circuit, but we are getting it now. Dom Hoffman trying to take on Alexander Spets. Uh, 
And once again, it was a, it was a great attempt going into sunset. There could be uh, downforce differences between the cars. Obviously, you know, it's wide open on the setup. Um, and some drivers, some teams may have prepared themselves more for, for wet weather conditions. In doing so, you put on more wing, you put, you know, put on more downforce, put on more grip, basically. Um, and, it, it, and in doing so... Obviously, it can, it can make you even quicker at these kind of parts of the race where, you know, maybe we're talking about tyre wear and stuff and, uh, and, and and going for a big move. That was a big look down the inside from Dominic Hoffman. Again, arguably one of the best GTP drivers on the entire platform and has been for the last couple of years. Unfortunately, didn't get a chance into Sunset that time. Was just too far back to really take advantage of the draft and unfortunately also potentially a little bit worse in terms of downforce, like you mentioned. Just definitely quick through the middle sectors. He's keeping that car planted down to the ground, but when you need straight line speed to make a move at Sebring a lot of the time to take advantage of the hairpin and take advantage of sunset and turn one for that matter, if you are slightly disadvantaged with a slightly higher downforce level, you need to be that much closer to actually have anything uh, going in the draft. And yeah, he was about half a second back, probably needs to be within about two or three tenths if he wants to use any part of the draft whatsoever because if he's any further than that i don't think he's actually gonna be able to do anything and be forced to continue following in line and enjoying that dirty air he's getting spit indeed there are um there, there are other battles by the way that are getting closer and i will just allude to the lead battle at the moment i would say between the six and the eight right now the eight is faster Technically speaking, it's later in its stint, so it should be lighter at the moment. So it's a little bit... It's not as clear-cut as the 8 is definitely faster. But as an overall, that 8 is definitely closing in on on, uh, on the 6. So VRS Commander certainly closing in on Williams Esports Chill Blast. I wouldn't expect themselves to, 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 to expect there to be a, uh, a major fight in the, uh, in the near future. But, um, again, maybe... Uh, I think there might have been an issue, by the way, for the 119. The uh, it, it was supposed to be Lurk Rabier behind the wheel, but they have gone a missing and have dropped down the order, promoting Yano Cock inside the top three. Yeah, in I LMP2s. just investigated that. I was seeing if it was just a pit stop, but no. Coming through sunset, Lurk Rabier disappeared out of the corporeal realm, and uh, I think that may have been that may have been it. Yes, and now it's confirmed. Hackett loss, internet disconnection, unfortunately for uh, Rabier right five feet away from pit lane basically he was on pit entry when that happened indeed um so into the pit lane uh, they will return now after uh, getting the, the the escape the clear run uh, and whilst we're talking of lmp2s i think we should probably talk to arguably the fastest driver uh, of the day uh, at the moment in the lmp2 category because no cap carl jansen as the fire car just uh, decides to completely rejoin something it's very confusing uh carl jansen joined us after a whopping 80 odd lap stint started the race with uh, with 60 or so it was uh, obviously from the uh, the Williams uh, Esports Chill Blast car that's leading at the moment in LMP2. How was your stint, mate? I was good. A um, little bit of uh, trucker back pain there for a few hours, you know, but the, the, the last hour was good. No pain then. So, um, yeah, other than that, it, uh, it was quite uh, uneventful, I would say. You've had to deal, though, with quite a lot of, uh, of, of, of wet weather racing uh, at the moment. Obviously, you did the first stint of the race where it was wet to dry. Uh, you've done the last stint where you know, you've gone basically from dry to wet and then wet back to dry again. Uh, how are you finding it? It's okay. Um, I would say it's very, very close to, like, uh, real-life stuff. So, um, yeah, having done so much karting and stuff in the past, uh, it, it actually does help quite a bit. Um, but, yeah, like, the... The wet to dry stuff is because in these races where the strategy works like how it works, the way you want to get the maximum out of the stint, um, and sometimes it's preferable to dry on the on the wets longer than than you should, and uh, the other way around also. So yeah, I mean it's, it's been uh, been quite easy for us in LMP2, I think, to change the tires and do the correct uh, tire change uh, because the the switchovers have been right on our pit stops. So it hasn't really been that it's caught anyone out, I would say, um, which is very nice um, for for the LMP2 drivers. But uh, I saw uh, Josh was on, Rogers was on the, on the slicks there in the wet, and uh, it didn't look uh, too fun. 
Yeah, it, that that looked like a brutal stint. Thankfully, yeah, so he didn't have to to go through that one. I was going to ask, um, what do you think the the, the 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 big separator is from you to the rest of the field when it comes to this car in the wet? Is it set up or is it kind of like your your approach to driving? Um, I'm not sure really, but I think it might be down quite a bit to approach to driving. Um. Because like this have kind of been the same thing throughout the, my entire like racing career before I started with sim racing. Also, um, I was really, really, really fast in the wet everywhere we went. Um, any track, any cart, really, like any class, I was just fast in the wet. Um, more so than I was in the in the dry itself. So um, I have <laughs> quite a few wins on the wet, and then uh, I think the wet wins are probably more than it is uh, dry wins at this point. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a lot down to the approach of driving and just having like having confidence in myself uh, where I put the car is is the correct place. Um, just say it's honestly, it's a lot of a lot down to confidence in these uh, conditions. Um, just knowing exactly like how fast you can go and having a um, you, you just need to absolutely trust the car to it a hundred percent when you go into the corner. Um, because if you don't, you're just gonna go slower in than you can go. Um, so when you actually enter the corner, like, I don't know if it's going to stick or not, but I mean, I kind of trust the car it, that it will stick. Uh, most of the times today it's, have, it's been sticking. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that's down a lot to it, just having the, the ultimate confidence in the car and, and yourself, really. Obviously, uh, I expe I, I'm going to expect that you're probably going to jump in behind the uh, the wheel again before the end of the race. You seem to be uh, enjoying uh, this this car track combo, especially with the with a cheeky bit of weather. But the thing is, now you've got uh, a, a minute, nearly a minute forty uh, of a lead. How do you keep yourself focused uh, without getting like complacent and making a mistake that way? How do you keep your eye on the prize? Um, I think really it's just been you just do what you've been doing the entire race, really. Like. Uh, um, now in the wet, I took it a bit easier than I did uh, the last time because then the goal last time when it went from wet to dry was really to uh, build the gap. Um, now where we had like a 1 minute 20, 1 minute 30 gap, there's no point in pushing the limits that much. Um, and I also forgot to restart iRacing itself. so. Um, yeah, I had quite a lot of stutters. Uh, the game was running at like 80 FPS, so that kept me on my toes for sure. Um, the, the stuttering into the corners was uh, quite something. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that kind of kept me on, on the toes for the, for the stint. Uh, it wasn't optimal in any way, but uh, it kind of kept me uh, focused in every corner. Um, I think it, it just comes down a lot to it. Like you it's not really where you have a single class race where you just do like gt face around Sebring for 12 hours. Like you still have LMD just coming to pass you. You have GT3s you have to pass. You have so much happening around you um, that you just keep focusing on that instead of how much the gap is and, and all that stuff. So you just keep a very high focus on just everything else around you than, than the gap itself, you know. Finally, quickly before I uh, let you go, obviously uh, new livery uh, on the uh, on the on the Williams bunch uh, this round. Make reckon that's making you any quicker? They do say uh, you know, a, a, a good livery is worth a couple of tenths. Yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. New <laughs> livery is just so much faster than anything else. <laughs> All right, go. I'll we'll let you get back to it. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Oh dear. There you go, Jerry Hansen, obviously uh, race leader uh, in the LMP2 category. Nice to hear from him. Yeah, and uh, proving the scientific hypothesis that it's absolutely true. New livery, it's always going to add a couple of extra tenths. I wonder where that ends, though. If you have a new livery every year, mm, how, uh, how much can that bring the lap time down? Are we going to get down to like one second lap times? No, because it's, it's, it's not it's not necessarily new livery. It's good livery. Ah. Um, yeah, it's, and so this is the thing is that if you release a new livery every year, then eventually you're going to do what R8G have done and release an absolute stinker. <laughs> there you um, go. So, you know, it, it happens. Sorry, R.A.G. That's just I, I, absolutely just out here. Absolute nuclear strays. missile sent over there. Sorry. Um, clearly, uh, our broadcast director, Dane, absolutely loves Carl Janssen. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we'll see his reaction as he's rejoining his teammate. Exactly.
poor guy he doesn't even realize it. what if he started picking his nose it could happen That's I hope he gets I'll... to like go go eat some food or something I don't know what time it is in Sweden right now probably like 10 uh, 11 12 I can't remember if it's plus 2 or plus 1 this is plus 1 isn't it I guess so it is be, the middle uh, of the night frame be, so it's probably best it'd be, it'd he be doesn't be 9 o'clock yeah probably best that he doesn't go get some food then but maybe yeah, exactly. maybe he will who knows Exactly. Well, I mean, once I'm done with my stint, I'm going to grab myself uh, some food. I'm going to sit back and watch the uh, the, uh, the the Formula Three race as well. That's on. Uh, that's on a little bit. That's on it in uh, in a couple of hours. Uh, keep keep my eye on uh, on my boys. Now, obviously, we've got plenty of sim race. This is the thing these, these days when it comes to um, with like real world motorsport and stuff. Is I'm kind of, I, I see a grid like Formula Three. You know two steps down from Formula 1, one of the you know, largest championships in the world, seeing all these future talents and stuff, and I'm looking at him being, half of them are sim racers. I mean, Max Esterson's driving around with a big old iRacing logo slapped yeah. on the side of his car. One, I, I think he's the only American in F3 now, because there was one year about uh, three years ago where there were like five American drivers in F3, and it was like, is this finally the time when the, the American pipeline grows? And now it's it's just down to Max holding up the flag now. And holding up the flag for iRacing, for that matter, I guess. With the that biggest logo. That is true. That is true. But then there are at least other drivers in it that take part in iRacing. Like, for example, yeah. uh, Luke Browning, um, Alex Dunn, obviously one of the Apex racing drivers. Um, there's, there's, there's plenty. I think there's, there's there's a couple in... A couple of Americans in F2. Uh, there was I think there was like three or four last year. Jack Crawford. Yep. Correa, uh, I think he's still around. Uh, is he still? Yeah, he's still doing um, F2. Obviously, had Brad Benavides yet last year as well. Um, there's, yeah, there's still some American talent. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. one in F1 uh, this round, though. Sorry. Unfortunate. Sorry. But, uh, <laughs> Ooh, it's, uh, it's, it's, isn't that too much of a loss? It's, it's, it's one of those ones, as we'll see. Ooh, a little bit. I kind of understand that one a little bit as uh, the Falcon. Uh, so I've, I've never seen a car in that bit of grass, to be honest. Um, but the Falcon the zone. Team, <laughs> uh, gets sent over there with a car that was sort of, I think it was one of the WSR Esports bucket cars, it was lagging around the outside and then made that contact and uh, and away they went uh, into a uh, an unfamiliar part of, uh, of Sebring. It's kind of one of those ones with, with, with F1. I think it's completely off topic because we're just, we're just chatting rubbish now. Um, so I, I understand it. I don't like it, but I do get it. And it is probably a decision which I agree with, but I don't like. But I do agree with it. Yeah. And also, it's, I'm slightly it's... distracted because I have like a, a double screen set situation going here. I'm watching the race. I am commentating on the race, so don't worry. But also, the uh, the NASCAR truck series is about to have oh, an is... overtime restart at Coda. Oh, so is it really? I've got to, I've got to have that up as well. That's where... Uh, oh, dude, so speaking of series where there's a ton of iRacers, look through the yeah, NASCAR Truck right. Series field. Yeah, right. I didn't realise there was quite as many. I've not watched, uh, I've not watched the, uh, the, the the trucks in a while, um, to be honest. So, um, fair enough. We'll see how that goes. Cota, so, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Only road course race of the year. Unfortunately, eNASCAR's Vicente Salas did not have the best day. I think he had some uh, damage in qualifying, and he's... A little bit down in the order right now, but you see Corey Heim in official races sometimes. Ty Majeski, of course, over 10,000 I rating. That's a big one. And uh, Connor Zilish, basically everybody. Roger Carruth. Oh. I was I was I was mostly looking uh, forward to seeing how uh, Salas did uh, in that because I do I I actually I said before like I because because I would commentate on quite a lot of like the the, the bigger esports championships and stuff and then like a lot of the time it's like when there's another one on like even like pesk um i i see the results i little i flick through the broadcast and stuff yeah i see what happens oh good okay, step, steps on again great cool um I, I generally don't sit down and watch the whole broadcast most because i can't stand arjuna um but also partially because it's kind of like i don't want to watch another sim racing broadcast like, i'll commentate on enough of these so like you, you, i, I sort of like watch from afar e nascar is the one where i'm like i do watch that I do sit down and watch it. Um, but I, I, I enjoy it. I think Enasco is great. Also, I'm a, quite a big Casey Cohen fan. I did go a bit uwu when he uh, when he was in IMSA. Nice. Like, oh, and you're a like big it. Evan Pasoko fan too. Who's that? No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do like him actually. He's uh, obviously a quality commentator. Um, I, 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 it's, it's one discipline I don't think I could really do. Mostly because I'm British, but also uh, I think it'd just be really weird. 
And here he comes through the final corner to become the E NASCAR Coca Cola Series champion. Doesn't work. It doesn't. No. Uh, would be funny though. Um, but uh, no, I, 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 I do like Evan. He's a good lad. Maybe for the April Fool's Day broadcast. I'd be all over that. I wonder because March is nah, March is thirty one days. So darn Monday's the uh, Monday's yeah. April first. What a joke! I know I'm commentating on it. Uh, on I'm April first, I think I, I think I might be commentating on April first this year too. I ha I am at um, Alton Park commentating on the fi uh, the first round of the GB3 and GB4 championship. Oh. Because we race on uh, Saturdays and Mondays because we love being awkward because tradition. <laughs> I love this country. <laughs> I wonder um, what kind of prank you're going to go with. Just welcome to Cadwell Park. Well, hopefully, yeah, no, I was going to say, I was going to start telling a story, which is really kind of, it's not really probably that appropriate, um, but I'm still going to tell it anyway, uh, of last year in the, uh, in the, in the, on the Monday. Um, I spent most of the time running in and out of the commentary booth because I'll put it as I caught a bit of a bug and uh, keeping food down was hard work. Uh, let's put it that way. Uh, I did not have a good time that day. Uh, but, you know, we battled through it because we love motorsport. Uh, it was a good round, actually. And that was the time where... Oh, I think I might have actually been on the um, on the Saturday. There is a clip that went fairly viral, uh, which is of a car rolling backwards onto the racing line uh, at the final corner of Alton Park. I was commentating on that. I genuinely was terrified. Um, I have seen that clip so many times. I, every time it comes up on like Instagram or something, someone sends it to me, being like, "Is this you?" And I'm like, "Yes, that is me." Terrified. Thank you. There you go. Good times. Seed the floor to the. Uh, I haven't been getting any questions in the chat. I've been looking at chat. They've been all. Uh, they've been having conversations with each other. They've been. They've been making friends. We heard that the. Now we already knew that Super Formula Lights and Euro Formula Open same, but in I didn't think Euro they were, they, but yeah, maybe they are. In Euro Formula Open, they have the Toyota GR Yaris engine, and the Super Formula Lights have a Volkswagen. No, it's the other way around. Uh, yeah, the Japanese sure, sure, one. Sure Japanese one has around, the yeah. Toyota, and Euro Formula Open has the yes. VW. It's a three-cylinder engine, if I remember correctly. Interesting. Um, on the uh, yeah, no, I, I, I thought I thought Euro Formula Open. Maybe maybe they've changed here. I don't know. Um, again, I don't generally watch Euro Formula Open because I can't stand George Morgan. Uh, no, again, it's a joke. I get along well with George. That's fine. I realize there's going to be there's going to be some first time viewers here uh, exactly. who don't know who don't know who you, George, or exactly. Arjuna are, and they're just going to be like, "Wow, this uh, guy, this guy, is... this guy hates everyone. <laughs> this guy if hates did, sim racing. If if I did hate them, I wouldn't be saying them on broadcast. No, I get along well with George. That's why I said, that's why I was like, I'll instantly just clarify. I do actually <laughs> like George. We do get along quite well. It's fine. Uh, but obviously, he uh, commentates on uh, on Euro Formula Open and uh, and and. Well, GT Open, International GT Open, uh, as well as sometimes commentating on, on Frecker. Um, what do you just call me? Uh, Formula Regional, <laughs> European Championship. Championship powered by Alpine or something like that. I can't remember. It's, it's, everyone just calls it Frecker, and I'm always like, oh. what does that stand for again? Yeah. Yeah, I know it's Formula Regional. Everyone just calls it Formula Regional or Frecker. Mm, yeah. Formula um, Regional Oceania Championship presented by Alpine. One. Froca? Froca. Fraca, <laughs> Asia. Yeah. Well, was it? It, it, it was. It was from Mech, wasn't it? It was uh, Formula Regional Eastern. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, Middle East uh, Championship. That wasn't powered by Alpine, or sponsored by Alpine. I don't think. Or maybe it was from Mech. Uh I don't know. But um, it's just that's too many letters for me. Yeah, we no, did just get a question in the Twitch chat, by the way, which I don't oh. think you can answer because I don't know if this has made it to your. Oh, but actually, more importantly, Grid and Go. 003 Yarno Cock has has had a little bit of trouble in turn 10. That was the first big slide we've seen in a while. Yeah, exactly. Went for a little bit of a slip and slide and uh, and uh, messed uh, messed it up. I'll, I'll say that. You can fill in the blanks whatever you want. What's the question? I'm curious. Okay, we'll go back to that now. Yarno's Yarno's okay. He says, "Does Diet Dr Pepper taste more like regular Dr Pepper?" Which is not. Uh, I th that's like half a question. I feel like there should be a second sentence there. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I'd be fair, Diet I, Dr. Pepper does taste pretty identical to regular Dr. Pepper, but I don't even think you have Dr. Pepper there. 
Pepper. Well, of course we have Dr. Pepper everywhere. It's you the do? sweet it's one. Made? Uh, it's made? Yeah, no, Dr. Pepper's always been everywhere. In fact, actually, wow. I bought two bottles of Dr. Pepper the other day. And um, uh, two new bottles of Dr. Pepper. Obviously, I didn't drink it in one go. Um, but I do remember, after drinking some of it, because I've been trying to cut down a little bit on caffeine. Um, I love Dr. Pepper, especially with a certain alcoholic beverage. It goes very nicely. Um... But, my goodness me, the sugar and the caffeine went str- I, I was very jittery. Very, I was like, oh my god, I feel hor- I, I, I had to go and like lie down because I felt so bad. Because um, it's, it's, it is a lot of caffeine and a lot of sugar. Um, and I just remember being like, my goodness me. I, uh, please, someone, someone come in here and sort me out because I'm like, I'm not feeling good right now. Um, and that was uh, that will probably be the last time I have Dr. Pepper for a while. <laughs> Dr. Pepper cleanse. You guys do have Mezzo Mix, though, and we don't have Mezzo Mix what in the U.S., and that mezzo makes me sad. Mix? It's half Fanta, half Coke. Yeah, but surely you can just make that anyway. You can, I'm also, but it's not, it's just, not as special. That's, sure, that's mud water. That's horrendous. It's delicious mud water. That, I was going to say, that is not a thing here. If anyone yeah, puts I, anything orange... It. Yeah, of course, well, yeah, but in the same way that you can, like, I don't know, mix coffee and tea together. You just don't. <laughs> Blur did it. No, that was coffee and TV. What am I talking about? Mm. No, I just... I, I think the idea of putting anything orange-related anywhere near Coke is, is crazy to me. If you go to a Burger King in the UK and you go to the freestyle machine, you can get Mezzo Mix yeah, and Diet yeah, Mezzo yeah, of course, Mix. Yeah, of course I, you can. I went with Diet yeah, of course you can. That's the same with with any place that you, where you get to pour your own uh, beverage. Or to be fair, you could just at a bar or something order a Fanta and a Coke and yeah. an extra glass. Bosh! I you should will, just do that. I should you just will do that. Be classified I can... as a psycho, though. Yes, probably. But it's it's extra work. It's an extra button because you have to press the Diet Coke button and then you have to press the Diet Fanta button. When then in Burger King, you just press the the Mets, the Diet Mezzo Mix button. It's easy. I've never seen that button. Also, fact, Dane reminds me, other fast food restaurants are available and also are better. Uh, I can't, I don't know. Uh, I've, I've actually, I quite like a, a, a cheeky BK. Um, the Steakhouse Angus. Let's get an extra patty in there. Oh. Bosh. Bosh. Done. Um, it's, uh, it's it's a bit more expenny than the, than the other ones, but uh, do you know what? On the, When you're on a road trip... Slide that one down your gullet. Um, yeah. Obviously, you've got the uh, gap at the bottom of your screen. We'll talk a little bit on topic just for a brief while before we um, run uh, run uh, well run our mouth on something completely relevant. Uh, Charlie Collins, uh, Sir Charles, Sir Collins, actually, Sir Collins uh, is closing down 16 seconds now off the rear end of Josh Lads. Let's close down an extra five seconds uh, as we're wisely informed that Elvis Rankin um, is off the road. Oh. I wonder where it could have been. Let's see. How about that? Instantly. And it's off at our favorite corner. Bellingham. Still a little bit wet over there. Gets it uh, gets it pointed in a straight line so he doesn't get stuck in the mud, though. But that's that's the first time we've seen a mistake through there in a couple of laps. Everybody had it figured out, but poor old Elvis Rankin, once again, realizing there's still a little bit of water left on the track and uh, and just locking it up that little bit, throwing it off the road. Curious to see where... Uh where Elvis Rankin is actually racing from because um, obviously he was recently a part of the uh, the Apex racing team was uh, was racing from Corby the last time I had a conversation with him um, when he was in the uh, in the Porsche Commander squad I was like oh, where are you racing from in this and he was like you'll never guess and I was like is it Corby still and he's like yeah it is actually I was like really uh, not the actual Apex racing facility I think his like grandparents or something live somewhere in that kind of area um, but I just thought that was really funny um, so he still might be racing from that area despite not being a part of the team so he's not going to get involved invited to the golf range um, with Pete Berryman anytime soon. It's fine. Jonas Wanner into the pit lane, uh, as I believe is Pedro Sanchez Albert in the LMP2 category. So we're probably uh, entering that uh, that pit window sequence. I am just going to very quickly check weather um, because it's the weather report works for about the next four hours. So that will take us almost up to the end of the race. It is 0% for that entire time. How oh dear. I, don't believe we are getting any more rain to the point where I am absolutely sure that Dane Baird has not updated this graphic or is not, well, he doesn't need to. Exactly. It's the same it's the as it was same. earlier. But I yeah. at least would want him to like spice it up a little bit, I don't know. Yeah, last laps or so, a little bit of transition, but 
I guess that's the magic of the weather. It's extra realistic. Sometimes we uh, we come on realistic. We come onto a racing weekend and you see the forecast. It's like a hundred percent chance of rain, like a week before, and you're like, "Yeah, we're finally gonna get a Ooh. wet race. It's gonna be awesome." As there's a nice dive from Mr. Challens, and then it gets to the weekend and it's totally dry. Uh, again, so in 2022, it was my first year commentating on GB3, and I was we were expecting it to be wet all the time because it's this country. You know what it's like. Uh, we didn't have a wet race. I'm pretty sure. Oh, I can't remember when our first wet race was. It wasn't for like at least the first 10 races. Remember, it's a 24 race season. Um, I, I think we only had like one or two wet races uh, that round. I think it was Silverstone. It was the second time we went to Silverstone. It was the third race um, was wet. Other than that, completely dry all the way through which is crazy because again it's this country and then last year was exactly what you would expect pretty much every race was wet including when we went to the netherlands where it was disgusting there we go he spiced it up a little bit uh not three hours uh sorry not four hours he's put one two and three so well and it's done. again it's still clear infinite it will be dry here until the end of time till the end it will never be wet again sorry everybody we had a couple of hours nice of wet crops. racing and we're never going to see it again. But also NASCAR last year, I think it was like it was something, some, some, some amount of double digits of weekends that were affected by rain. Yeah. So you want your road racing series to have rain because that's OK. And then you get to uh, you get to the ovals where we can't race in the wet and they all decide to uh, start pouring it down. The first ever Daytona 500 that I, uh, that I ever watched was um, influenced largely by wet weather. Um, pretty sure the delay was something like five or six hours. Um, and then Dale Earnhardt Jr. won. And Austin uh, Dillon flew into the fence. Wrong year, I think. No! Was it that year? Which year was it? 14. Yeah, that was that year, I think. Was it? Or was that 15? No, nah, I think Austin Dillon was the year after, yeah. I don't, I don't recall it was... I, I, think, I don't think Austin Dillon was, was 14. Um, Austin Dillon made his debut in 14. Didn't he have the pole position? Yeah, you're right. And also, also, when he flew also into the fence, that was the uh, the July race anyway. Oh, was it? Yeah. Goodness me, I don't even remember. There we go. I, 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 again, like I, uh, I, I've, I've watched my fair share of NASCAR. Uh, I've, I, to be fair, I've not watched much since this new generation of car. Every time I'm like, oh, cool, some of the racing's like really interesting. And I'm like, oh, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't have the same vibe about this new generation of car, even though I think it does look pretty sick. I just... I, same as with, with supercars. To be fair, V8 supercars, I've always thought, since even since the Mustang came into it, I was like, no, not V8 supercars to me. My first season of V8 supercars, again, it's 2014 as well. It was when you had, it was, it was one of the earlier years of this generation, of, of that generation of, of, of supercar, where it's, it, it's all, you know, uh, saloons, um, so four door saloons, uh, and you had obviously the 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 the, 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 the Holden Commodore. Uh, you had the Falcon, um, but then you also had the uh, Mercedes. You had the Volvo, uh, and you had the Ultima, which the Ultima did last a couple of seasons afterwards. But like the Volvo only lasted like really like two seasons, and then it was binned off. Um, and then Scott McLaughlin went over to the um, the Falcons, obviously, uh, but. I don't know. I, just, I miss. I miss every time I look back at it. I'm like that for me is like it's almost like that's peak V8 supercars. Seeing all five of those and you know, the variety and stuff, but it feeling like V8 supercars and the crazy racing. It's, oh, I miss it. I'm have jaded. you seen the SpongeBob Camaro? For, <laughs> it does uh... look good. It, I will say, ten out of ten. But it still doesn't feel like V8 supercars. Yeah, they're a little bit like they're almost like GT4 cars. At yeah. This point. They were, they're almost, I think they're, they're faster than GT4 cars. They're not far off GT3 cars at some points. I mean, they're faster in a straight line than GT3 cars. It's got less downforce. Um, which, like I said, when it was, when someone, when you see like a Ford Falcon, right? And then someone, like, like someone who's like well into GT3 racing and I tell them they go faster into the chase than a GT3 car and they go, no, they don't. And I'm like, no, they're pushing nearly 200 miles an hour going into the chase. You go, I don't believe that. Until you see it and you think, that is basically just a normal road car. It's basically a Ford Mondeo in this country, whatever. Uh, or, you know, it's a normal road car doing 200 miles an hour into the chase. It's, if, if there's something that feels crazy about it. Seeing a Mustang or a Camaro do it, I'm like, I don't really care. 
Do you kind of get what I mean? It's, just, yeah, it's, it's like, not as special. Yeah, they're expected to do that. Yeah. It's and that's where all the uh, yeah, that's where all the NASCAR Cup cars are now too. Except for the well, actually, yeah, even with the uh, the Camry's been taken away, so it's a Supra now. They're all yeah, forty cars. I don't know. There's, there's just something fun about seeing a a non sporty car do sport. It's why my favorite car in Super GT is the Prius. I love oh, it. I think mean, it's hilarious. It's just it's because it, it's 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 so stupid. I love it. Um, to be fair, I've not really watched Super GT in a little while, but um, again, it's, it's, I, I, I like that. That's why I quite like British touring cars because it's all just like, it's just, I don't know. It, it's a Vauxhall Astra winning races. How cool yeah. is that? It makes what me want the, the Lexus in GT3 yeah. in iRacing still, which we, which we still need to get because that's like the only one left that's like a regular road car pretty much. You see a Lamborghini and uh, it's probably similar the price of a, a road going Lamborghini and the price of a GT3 yeah. Lamborghini, but the price of a road going Lexus and a GT3 Lexus, that's probably the widest range you're possibly going to get. Yeah, as I said, I like the idea that it's just a regular. The, the problem is with the Lexus, even though, yeah, there is like the, like, fair, fair enough, like, there is a slightly new one, whatever. It's still, it just looks dated. At all times, it looks dated. Uh, but then again, I've said before, I think the GT3s and stuff and iRacing is that we just need more of them. Um, yes, please. For example, where on earth is the 720? How is it that we've still got the MP4-12C? There's been like two McLarens since between that. Yeah. Um, that said, if you did get rid of it, people would complain because it is the fire breather, um, which is just excellent. And in the same thing, I will miss the Ford. I'll miss the Ford GT when inevitably it's gone and they replace yeah. it with the Mustang, but I will miss it. I will miss it less because it wasn't, it, it wasn't proper. You know what I mean? No, it was. Yeah, it was. It was fake from the beginning, basically. Yeah. So it's kind of like, as much as I understand, like it's it's, it's a cool meme machine. Um, it's just it's it's not got quite the same gusto. Um, but uh, people do love it. I know people that still, like, obviously, even now, like, they, they'll they'll still like the Bathurst Twelve Hour. Ryan Walker's one of them. I think Ethan Bass as well. Uh, yeah. They'll all they'll always do the. Um, but the, the, well, if there's a Ford available, they'll take it. That's the GT. Because it's ridiculous. There's something about the stupidity of it. And there's certain places where it's like especially fast. I remember the uh, the old Bassmaster, Ethan Bass. He almost won a league race at Le Mans in the Ford because it was just so grunty and it had such straight line speed that uh, he, he could have pulled off the upset. Fuji as well. He was really fast at Fuji in that thing too. And uh, I say you got to respect it. You gotta, you gotta respect the grind. You gotta respect the consistency of someone just to stay with a car, regardless of whether it's good or bad. Um, so again, fair enough. This is the second, by the way, of the uh, of the VRS Coanders. Um, Waffle o'clock will uh, will have a little breather um, for a second. They do have the race clutch uh, red car directly ahead, and they're both uh, a little ways down the order. Don't. What happened? To that. I, I, have I missed something? Oh, yeah, no, no, no I have. Uh, I'm just trying to remember. This is the thing. I said this to our junior earlier. I've seen so many crashes in the uh, race so far. They all kind of like merge into one. And I can't fully remember what happened to the VRS Commander car, but something happened to this VRS Commander car, uh, as we'll see a replay of it. Hey, was, this, it? was this the crash? No, that was the, no, that was was the off up. a couple of laps ago. I think the crash was into sunset right here, actually. And it was uh, it was straight onto the, into the wall when it was a little bit more wet out there. Yeah, potentially. But either way, it dropped down a little bit. Because um, I do remember them, yeah. Because I even got a message from Seb Hawkins saying, well, now VRS Commander do have um, a car they can experiment with on strategy, which is hilarious and true. <laughs> um, bearing in mind our conversation from earlier. Here is the replay of what happened. Yes, because then they got the contact on the inside and it went straight on. I do remember it now because Mitch De Jong was exploring parts of Sebring. See, as soon as I see it, I'm like, ah, yes, now I remember. But Registers back in mind. Yeah, exactly. I can't... Someone asked me earlier, like, what happened to the Apex Racing Team car? I had no idea until our junior explained it to me bit by bit. Terrible. Yeah. No this, is some, this is some fun traffic here. You got the Apex Audi, you got the Grid and Go LMB2, and you've got a sandwich of GTPs that are both five laps down. This is These are some of those magical situations where you get a little bit bored 
probably at times when you're just making laps, you're not dealing with anything, you're not racing for position, but now suddenly you are racing for position and you also have about three different classes coming together at one place in the track. This is this is necessary. This wakes up some of the drivers that may get a little bit complacent, a little bit bored, gets the blood flowing again, gets the neurons firing again, and it, uh, it gives us a little bit of something to talk about that isn't Diet Dr. Pepper. Exactly. Um, no, I, I, it's basically what was Carl Janssen was saying earlier in, uh, in his interview, where he was basically suggesting that it's not quite like doing uh, a race where it's only GT3s, like when we go raid, when we did the, the, the Fuji 8 hour last year, or you know, even um, Nordschleife and stuff, where it is you in the track, and sometimes in the middle of the night or late in the race, you can become a little bit complacent, not really focus on what's happening, drift off, fade away into... Uh, well, into obscurity in your mind, and then suddenly you're coming back to reality as you're visiting a barrier at high speed. Um, in this, you, you're you constantly kind of like knocked out of your rhythm by all the cars around you. Um, so it's fine, uh, as uh, one of the cars rejoins the racetrack from the pit lane, I believe, or maybe it's just running really, really wide, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it's, just, it's, it's enough to keep you in the rhythm. Sometimes that can be dangerous. That is why I ran out of fuel um, from a two-lap lead in Sebring. Um... Because I was so focused on like lapping traffic and doing that solidly, I completely forgot to pit. And it was coming down to this corner, the car shut down. Um, that was we're, just we're just having you re reveal all of your uh, your past sim racing trauma today, Lewis. I know, it's bad, isn't it? You gotta remember every, all the bad every moments. Time, every time I come on down Sebring, every time I remember it. And, I'll get you uh, to remember a good moment one of these days. I don't have many good moments at Sebring, unfortunately. Neither do I. Um... I've got good moments, good moments on other tracks. Albert Park, great moments at Albert Park, um, but not a Sebring. Um, I do really enjoy racing Sebring, actually, but no good moments um, at Sebring, sadly. Yeah. All my good moments are at Watkins Glen. Really? I think my crowning sim racing achievement was like probably five weeks into getting iRacing in the first place. I was in a BMW GT4 like single make series back when the BMW was the only GT4, and oh, I was nice. in third. And uh, a guy named Zach Brown was in the race. Oh, nice. He got really mad and got into a, an in-car argument with another driver, and they killed each other in the carousel, and that's how I, I won one of my first road races. And I think that the is... only GT4 race I've ever won. Oh, it's top tier. What I rating are you? Uh, on road? Not very high. I, I don't participate as much as I, I should. I think I'm at 2059 right now. That's okay. It's definitely higher than Cam Roger. You're okay. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm uh, above average because I actually participate sometimes, but sometimes. this was this was pre-commentary when I actually had time and motivation to do mm. multiple races per week. Now it's now it's a I little bit more scarce. Yeah, no, I don't. I really don't drive anymore. It's very rare that I do drive for two reasons. Number one, I'm slower than I used to be, which does kill me. Uh, and number two, um, most of the it's like I commentate on so many races where I just like, oh, the idea of like, oh, here's your spare time, go do some racing. I'm like, no, thank you. Uh, this, by the way, again, it is a battle four position, seventh position uh, on the road. They're five laps down, but they are on the same lap. So um, it is a genuine battle between uh, Elvis Rankin and the uh, the race touch car that's being driven by uh, Euro Letton. And uh, at the moment, see if there's going to be a move uh, from Elvis Rankin here. A little bit of a look to the inside. Didn't quite commit to it going down to Cunningham. Bit of lap traffic for them to deal with in the form of one of the Drago racing cars. Uh, one of the people, by the way, in this broadcast booth, has won um, at Sebring. Uh, so it looks like that. Dane Baird. Uh, I'm pretty sure he won split 79. <laughs> I still have I mean, no idea. It's, it's, it's probably, it, it, uh, if I were a betting man, I would say split 9. No, 8. 16, apparently. I mean, you were, you were close. I mean, if we're talking like on a scale of, uh, of how many splits there are, if there were 100 splits... I would say he would be split 79, but if there were like 21, 16 makes sense. Exactly. Well done, Dane. We're proud of you. He was uh, he was 2K. So this is about where you are. There you go. That would be my split. Me and Dane need to race now. That's true. Uh, my I rating is far higher than it should be um, because I decided it was a good idea to grind Formula 4 cars at Scuba uh, a little while ago. It wasn't actually that long ago, uh, but I went from, I think it was like 2.5k to 3.5k in one week, uh, which is fine, uh, and now I've refused to drive. I think it's 3.2. I lost a bit doing other races, and now I'm like, no, I won't do it again. Um, the other week, I said I was going to take out the rig again and do a little bit of racing, mm. get back in the rhythm, and it was the Formula 4 series at Snedderton. Nice. And then... It, it would have been nice, 
but that Brundle Nelson complex. Bad, isn't it? It's awful. I hate it. It's bad. It is bad. Followed by a corner called Bombhole, which is Bombhole is great. I love Bombhole. And then you have to do the same thing basically through uh, the final Coram, two corners. Yeah, Corum into uh, into Murray's. Yeah, indeed. Um, and also, it is one of the worst circuits for navigators or commentator. Um, it all looks the same, and it's flat. Not even that. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna, again, more stories with Lewis, sorry. Uh, you've got 17 and a half minutes of me for this, and then I'm off for two hours, <laughs> and I'm back on, don't worry. Uh, and then stories with Arjuna. So, exactly. You've got the start finish straight, right? Um, and on the left-hand side, you have the timing tower, right? Which is also the commentary box for British GT and for GB3, and that's where they do British touring cars as well. It's, it's, it's under the timing tower, right? Which is on the left-hand side, and obviously the pit lane is on the right-hand side. Um, so you would think that the distance between the commentary booth and the paddock area is no more than a 60-second walk, right? It is less than 100 meters. It's very close. You have to walk over as the race clutch red car uh, of Yero Lennon does come into the pit lane, relieving uh, Elvis Rank in that position for seventh spot. Um, so you would assume then there would be a nice, easy walk over to the paddock area. It's not. You can't do it. So what you have to do is you have to get in your car. You have to drive. It is a, I'm not joking. It is like a two and a half mile drive. You have to drive all the way back around to the main entrance, which is going all the way around the circuit. Then you have to cross over the bridge and drive all the way back around on the inside of the circuit to the start to 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 the the paddock area. And generally speaking, when I do that after a race, I am doing that for one interview. How infuriating is that? It sounds terrible. It's not fun. Frustrating it's track to drive and frustrating tr track to commentate. Yeah, but yeah, it's still exactly. around. Exactly. And it's also in Norfolk, so mm. that is uh, that is a lose-lose. You've commented with Zach Sweeney? I think so. A couple times. Norfolk. Exactly. That's the problem. I would Ooh, like to see Norfolk Cadwell Park on iRacing just to oh, suffer. Love Cadwell Park. It's not really a, it's not, it's not, it's not really a car racing circuit, really. It's once they do race cars around there. It's more, f like, it's more of a bike racing track. Supercars work quite well around there. Anything larger than say like an MX-5 is too big for Cadwell Park. Yeah. Um, great track though. But I would like to see GTP LMP2 GTD at Cadwell oh, Park. Oh, absolutely. Just for the heck of it. Just for the I would, heck of it. I would honestly, I'd give it a go. I would give it a go. Cadwell, it's not really like represented too much in the world of sim racing. I think it's on, probably on AMS2. It's probably one of the only places a solid build of it at the moment. Um, but, uh, I don't think, no, as you see, Dane's just said it doesn't Formula V have the lap record around there. I don't believe so, but I wouldn't be surprised. I think it is something silly because I think it is something like a supercar. I think a supercar might have the lap record around Cabell Park because it's so small. Let's see. Let's check the supercar. facts here. Wikipedia, second monitor. Yeah, 2021 supercar. See? 121. I know my stuff. Uh, that doesn't shock me because, again, supercarts. If you're thinking of like normal kart racing, if you don't know what a supercar is, uh, you're wrong. It is the size of a kart, but a thing that is absolutely unrealistically fast. They are so quick. They race around circuits like Snetterdon uh, because they're that quick. Uh, and so, somewhere like Cadwell Park, where the reason why it won't be a bike is because a bike obviously you've only got two wheels for grip so going around corners you'll be slower um you've got a supercar which is something small which accelerates really quickly which is small so it can use a lot of the track and it has four wheels so it's got a lot of balance and stability going through that middle portion of the track those things are rapid they're terrifyingly quick um, i need to go on like the uk like motorsports grand tour whenever i end up back in britain i'm gonna hit all the spots I wanted to see the, uh, the the European Truck Racing Championship or the British Truck Racing Championship at Brands Hatch when I was there, but it didn't line up, and I need I need to get all these life experiences back. I've missed them all. Yeah, I mean, look, the thing the thing with um, uh, you know, some some of the racing, some of the weird racing stuff. I know my uh, a friend of mine went to the truck racing stuff at. Um, I think it was the last event of the year last year. I might have been the year before, um, at Brands Hatch, which was truck racing, and they all like set off like fireworks and stuff. And it was great. Apparently, it's, apparently it's great. I've never seen truck racing. It is one form of motorsport that absolutely 
absolutely terrifies me. I know uh, one of the people who's been on the uh, Williams Esports stream today, Chaz Draycott, does the European um, Track Racing Championship. It terrifies me because I always think back to um, like all the South American truck racing uh, stuff where you'll see like an instant of this truck bomb it off the road at about 120 miles an hour uh, and no brakes because uh, obviously they overheat and then they go or whatever and they've got no brakes uh, and then it goes towards the barrier and it's almost like a Looney Tunes cut out of a truck like bombing it through the, the and you're just like brilliant and all I can think about is that I'll be stood there watching truck racing and you've got to treat it like rally racing where you can't stand on the outside of a corner because you'll just get flattened by a lorry whose brakes have failed and the barrier is used to stopping a car hitting it at 120 but a lorry that weighs eight times more than a car or whatever uh, hitting it at half the speed is enough to just absolutely detonate that part of the barrier I'm still sold yeah no, I'm, fair enough I'm absolutely sold fair enough I do will you not be have truck racing in America. Um, I don't think so, which is kind of weird. You do. Yeah, right. Like, why is that a European thing to have semi trucks racing? That seems Let's see. ridiculous. Is there an American truck racing championship? Let's see. You've got to have American. Because they do like they do like school bus racing at like the local yeah, short exactly. tracks. Exactly. Let's that see. just seems crazy to me. Uh, like Formula truck in Brazil. Yeah, exactly. that's that's what I was talking about. Uh, is 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 that's the one where I see where you, like they'll go off the road and they'll hit a barrier and just completely pierce it. I found a series called the Bandit Big Rig series. Oh, see, now are they that still sounds running? American. Are they still running? Let's see. Um, supposedly they'll be at Elko Speedway in Minnesota on June fifth. But this looks like it's like a short track thing. Yeah, it's not like, exactly. Yeah, it's not road you, course racing. Yeah, you wouldn't get like. A truck racing it around here. By the way, we don't mean like with a, um, like a, a trailer, so not an eighteen wheeler. It's just like it's just the lorry itself, the, the truck. Yeah. Uh, Dane has a question, uh, which I even I feel like I can answer. Um, why do you call small trucks, like for example a Ford F one fifty, a truck, but then you call the big trucks? like a lorry semi trucks now i don't know the, the, no well surely it's because this the, like the 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 the, the semi the, like they it's because then it's that's not the full truck like you, you park it onto a trailer and then it becomes yeah. the full truck right or it might um, be that uh surely it's to do with that it might be that there's if there's multiple trailers that might be like a tractor trailer and if it's a semi truck that's just like the one trailer but i don't yeah, know i, guess I, so. I don't know well, my truck etymology well 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 semi is is, is it, it means half yeah so whoa my goodness me that was a late time to dive that one down in there for the pgz car i thought it was going to be a crash straight away um but yeah the semi surely like the semi the semi is is half he's googled it and lewis is right that's the, i'm just I, I was right on the super cup thing i'm right on this arjuna will not believe me he is not going to be able to follow this up also why is it called a, a lorry i don't know why that no, no, that i have no idea is there a guy john lorry or something no but uh, yeah no, i don't know but then why is a truck called a truck good question this is linguistics chat i'm glad we've exactly, got this. exactly there's there's the, you know, this this like when's a rock a boulder all that kind of stuff the word lorry was first used in Britain to ca ca oh, 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 characterize, categorize a low loading trolley pulled by a horse drawn vehicle to carry other vehicles and large loads. Lorry was also used to describe a freight carrying rail car. Was it? Uh, these are likely to have been where the first transport lorries. That doesn't end. tell me where it comes from, though. No, it exactly. tells me like the history. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but that's like the whole uh, like trying to find out why we drive on the left. It's a really complicated like. It's it's not something that you could just Google find one answer and be like that is that is the answer. There's a lot more to it. Uh, British railroad word. We don't really call them railroads, but that's fine. Uh, probably the verb lurry to pull mm. or tug in the 1570s, which is of uncertain origin. So basically, no one knows. Interesting. I also looked up lorry etymology, and from o the what Oxford English Dictionary, from the Oxford English Dictionary, it says it comes from like the name lorry, like Hugh Lorry. So I don't know who really to believe. Not, but that's, yeah, but Hugh Lorry is L A U R I E, not yeah, L O R Y. Yeah, it says that it was like it got 
changed from that, apparently, in the mid 19th century, according to Oxford. That. I don't believe that. Who knows? I don't believe that. Any linguists in the Twitch chat or the YouTube chat, please tell us. If, is anyone still awake watching this at the moment? <laughs> oh my God. We're really what? lurrying Where? along. Oh. Yeah, to be fair, when I said the verb lurry, I did. Uh, it is spelled L U R R Y, whereas it's L O R R Y. So again, this is this is words and changing and time and um, science and like I say linguistics stuff, which I am not smart enough to understand. I only speak <laughs> one language and I barely speak that. Exactly, me too. Um, so all of you people out there that can speak multiple language languages, nice. Uh, hats off to you. Yeah, basically every driver in this field who pretty isn't uh, British or American, pretty much. Pretty much. Um, Vince Kissy said, by the way, Lewis is always right. So, uh, And that's why he was the first commentator to win the Simi twice. Have it, Arjuna. He's not even it. <laughs> he um, might be able to hear us. He might be getting ready. Vince is uh, he's my hero. Uh, and also did take part in... Uh, I was going to say, well, I can't remember what it was that he took part in. It was something that he raced in recently that, that I remember seeing him racing in. I want to say prime time, but I don't think it was. I think it was something else. Um, anyway, right. Uh, the race Let's is go. still happening. You've got seven more minutes of me. So, Dane can speak multiple languages. I don't believe you. I think he was just making fun of your sentence where you said oh. I can speak multiple language. Uh, right, yeah, fair enough. That doesn't make sense. Um, I don't believe you can speak more than one language. Um, I think it is just English. I always, when someone English says uh, that I can speak another language, most of the time I don't believe them. I'm like, yeah, no, you can't. Me neither. You can, you can say some words in like German. I can count to ten in Polish, right? That doesn't mean I can speak Polish. Um, I can say a lot of things in Polish that are really inappropriate. Um, we'll say them in seven minutes' time. Yeah, exactly, and I will do. Um, Dane apparently got 100% in his Latin GCSE. So yeah, but nobody speaks count. that anymore. Yeah, no, it that's, doesn't a that's a dead language. Yeah, I think I got a solid grade in Latin as well. All Who that are you? does. Who are you, proves, the Pope? All it does is it proves that you went to a posh school. <laughs> that's all that statement tells me. So, moving on. Um, it is what it is. There's no. The, again, all we're looking at the moment is we're looking at potential. Potential gaps. This is a battle for fourth position um, on the road. The Williams Esports BenQ car getting onto the rear end of the uh, the W1 grid and go uh, car is an actual battle for position. So that's solid. Uh, the gap for the race lead is closing down. Josh Ladd is being closed in on by uh, Sir Collins, uh, but it's not quite down enough. Um, I say it's just it's, it's it's all it's all potential brewing at the moment rather than anything meaty. There could be some meat being created here, though. Cody Deeth versus uh, Louis Nasser with uh, the Falcon Audi kind of kind of hunting in the background a couple of laps down. This is not the same foregone conclusion as the previous Williams versus fellow Audi battle, though, when uh, when Sota Muto was carving his way through the field. No offense to Louis Nasser, but he's just not quite as quick as uh, as Cody Deeth right now. Cody gets a little bit of a gap, a little bit of LMP2 action as the Simufi LMP2 has figured out how to keep it on the road over the last couple of hours. And uh Still can't find a way to get by, though, so the train continues. Yeah, indeed. It's, uh, like I said, it could be uh, fairly frustrating. Uh, again, it's Williams Esports BenQ car was leading uh, earlier on before a very unfortunate disconnection in the hands of this man, by the way. Um, oh, also, I didn't explain the full story on that. Um, he disconnected on apparently the last lap of his stint as well. How painful oh is that? Not... Well, I mean, it could be It could be worse. So It's somewhat lucky. And also... The tow time was so short because uh, uh, it was I don't. I don't think he was all the way around. I think I he know. was. He was. It, it, the tow time was still like enough. Oh yeah, I'm lost. thinking about the the grid and go LMP2. I think. Yeah. Or somebody else. Fair. So much has happened in this race. It, like I said, it all does kind of merge into one. We've seen replays of things that are completely irrelevant. Replays of things that are relevant. Replays of things that we wanted to see that weren't relevant. Replays that we didn't want to see that were relevant. And now we're just we're talking. Yeah. Words, <laughs> phonemes. It is. It's just this it, again. It's just uh, it's, it's 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 a whole weighing. I didn't realize, by the way, the LMP2 uh, Williams uh, Esports guy now has a lap lead. I knew it was quite close. They're up to a hundred seconds uh, when we were interviewing um, Carl Janssen. Uh, but Kenneth uh, Gilbranson has has managed to pull out a whopper, uh, and they now lead the entire field by a lap in LMP2. How boring is that? Oh, that's a bit of a look. It is. 
but anything can happen. There's uh, there's a lot that can happen in the next four hours. There's not going to be any rain, but there's always nice. those uh, those interesting traffic interactions. There's always those mistakes. It's always possible that the uh, the Swede and the Norwegian could be finished. Norwegian. N Norweden. Norweden? Norweden doesn't really work. Swindon? Nor Swindon. No, that's, no, that's, that's near me. That's different. <laughs> Swindon is near me. The home of the Magic Roundabout. Um, are you aware of what the Magic Roundabout is? Probably seen it. Whoa. Oh, dear. That's the Falcon uh, Sim Racing Team car being sent around. There we go. We've got a replay. Woo. Spool it up, baby. Um, the Magic Roundabout. Uh, you don't really have roundabouts much in the US. Um, as we'll see, the uh, the Falcon. Oh, this is the race clutch car that absolutely slaps him around. That was embroiled in that, uh, in that fight trying to get past the commander. Um... It is a roundabout that you can technically go both ways round um, because it's five little roundabouts around a roundabout. It's like a it's like a solar system. Yeah, and do you know what the worst thing about it is? It really works. It huh? genuinely works. Yeah, yeah it, it it is good for traffic flow. And also doesn't cause as many accidents as everyone thinks. It's a common uh, misconception. Everyone's like, because you see it from above and you think that's a disaster. But it's better for traffic because if you want to um, go onto the roundabout and let's say um, turn, you are going to be leaving on the fourth exit, right? Now on a normal roundabout, you have to join and then go all the way around. Whereas on this, you just turn right and then just go one roundabout down and then right and off. You don't, you don't then mess over all this, the traffic on the other side. Now, I'm sorry to talk about that, but it's only because you brought up Swindon. <laughs> I think I would make people very mad if I was regularly driving on roundabouts. We do have them. New Jersey has a lot of them, and Connecticut has a lot of them as well, but they can You just me. straight line them. I get scared. Yeah, I just... How do you get scared of roundabout? Yeah, to be fair, we have so many areas like... Just like that gif, full throttle, over the curb, over the, nice. over the grass on the inside. Nice. I do attack roundabouts at quite high speed. So, um, but again, it's the, the whole. Uh, re honestly, yes. Absolutely. You got to pretend you're like at Long Beach in the fountain section. As I'm driving up to a roundabout, oh, I just don't know if I should say this because it's against the law. It's fine. Um, <laughs> but as I'm driving up to a roundabout, I'll like pop it into third gear and I'll be watching to the right, obviously, where the direction of traffic is coming from. And if there's no traffic, you're absolutely right. I'm slamming that throttle down. There you go. Um, I don't encourage that kind of driving, though. If be the, safe uh, drivers. Yeah, if the motoring police are listening, you didn't hear that. That was AI. That wasn't Lewis. No, exactly. Um, we are 30 seconds away from me jumping out of the booth, so uh, I have no summary to give you, just that it's been uh, it's been exciting. I have had a great time. And with you, Joe, we had, we had a good bit of banter. We did. Kind of chatting about absolute rubbish. But Williams Esports Chill Blast are leading both the GTP category uh, and LMP2. Uh, Drago Racing currently leading in the GTD category, but in the GTPs and the GTDs, gaps are closing in. It is only the LMP2s uh, that are looking sort of set in their ways with the Williams Esports Chill Blast. The most important note as well is that there is no rain expected um, over, the, uh, over the end portion of this race. I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of our junior is going to take back over not just commentary but also broadcast duty so we shouldn't have any pointless replays have fun <laughs> Well, welcome along, ladies and gentlemen, for more hours. Unfortunately, no rain. But yes, our Juno Kanki party back alongside with Joey Tevin to take us to those final two hours. And Joey, I mean, you head into these closing stages. You always know that at this point, the gaps are liable to open up, even with the advent of the rain here today. It's still been a fascinating race, to say the very least. It has been. There's been a lot of thrills. There's been, been a lot been of spills. A lot of thrills. Most There's of been them a lot coming. Of spills. Most of them coming in the wet situations. But now it's kind of a reverse from what we expected. We expected the 2024 12 Hours of Sebring to be a wild card because of the wet weather. But now it's a little bit of a wild card because of the lack of wet weather. For the next four hours, there is no rain left in the forecast, despite it being absolutely soaked at times in the first eight hours. So now everybody has to readjust. If you were focused on that wet weather running, if you were focused on practicing that in the weeks and months before the race, that suddenly goes out the window. You're back to regular old Sebring mode, and you got to work out a way to, uh, to do anything in these final four hours in the total dry. It doesn't look as 
orange ready as it did a couple of years ago in that world endurance championship race that looked rather scary but uh, interesting ca track conditions to say the least for these drivers even though they are familiar they are still fun uh, that is what we are going to enjoy on board with third place Dory Sports and uh, Jesse Jones the uh, camera operator for us right now you can see the lap times ebb and flow as they uh, carve their way through traffic Jess Jesse someone that has raced his fair share on two wheels, but uh, as far as part of this Door Esports lineup, been able to work their way forward 10 positions so far today. And Joey, one thing I was talking about with Cam, are you a 12 hour race? Are you an advocate of the two driver lineup or the three driver lineup? Good question. I don't know. I mean, I guess it depends. If you have two nuclear powered fast drivers like Williams Esports Chill Blast, they have Carl Janssen and Kenneth Gulbranson why add another third driver to the equation but if you have so many fantastic high level drivers to choose from why not put three in and then when you do three you have a potential backup if your second driver runs into trouble or can't get in the car for whatever reason or has technical issues then you have a, a reserve driver of sorts who can who can help you so i can go both ways i didn't answer your question at all that was very political no i, I think the answer is in a lot of ways it doesn't really matter it's all just about the preference of the team and how the lineups, I guess, kind of work out. But I always feel like, you know, the, the amount of effort that these drivers put in, you to, to justify the amount of practice, you want to try and do as many hours as possible. So six and six is easy. And therefore, you know, everyone feels like they're doing enough of the race. You're correct, co completely correct. How many uh, instances today have we seen of, you know, teams unfortunately having drivers that have technical issues and therefore having to, to drop back a lap or so. so. Uh, having backups important so you can get back into the race as soon as possible but yeah just uh, something to, to keep in mind did see by the way that uh, pit stops underway now i got a note on my timing screen that the vrs coanda machine had quote unquote crashed it wasn't actually a crash it was just that young elvis rankin i think forgot to get the message that he was coming down to pit lane joey Oof. is he gonna oh he had to drive through the cones code murder what a shame to be to be thrown into jail for murder at that age. Throwing away your life, Elvis Rankin. But also, are you allowed to do that, or is that going to be an unsafe pit entry penalty for him? I, I didn't look at the at the entries list. I don't see a black flag, so I think he's probably no, okay. There, but there was a little bit of murder. They've been there for 90 seconds and counting, so I think unfortunately, no uh, no luck has oh, shone dear. their way. Now, I'll be completely honest in saying that as much as I'm sure Lewis McLean's commentary was absolutely riveting, I wasn't paying too much attention uh, to what he was saying, and therefore by extension, Joey, what you were saying as well. But uh, did you guys see what happened to the Fork and Sim Racing Audi just before uh, you switched over to, to, to me being here? Oof. No, we did not. We didn't see that specifically. That is a hellacious crash, and it's a hellacious crash on a straight, pretty much, which you don't normally expect, but it was a little bit of a GTP interaction. I think that's the uh, the overall race leader in the number six trying to get around the outside with the Falcon Audi in the middle of the road. The, uh, the GTP goes to the outside, and a little bit of contact means that uh, that concrete wall that was very inconveniently placed there the, uh, the Falcon Audi ends up in a very unlikely place to crash. You are right, it was the race leader. Let's ride back out of the exit of turn 2345, as Lewis and myself have henceforth named it. Um, I mean, uh, you, you've got to place the blame on both sides there, right? Because they both have enough time to take avoiding action, but both seem to assume the other's going to do so. Yeah, that's somewhat of a racing driver mentality, although the, uh, the Audi, I mean... It was a little bit of a blend. I think maybe the uh, the timing was a little bit misjudged, and uh, and Damon Woods didn't expect the uh, the number six to get to his outside that fast, and maybe expected him to be able to switch it back to the inside if he moved to the outside. But they met in the middle. One car gets to survive and live another day and continue on with its 15 second lead, and another car is uh, is destroyed in the concrete wall. Unfortunately, that's the uh, that's the magic of traffic sometimes. You say magic, some say pain. Pit stops underway for, well, Team Redline, Johnny Vecchio, as well as Reina Talvar in the Marla Racing Team Lamborghini. So it's going to be Vecchio out and in jumps Gustavo Ariel. And I don't know if we should expect any other driver changes at this point, although it would be a, a decent time to do so just before we head into that transition cutover point uh, but, uh, between the, uh, the sun setting and actually being 
in the nighttime running. There is a look at your race leader and race leader at this point by a full lap. It's been a dominant display after the uh, Apex Racing Team's 199 unfortunately had its issues after uh, what was a fun fight in the opening hour. Carl Jansen had to fight wheel to wheel with Michele Costantini, but not looking back and both drivers. I mean, Carl's looking calm, Kenneth's looking like this stint's not proving to be too much of a challenge for him, at least just yet. They're Scandinavian and they're cool all the time. So should we really be surprised? I don't think we really should. The only thing that's going to end this race for these guys is something out of their control, I think. You're not going to see either of these two drivers make a, a race-ending mistake in the dry in this car. So it's going to come down to potentially an instance like we saw with, uh, with the GTP and the Falcon Audi a couple of moments ago. Just a bad traffic interaction, a misjudged gap, or somebody missing the corner and taking them out. Because these two guys are absolutely locked in, and uh, I haven't seen either of them make a mistake in, in hours now. Times are dropping, though, in terms of temperature as well. So keep your mind on the fact that as the temperature drops off, grip will increase, and therefore drivers will be pushing. At one point, I saw the track temperature up to was as high as 38, 40 degrees Celsius. So drivers have not just had to deal with adjustments and setup for the rain, uh, but also potentially for uh, different conditions across even the, the dry as well. More pit stops in LMP2. I saw Jesse Jones came in from third. Simify and Lucas Perez bring their car in from fifth position. So three hours and 50 minutes to go. Probably going to be another six or so laps at the very least before we see uh, Gould Branson down and into the lane in a brand new livery. It's currently running one and two. In terms of GTD, let's go back to some of the fighting that we do have now that the pit stops have cycled on out. The Williams Esports Ben Q car, Louis Nasher, going to defend from Cody Deeth in the virtual coach by Grinning Go Machine. Yeah, we saw this battle a little bit earlier. It was the other way around as uh, Louis Nasser was able to get by Cody Deeth, but now Cody's got the job of trying to stick with Nasser here and, and not lose him too much. Pit stops are going to be coming around soon. The Williams Esports Audis have been very, very fast all day. You saw Soto Muto earlier just carving through the field when he was a little bit lower than he would have liked. Louis Nasser doing the same thing right now. If you want to prevent them from continuing their drive forward and putting themselves back in the, the fight for the win in GTD, basically all you can do is just try and stick with them, stay in the draft, maybe save a little bit of fuel if possible, and, uh, and just keep yourself alive and hope for some bad luck because they've been very fast. These races can so often be won by good and bad luck as well, but as we did kind of see in the two showers that we have seen today, if you get a chance to break away, don't look back. You'll be able to sort of take that advantage. And there were some teams that made, let's be honest, mistakes. You know who I'm talking about here, VRS Kawanda with the, the, the choice to go to slicks a little bit early, but outside of that it's not like anyone has really done anything too different in terms of strategy calls as interrupting this fight for fourth position traffic cut underneath through turn number one hello grid and go lmp2 how are you doing actually that's not the grid and go PGZ. that's one of the that's one of the team pgz ones but they look they look almost the same there's many many black and yellow lmp2s out in the field we didn't get confused by that very much in the last two hours, Arjuna, because the Williams Esports cars are actually differently painted. There's there's silver ones and there's purple ones, and everybody else has done a good job of uh, of being separated. But now I now I have just noticed Grid and Go and PGZ almost identical. Uh, you know what's actually you're you're right. The thing is, when it comes to Grid and Go in particular, it's a very vibrant sort of a yellow. So when you know things the, the light bounces off correctly. The, can be easy to see it. Uh, that virtual coach machine actually has the colors inverted, so the main color is yellow rather than blue compared to the regular grid and go cars. Uh, let's go back and check in with, with second place. So you can see here, this is a bit darker and a bit harder to, to pick up those yellow highlights. So uh, th that's what I mean. But well, maybe we need to, f to advocate for them to invert all the paint so they're all super bright. I think we just need to advocate for the sun not being setting right now because when the sun's setting, every car looks the same, unless you're looking closely at it. Yes, at that point, you've got to This use is my the, war against the sun. I don't like it. You've got to use those LED boards and things like that to try and figure out uh, who is who. We're going to get to that point as well, where you know, Sebring's not got any track lighting by uh, endurance racing definitions. Of course, it is still used as an airfield, but uh, we don't have any of those fun additions. So headlights are on. They're going to pave the way sooner rather than later. And as they come out of 
Sunset Bend. I mean, look how close to the wall that they get. Three hours and 48 minutes to go. Still only half a second or so that splits these two drivers in their fight. As they sit at this point, riding... God, 50 seconds off of your leaders. They're a wave behind at this point. So it's surprising to think even with a disconnect, that 13 machine is still somewhat in contention. Yeah, and a little bit of rally cross there through turn one for Cody Deeth, getting a little bit wide. I was going to mention through the final corner that there's a lot more comfort going around there now. You don't get as close to the wall as you did when you were in the wet, or you do get closer to the wall than you could in the wet, rather, because you're more comfortable. You're not going to run into a puddle that's going to spit you into the wall. You can take a little bit more of a risk through there, but through turn one, that risk is still the same. You carry too much speed through there. You end up in the grass, and you are doing a little bit of rally cross for the, uh, the next couple hundred meters. You're only seeing a couple splashes of water out on track, by the way, which tells you that it is basically completely dry. The only risk you're going to have, I think, is still if you go off at sunset, if you go off at the hairpin or turn 10, for that matter, where no cars have been, there might st still be a little bit of standing water out there. But anywhere else on track, you're not thinking about the rain anymore. Even the curbs are safe and dry now. Enjoying some of these looks from around the track, just showing you the conditions that the drivers are now enjoying. It, it's been challenging in a lot of ways. I mean, attrition has played a big part and played a big part from early on in this race. And Sim RC retired only 15, 20 laps into the race. And since then, 50 entry, we've been down to what seems to be around 35 or maybe still up there and running. to be down to 34 with the Falcon Sim Racing car uh, in GTD being the most recent of the retirees. So keep your mind. Uh, that there is less traffic around than there was at the start of the race and so uh, therefore as the conditions just continue to drop I think drivers are going to push this is what you're talking about though with the the confidence they have even though there's that big bobble through Sunset Bend uh, no worries in the mind of Cody D I don't know. And also 22 degrees Celsius for those of you on uh, on this side of the earth 71 degrees Fahrenheit in Florida so not really Florida temperature it's pretty cold on track pretty cold in the air as well 20 degrees celsius about 65 or so so it's, uh, it's getting chilly the sun's going down we didn't see any ponchos come out when the rain came out we had a very long segment on poncho watch seeing if anybody had any umbrellas but we might be on uh, we might be on winter coat watch now because it is florida yeah you know when i was in daytona earlier this year all surprising how temperatures just kind of plummet i know daytona is being early in the year the one race where they do actually bring the low weather low temperature tires occasionally uh, to the track just to, to cover off any uh, potential worries about just how cold it might be but Sebring being not just a little bit later on in the year but also a 12-hour race uh, definitely not those same concerns uh, I think again everyone just knows that you come here with one thing on your mind that is respect the bumps and hope that after 12 hours of respecting said bumps you're still pointed in the right direction and in some sort of a fight and at least there's a fight right now within the top five of one of our classes because it is quite let's be honest separated out right now there's a check-in with your leader drago racing manual troncoso 12 seconds in front of the sole non-audi that's still running in the class manuel just got back in the car after a nice little stint from nicholas mateo so manuel gets to continue his reign of terror out front this Lamborghini for the uh, the Mala Racing team, they've been doing, oh dear, trouble for the 33 and LMP2 actually, distracting us from that. It's not too consequential though, the Simify Esports number 14 has gotten into lots of trouble today. They're uh, about five laps down, and uh, I think they're going to stay five laps down with that one. Yeah, unfortunate because we know that they can be quick, but maybe just a, a sign of, you know, one team's able to stay out there and not put too much damage on the car. They're minimizing the impact of mistakes, which is something that's relatively important as well. Take a look at the replay. Let's figure out what happened. See, was there any interaction with the BS BMW? There may... No, there wasn't any contact there. I think there was a little bit of a bobble from the BMW that potentially made uh, Lucas Perez in the semifinal number 14 think the door was open, but he goes and clips the curb, slams on the brakes to not take out the BMW, and uh, ends up spinning himself in that way. Totally locks it up. Does a good job of uh, getting it locked up, though, and not hitting the wall not add even more damage to that car that has been in the wall a couple of times today. Yeah, a handful of times, unfortunately. Still inside of the top five. Uh, remarkable just to hear those words come out of my mouth. Now, grid and go in the LMP2 class down to pit lane, and it is going to be Rico Wenzel that jumps into the 003. Here comes Jesse Jones, 
who's going to fire it out of Sunset Bend and now wait to see if he's going to be able to beat uh, Rico Wenzel out of turn one. I think the answer to that is no, given that Grin and Go's car is going to release itself from the limiter and build itself back up to speed. But now what's going to be close to a six or seven second advantage. So very well judged pit cycle there. And that margin grows to uh, almost six times what it was before the pit entry, a uh, pit cycle actually begun. Yeah, it's not uh, it's not gone the most entertaining way in LMP2, but sometimes that's just the way things happen. The team has things absolutely figured out. A pair of drivers have things absolutely figured out. And uh, that's exactly what Williams Esports Chill Blast have done so far. But there's still almost four hours to go. Lots of things can happen. Old, uh, old Sir Charles Collins or Challens or Charles Lord Collins or all the names we called him in the in the previous stint. He finally, I think, gets to take a break and gets to uh, put good old Josh Rogers back in the car. He's back to work. He's Sir Charles. Uh, I think that it just suits him uh, because it doesn't suit him. And that's what makes it so great. Uh, so as Jane and Munoz cycles to second, it's once again Williams Esports one and two. Chill Blast leading Ben Q. Rogers is waiting to drop and roll away. The red light behind him in the Porsche Coanda hub. Purple lights behind uh, Charlie Collins. I wonder if that's a personal preference or uh, just how the lights are all set up. I, I'm pretty sure. Can you imagine if uh, all the lights, as far as I'm aware, can be controlled from like an iPad or something? Ooh, fancy. There's, pro there's probably some people in the chat right now who, who can do some international hacking. If you want to hack into the Coanda LEDs and uh, do some crazy stuff, I'm up for that. Kenneth Gold Branson's going to also roll off and away from pit lane after coming in for a full service. Still a full lap ahead of the rest of his class. It's not a, not a blip on the timing screen as sometimes you see at the end of these endurance races when a leader ends up uh, not lapped by the overall leader in their, of the race and, you know, other people in their class do in the final stages. This is just a brutal all-out assault in pace that's seen them just continue to pull away from those behind who have had various sorts of issues as Joe is alluding to especially with for example Simufi still being up in that top five back over to where we have two cars at least within touching distance of one another right now I think this might actually be the only two cars within five seconds of each other right now yeah, I mean, with the way things are going, they may not be within five seconds of each other in the near future because Louis Nasser is running away from this. I think Cody Deep is at the end of his stint, most likely. He's been in the car for a little while now. I do wonder if Sven Hassa might be getting ready to get back in the car, potentially, or even Nicholas Rubelar, for that matter. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, that was a car that was in the wall and definitely not going anywhere quick. So we're going to go take a look at an incident, I'm guessing, through turn one that's going to be uh, quite large in its nature. And it's a Dory Sports Audi that's uh, much like the Simi 5 car. Not really had the best of runs today. High speed entry, cars already sideways and into the wall with a one way ticket back to pit lane. Bonk indeed. And they were they were blending in with the wall, so you could barely see them by the time they towed. But yeah, that was not a, uh, a wet weather mistake anymore. That was the fact that this car has been damaged and crashed multiple times. It's not very stable and into turn one, hot tires, little bit of dirty air, a little bit of checking up, and uh, ends up with the door eSports Audi getting even more damage, but somehow it's still rolling. I think they're going to bring that car to the finish of the race, and it's going to have about 25-minute repairs on it, but somehow it will still be rolling. It's a very strong Audi. It is apparently a very strong Audi. Now, as Lucas Prada being, brings in the WSR eSports butt kicker number 23 from 10th in LMP2, see if we can test out what this is going to look like. We have a new graphic here at Racebot TV, which helps us to go and dive into stint comparisons and all sorts of wonderful things like that. Now we are 268 laps into this race. I don't know what this is going to look like. Let's hit the button. I mean, it's interesting just to see how those boxes all play out in first, second and fourth. Uh, if I hide it and remove it again, let's see if we can add Drago Racing to that as well. Yes, please. Ooh. Yeah, that's the reason they are different is because VRS Coanda had their little moment of going experimental and getting a little bit goofy coming down pit lane a couple laps earlier than anybody else. All those laps ago to uh, there you go. Give me give me a telestrated circle was when it, that happened. Was it 155 or 182? I'm trying to remember. 
Um, it's it's. I think 155 is when they pitted because 182 they came in a little bit earlier than they needed to because they switched back onto the wets. Or did that not happen? Did I imagine it's that? It's somewhere in here. Somewhere around there is when everything switched up. That's why it's slightly different. But now all four of those teams are specifically one of those teams and the other three need to be counting back to the end from here because they don't know who's going to be. Well, they know who's going to be at an advantage at the end of the race. Commentators don't because we're bad at doing math and there's still hundreds of laps to go. I, uh, if you want to know how hard it is to write with a mouse, just open up MS Paint. Oh, yeah, I've... It's awful. And try doing that. So that was the danger zone for VRS Kawanda. Um, that took me way more mental effort than it really should have. But uh, yes, uh, if, you, if you ever wanted to know, danger zones exist in sim racing as well. Uh, and right now, not on the highway to one because no rain on the forecast. Although having said that, how many hours have we got less, left in this race? Three hours and 37 minutes. We are four hours away from seeing rain. So as it no. stands right now, I don't think we're going to get a shower at the end. I think I know the reason why this happened. Before I got in the air today, I drove home from the DMV on Connecticut Route 15 in very, very heavy rain. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired. I was driving in the rain. I was making overtakes. I was in the spray. And then they decided to flip everything on the head. And I could use I could use none of my road going experience in my Buick to apply to this race. What a shame. It all rained out. Seems. Exactly. And, yeah, you, you know, we, we had two showers. That was really it. One that came right at the start, one that sort of interrupted us getting towards the halfway point. And it takes, 35, uh, it takes 30, 45 minutes for the track to dry after rain as well if it's heavy in its nature. That does mean, of course, that it's, it's a little bit lengthier of a period. Uh, we didn't necessarily see the awkward shower where it was 15 minutes, five minutes in length and uh, maybe a bit more of a question as to whether it was worth coming in and grabbing wet tires or not, which the, the forecast could change, right? So hypothetically right now, there's rain four hours from now, but not three hours and 30 minutes from now. That could suddenly become there is rain three hours and 30 minutes from now. And could you imagine if we got the level of rain that we got midway through this race right at the very end? I don't know. I'm, I'm looking up to the sky right now. I'm asking the weather gods if that's going to happen because that would be perfect. That would be textbook uh, questionable weather and a, a perfect scenario for this race. If you've gotten back into the dry rhythm, you've kind of forgotten about your wet racing stuff. You're back into the normal 12 hours of Sebring rhythm that you've done for about a decade since now or until now. Then suddenly it starts pouring again. I don't know. That could be the thing that opens up LMP2 potentially. That could that could spice everything up. I hope it happens, but I don't know. I, I, it depends on what the radar says. And uh, unfortunately, we're not going to get any more weather reports, at least here today, based on the radar as it seems right now. But uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun, and I think we're looking forward to what that's going to uh, look to be in the future as a, a staple of these uh, special events moving forward. In some ways... I'm glad that we didn't have it at Daytona, all of this rain mix up because we had the four GTPs for the very first time. There was so much other excitement with which to, to focus on. Uh, it, it's been interesting having the rain for this. And now I'm sure the drivers, especially given that there are some official series that have the rain enabled for every single week, are going to get more and more familiar with it. So when we go racing once again for the next of our, for our VCO Grand Slams, that's going to be uh, what, middle of June for the six hours of Watkins Glen. I'm not sure if it's going to rain there in the first place. B, they'll have a lot more, lot more uh, knowledge going into that one than they did this one. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. They, it was a wild card this week, even with the amount of practice they got. But even as unpredictable as rain is, the track isn't the same on any single lap. So you can't really practice it to 100%. You can still get used to the physics of it and realize your strategy, figure out how to avoid the puddles, figure out how to minimize aquaplaning. So I think what we actually need to do is we need to make sure these guys don't get complacent and we need to introduce snow for the first time. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that Williams Esports and uh, Michael Preston did actually kind of mention that we need to do a fake weather report uh, with the mention of snow in order for me to get one of their very tasty 
a new Puma team shirt, and so yes, you know, please. I'm all for that. Um, but first, I'll me. do it. I'll, I'll do an acid rain report if it means a new T-shirt. First me, then Joey. That's the order of operations. Might have been a disconnect in the PGZ 119 because I have just seen them jump to pit lane, and I think slightly off sequence as well. So hope all's okay in their uh, camp has been a race which has seen plenty of that that is for sure let's see by the way if we can if i can press the right button there's that weather report and apparently i can't spell either let me make sure the y gets added to the end of that bottom line but that's what i meant when i talked about how close it could be and sean campbell has jumped into the chat as well to say that you know we had a bit of confusion about the forecast and the radar and the rain when it started to come we could end up seeing rain at the very end of this race. I'm surprised Sean is in the YouTube chat when he's not driving. He usually saves that for when he's in the car. No, he, he's being serious today, Joey. Boo, I think we don't he, like that. I think if he sent us a webcam, there'd be no Nick Cage watching over his shoulder today. But also, that is, that is a critical graphic there because for basically the last hour, we've seen that it was going to be 0% rain until the end of the show. But... That could change. It could all change very quickly. That's the magic of dynamic weather. It might look like a beautiful day, but the clouds can come in, the winds can change, and it can start to rain again. Also, what you were mentioning with the PGZ 119, that was kind of awkward. I went back and looked at it. Lassie Urinen was in the car, pulled into pit lane, and then seemingly disconnected about five feet away from his pit stall which is very strange because that same car had a similar issue a couple of hours ago when Loic Rabier disconnected on pit entry and forced Lassie to get back in the car in the first place. And they're not having fun when it rains, it pours, although not literally here today on iRacing. Wondering if anyone's going to be relatively close to incident limits. Uh, we're probably getting to that point where those violations would start to rack up. Uh, 50 incident points will give you a drive-through penalty, and then every 20 incident points after that is another drive-through. Now, you get four incident points for every big bit of contact. Uh, smaller bits of contact could be two incident points, but every time you run off the track, and we are seeing lots of gravel and stuff being kicked up on occasion, you get a single incident point. You're not necessarily going to be the driver that gets 50. It's uh, the team as a whole that gets penalized for that. You might be the one that has to serve the penalty, though. And in being that driver in that situation, at least in my personal experience, boy, it's frustrating. Yeah, and just for the record, I would be the driver who got the 50 incident points, which is precisely why I don't compete in these events as a driver anymore. So, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't want to be the driver who disappoints the rest of your team which uh, I, could, I could tell you from personal experience, it's not fun because they got to they gotta bear the brunt of it and come back from what you've done. Yeah, and I've been on both sides, the crashy and the teammate that's watching the crash happening. Not great on either side, to be fair. It's just about having a good team environment that lets uh, people not feel too bad about it and uh, pressure to be relieved. We ride on board with Vlad Kimichev in the 696, sailing off down into Sunset Bend. And w the one thing that I really caught piqued my attention in the transition from wet to dry didn't really get the same sense from dry to wet was how much teams were struggling when they got slightly off what seemed to be the optimal line sunset bend was one place they had issues the other one was down at cunningham corner where we had a carousel of entertainment i know joey you love that uh, dane baird was the one that got to cue that up here today i do i absolutely love a carousel of entertainment and everybody was seemingly running into the same puddle through there and not quite realizing that it was there. It's an awkward corner, both through Cunningham and through Tower at turn 13. They're 90 degree corners, but you're kind of moving diagonally in the braking zone over to the left side of the track. Unfortunately for all those drivers who had issues through those corners, there were puddles. There were big bunches of water over on the left side of the track. So they may have been on the optimal racing line in the dry. They were not on the optimal racing line in the wet. Again, it's a whole nother dynamic, a dynamic track. You need to adjust your lines with every single lap, knowing where the water is and knowing where you can actually get the car slowed down because it's a different track than it was before. Yeah, here's a look from a tower cam that basically can see most of, if not all, of the racing around the facility. This is that dart down in towards the Lamar section, penultimate couple of corners. 
still at this point now with Virtual Coach dropping off the back of Williams Esports BenQ in the GTD class. Gap starting to build through the field. Let's focus on where potentially there might be some intrigue for a podium spot as Gustavo Ariel on the hunt and now and three seconds off the back of the Mahler Racing Team Lamborghini in Reina Talvar's hands, at least for the time being. You can see visually gaps getting closer as sun continuing to set. GTD is going to be the most exciting one, I think. LMP2 is basically solved. GTP is going to be a strategy battle, but GTD could very well be a battle on track for position at the end of the day in three and a half hours' time. Because... Manuel Troncoso in the lead. Very strong driver, very fast. He's absolutely in control right now. But Rainer Talvar and Ryan Barneveld, so fast as well in a GD3 car. And Gustavo Ariel in third place in that Audi has been making up time every single lap, except for the most recent one where he had a little bit of trouble, but he's coming. All of these signs, all of these numbers suggest that those top three merging together in a battle for the lead. I don't think it's gonna be that soon, but in about two and a half hours time maybe would i be surprised to see that 12 and a half second gap come down to maybe three or four i would not it is still weird to see es competition because the mala racing team i, I heard lewis mention earlier that he said that uh, mala has sometimes been in the confusing triangle of is it is it powered by BS Competition? Is it powered by Williams? Uh, for 2024, seemingly going to be only powered by the BS Competition crew. Uh, but th therefore, you traditionally kind of expect them to be in a, in a BMW as they are, of course, in the GTP class where they are running under the label of the BMW M Team BS Plus Competition. Uh, so we, we saw them in the Digital Nürburgring Endurance Series in a Mercedes trying to... Uh, fight for the championship and boy what a fight that was and uh, interesting end saw them win the championship not just in the GT3 class but GT4 class as well uh, haven't seen them really I think in a Ferrari and I'm honestly trying to think of outside of that times that we haven't seen them in the BMW M4 and I can't think of very many it's quite funny actually do you know what Phil Dinez was racing last year in the Italian GT championship Joey presumably a Lamborghini yeah you know what he's racing this year not a Lamborghini. Not a Lamborghini. He's finally in a BMW. Let's go! Look at that. I got I got a hundred percent record on that. I'm I'm almost as right as Lewis was in the last stint. No, don't worry. Lewis is never actually right about anything. He just tells himself he is. He was at he was on a hot streak. There were two hours where he was actually getting some some linguistic facts right, and uh, and he left as soon as he could flip that around. I was gonna say like you know. It's, uh, it was... While you have a hot streak, you've got to make sure you, you step away from the plate before exactly. things start to go wrong. That was a baseball reference from someone that's never actually watched baseball properly, but uh, such is the power of the commentator. Konstantin Stoltzenberg has apparently been scared by the power of some GTPs and his WSI Esports butt kicker car, still in ninth position, although now a little bit closer to his sister car that's down in 10th. After going from winning the Daytona 24 in uh, what was a strategy game all the way to the very end, WSI Esports butt kicker uh, sh struggling a little bit more here today. Whenever we load up that replay, I'm going to, oh, here we go. I'm going to try and do a cricket reference here. No, I don't know cricket enough. It wasn't there was a there sticky was, wicket. There was a sticky wicket. He ended up in the That's not in actually left, a cricket le reference, left field. But we tried. Left field, he knocked, the, uh, he knocked the thingy off the thingy, and it didn't go well for him. I should know cricket better. The I should start learning. Stumps. I mean, here's the, here's the thing, Joey. World Cup of Cricket's coming to the U.S. Eh, I know it's burgeoning. You American people seem to like cricket more, but I I don't understand it. The games are like so. The, there's there's cricket games that are like a week long. There are there are games, cricket games that are like six hours long. There are games that are as long as a baseball game. There are games that are a full day, and then yes, you have games that legitimately take you five days, and you might not actually have a winner at the end of the five days, which I can imagine for the American sports audience and the way they consume sports, that's gonna be very, very confusing as what's happened to Reina Talbar. I mean, I swear, this race, as soon as you look away from someone, something happens to them. Gustavo Ariel through to second, and now the Mahler Racing Lamborghini trying to recover after whatever has happened. This was, this is just the Arjuna effect. We had two hours with me and Lewis where basically nothing happened in the last hour. And now suddenly you come into the booth and things have decided to go a little bit crazy and have decided to get exciting again. 
Rainer Talvar through turn one. Everything looks okay. The Coanda Porsche coming through, or the Coanda LMP2 rather, coming through. And I think it might be GT3 on GT3 violence. Yes, it is. Now that, I think, is one of the Drago racing cars. So that is a car that's a couple of laps down. And I don't think Marla is going to be very thrilled with how that's ended up getting played out. They will close back up to Gustavo Ariel, and they, they both pitted on the same lap. Uh, most recently, so expect them to uh, do the same. Let's see, by the way, we saw strategy uh, in your GTP. If I can reset the graphic and click all the fancy buttons to try and do the same here in the GTD class. Let's see if we can pull up the front three as they run right now. Bam, look at that. That's a lot more you, uh, synchronized, although you can see uh, Drago Racing cutting out that one pit stop compared to the rest. Yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, yes, you're exactly right. I had to look very closely, but that lap 168, that was when the uh, the wet to dry transition happened and uh, Redline and Mala initially, initially came in for dry, or for wet tires rather. And they very quickly realized that was the wrong decision. Track was drying out, came in immediately after to put on the dry tires. Drago Racing didn't have to do the same thing and that's why they're in the lead. So that's why I was talking about the blend looking towards uh, Drago getting caught in the lead. They're not, they're legitimately in the lead, but they're not in the lead because they've been the fastest over the first nine and a half hours, eight and a half hours rather. They're in the lead because they were able to cut out that pit stop. They're gonna be caught though, and it's gonna be a race of defense for the final three and a half hours now. Oh, look at that. I can slide it out and make it nice. all sorts of fancy. We're gonna play with that graphic over the course of the rest of the year. And uh, I, I hope make it even more intriguing because the one thing that I don't think right now it does show you is which tires they switched onto at one at what time. Now uh, we can't, we don't have 100% reliability on that data just yet. But once we do, it would be great to then be able to actually see at what stop people made the decision to be able to switch on over. And I would highly recommend if you're watching on and you're trying to follow along, Timing.RaceBotTV will give you a sort of basic view of the race. You head on to Timing71.org, you can use their analysis tools that uh, many a commentator in the real world will use to, 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 to follow races. You can use their uh, same tools here in the sim racing world as well to try and follow along with what is happening. And what is happening right now is pit stops for Jaden Muniz from second. It'll be interesting to see if he gets out of the car. He's been in for basically one stint, so I don't really see him getting out of the car. I see him staying in and continuing on for a little while longer. He had Alexander Spetz in the car for quite a while. He did a good job, and now it's Jade's machine. Yeah, still behind the wheel. Usual pit stop, getting back out there. This is one of those three-car teams as well. It's Matt Farrow, Jaden Munoz, and uh, Alexander Spetz. Meanwhile, the... Uh, their, their teammate at Chill Blast. I think that's just a two driver entry with uh, Optikalpin and Josh Latt. So even in the same team, they can't agree on that. I, I think, again, it's much down to personal preference. There isn't a right or wrong answer. Pit stops booming, by the way, because Josh Ladd has just come in. We're on board with Dennis Wolf, who's just dropped and waiting to roll. It's great to see, by the way, how many of the teams have actually made sure that their paint schemes also include pit boards. And as often away they go, on Williams Esports car in, on Williams Esports car out, fiercely forward about to rev off the engine and far off as well. There's Josh Rogers then, who's been on track for 12 laps since he went back out on track. So big delta, of course, here in the strategy as it's played out here in the GTP class. I kind of just want to fast forward. I want to get two and a half hours out of this race, get us to the final 50 minutes, because I think that's going to be very, very exciting. It's going to be exciting to watch it develop, but the, uh, the storylines are there. The ingredients are there for a fantastic run to the finish here. Just a little bit separated right now. But that would actually be quite a that would be quite a comeback. I think a lot of people would be excited if Coanda can pull that out. Not necessarily because they're underdogs by any means, but they made a bad strategy call. They had to fight back. They had some uh, some extra trouble as well with their 18 car being eliminated, or at least becoming an experimental car five laps down. So they would they would be the comeback kids today at least. And. We did hear at the start that the Porsche was a car that expected to struggle in the rain, but be a little bit more competitive potentially in the dry. Although we had a swarm of Acuras, one BMW M hybrid in the form of the BMW M team BS Plus competition who have uh, been a bit of a, a cannonball today, unfortunately, and find themselves 109 laps down. 
Uh, but still being in and out of the race, just circulating here and there. Um, and then, of course, the two Porsches for VRS Kawanda. No Cadillacs in the mix. And then that free revving Acura, which... Uh, I always wondered why I enjoyed the engine so much, Joey, uh, and the way that it kind of s just sings. And then I, f I heard the story about how that engine was actually meant to be an IndyCar engine, but somehow ended up in a sports car racing prototype. There you go. They sound very similar, which I'm sure people who are more in tune with uh, engine noise and actual race car specifications will get mad at me for saying, but GTP engines and IndyCar engines sound pretty similar, and they're a similar level of volume as well, which is good. They're not as nuclearly loud as some of these prototypes used to be. Let's get the IndyCar engine formula just matching what uh, IMSA does. Lots of people have been asking for that. Focus on second, though. Gridandgo.com have been caught, and here comes Jesse Jones on Rico Wendell. The chase is on, and it's going to be a battle for second in LMP2. You're not going to be thinking about the lead, as I mentioned before, unless there's a meteor strike or a nuclear attack or something, and uh, and things change for Williams Esports Chill Blast, because they've just been totally dominant. You can fight for second, though. You can fight for a little bit of extra glory. It's not going to it's not going to get you much, but it always feels better to finish second than it does to finish third. And Door Esports have had some bad luck so far today. Their GTD car has been a bowling ball or a bowling pin, depending on which way you look at it. Getting a podium in LMP2 would be at least a little bit of solace for them. As it sits right now, they have 80 seconds back to fourth place Simify, uh, because of course we mentioned Team PGZ has had a couple of different disconnections. Uh, that's really dropped them out of contention for this podium uh, fight of their own as well. So two cars, the rain lights are still going off because seemingly from, from what we can tell, that the number of puddles that we still have around the circuit uh, means that iRacing still technically considers the track as being wet, even though uh, you can definitely tell at this point the drivers are very much on the preferred compound of dry tires. Now, no intermediates have been really coming into play so that's just something to factor in the crossover isn't really that much more complicated and a couple of the teams had actually sent Lewis messages about what they thought the crossover time was going to be I believe and he was quite interested Joey to see if different teams thought the crossover point on tires was slightly different well we got that with Coanda and literally the entire rest of the field basically and also in GTD with uh, Drago versus Redline and Mala so when we get to a potential crossover in the other direction at the end of the race, if it does actually switch from dry to wet, if we do get that beautiful finale that we all want, there's been some learning already, and, uh, and there may have to be some extra risks. If you're on the back foot, if you don't have the, uh, the race-winning pace necessarily, you might see a team who's out of contention, maybe one of the teams in fourth in GTD, come down early, put on the wet tires and hope that everybody else either has to stay out in the wet on dries or come in for an extra pit stop to uh, try and flip that strategy around. But those are all conversations the strategists are having right now as they anxiously watch that weather forecast and hope that a little bit of green and a little bit of red don't magically pop up. And when the teams had to make the call to start on the wet compound of tire, instantly that slightly adjusts how high your car is sitting because the wet tires have a little bit more uh, height to them to accommodate the groove to let you actually you know move some of the water out of the way uh, and and so you know instantly your ride height slightly changed and so uh, the balance in the dry has probably changed as well really attacking the curves much like we saw them doing the wet to be fair uh, in these lmp2 machines that's where kenneth Branson and carl jansen seem to just have a lot of confidence in their car to grip underneath them, to stick and to, to, to find them uh, with aerodynamic performance fighting through the corner. So one and a half seconds between Wenzel and Jesse Jones, but uh, Jesse Jones 20 laps into the run, which really means he'll be back down to pit lane soon. It'll be very soon, and I think we might actually see him get out of the car as well. He's been in this for a fairly titanic stint, Mr. JJ. And uh, Jonas Vanner is waiting on pit lane as well. He had his own titanic stint at the start of the race. They've been giving both of these guys a lot of uh, a lot of racing time. They both had huge chunks of being out on track. I don't 
don't know. They, I don't think they get exhausted. They've done so much practice around Sebring that they're, they're probably used to it. But once the wet weather comes around, it's, it's probably slightly more physically taxing. But when you're in the dry, I think these guys are locked in. They're okay for some fairly long stints. It looks scary at times in the rain when we jumped on board with some of the drivers to take a look at their uh, faces. I mean, Josh Ladd. Josh, Josh Ladd's asleep. Josh Ladd doesn't look very different, though, much of the day. I mean, he doesn't seem to talk very much on the radio. Gives his ears a bit of a quick breather there as he fires it off towards the hairpin. But, yeah, I mean, you say he looks like he could be asleep. I'm going to send you a picture of the Porsche Esports Super Cup, Joey, where Jordan Caruso, I made a joke in the last round that we had, legitimately looked like he was sleeping and having a nice little nap. I think even, even the eyes. I don't know if he's tired or what, or if that's just what he normally looks like. But yeah, he's just totally chilled <laughs> out, totally in the zone. Did you hey, see that? Barely alive. Where? He had this little bit of like a flick, like he was trying to keep himself awake there for a second. Maybe. I hope he doesn't fall asleep at the wheel. It is possible. No. Uh, okay, I, I say no, but I've, I've definitely never done that in Le Mans. If it can happen at the, if it can happen on the road in real life, it can happen in the virtual world. Yeah, but there's something about race cars where it, it's very difficult to actually fall asleep in a real race car, at least I would assume. Yeah, but when you don't have the, the sensation of being thrown around, especially over the bumps, he does look very calm right now. Jesse Jones, by the way, is into pit lane, so right around on cue, we stopped focusing on that little fight. Maybe a bit of an indication about the uh, fuel situation as well. Stretching his neck. Nice. He's, he's getting comfortable. He might be digging in for the long haul here. Stretch the neck, stretch the hands a little bit, and the wrists on the straights. I don't know. We need we need an extra challenge for him. Sean Campbell has his uh, YouTube chatting challenge. Usually, when he's in the car, somebody needs to be like, I don't know, throw throw some cherries at Josh Ladd or something. Clap your hands in his face. Do something. Get yes. him uh, get him extra distracted. You'd be happy, by the way, Joey. I managed to make a Mambo number five. Uh, we managed to sing Mambo Number no. Five on the broadcast earlier today. About Josh Ladd? No, uh, but there was a there was a moment where Cam, Sir Cam Roger, made the, a little bit of a one two three four five reference, and, and so I took us down the rabbit hole because it did. I will. I, I, I'm not ashamed to, to say this. It took me a while to remember where that came from. There you go. I'm proud of you. I'm not proud of the YouTube chat though, because I put out a request for the people of Twitch and YouTube to hack into the Coanda LED computer, and they failed to do so. That's still Coanda pink and purple. That's not uh, internationally recognized biohazard green or something, so do better. And you can see that Josh right now had a quick comment over the radio, maybe just commenting on the traffic in front of him. Is he going to lunge up the inside? Oof. Oh, that was a bit naughty, if I'm honest. Josh forces the issue, and now I'm just waiting. Lights not flashing from the door, Audi. To be fair to Jonas Rutten, he is what? Uh, 28 laps down from his class leader? Something yeah, if you're, like that. If you're that far back, you're kind of at the whims of the traffic. If you're the Door Esports Audi or the Falcon Audi or any of those cars, yeah, you're, you're, a, you're a bowling pin at this point. Just, just try and stay out of the way because those GTPs are not going to value your life whatsoever. Yeah, GTP going to pass, LMP2 let me pass, GTD going to die. That's uh, how we kind of phrase it out. Now, I cannot quite believe what I'm saying here. But I think we've just had another disconnection for Lucas Perez, and who's trying to now jump back into the Simufi LMP2 car. There are some teams that are just having some rotten luck right now with technical issues. It's just not their day, it would seem. Yeah, I'm looking at that right now. It looks like Lucas was able to get it back to pit lane, and then uh, Mark Perez got behind the wheel, and suddenly it was uh, it was a very different story, and they still haven't left pit lane yet. So I wonder if it was actually Mark that had some trouble. Yes. And yeah, Mark couldn't get into the car, or he got into the car and couldn't get out, and now so, more trouble. Yeah, it's not it's not a good day to be named Perez, and it's not good when both of your drivers are named Perez because both of them have run into a little bit of trouble. I I think what happened is we can take a quick look here at the replay. They actually left pit lane initially, so you're right in that Mark Perez got into the car. But then just watch here. It's basically going to happen as soon as they come out on pit exit. Yeah, instant. Yeah. Can you crazy. imagine Lucas is probably away from his computer right now? He got out of the car after a, a, a Titanic stint. He went to go and have a break, and now 
suddenly he might be needed to uh, to take the, the car over again. But also yeah. Marcus is reconnected to the session, so he might get back in overall. But yeah. either way, they're losing tons of time. Uh, it, yeah, it was, it, regardless, Lucas might also just be in a position right where he's not ready to get back into the car. Maybe he needs to go and grab something to eat before you go and do another stint at this point of the race. And uh, Simi Fire not had a great run. I mean, Tristan Iglesias in the Audi GTD entry qualified second. I mean, I've got to just say, Tristan Iglesias is up there in terms of the best qualifiers on iRacing when the pressure is on right now. And keep an eye on him moving forward for the rest of the year. Not just in special events, but some of the big sort of races that we have where qualifying is going to be important. I think he is going to be a contender. That's a car that won't be a contender for very much longer. It's Daniel Lafuente's Williams Esports Tube Blast car is looking worse for the wear. And I think, I think that's... I was going to say turn one, and I was right. And that's a very awkward place to crash, which makes me think there was some interaction with the prototype that got him over there. That's a shame for this car. Very fast. Sota Muto was driving that car forward. Daniel was doing the same, but into turn one. No prototype interaction, but technical interaction without a doubt. Just not even close to making the corner. Straight on, trying to get it turned. And I imagine his wheel said, absolutely not, Daniel. You're going straight into the wall. Yeah, look at that. That's not that's not what it normally looks like. Uh, I'm just, you know, there's, there's there's times when you just you're speechless because there's there's so much craziness going out on track. Sometimes you're speechless because you can't just you can't believe the bad luck that's being thrown the way of some of these very very capable drivers because Lafuente qualified up in P4 was pretty happy with his qualifying performance as well. Has already had a PC crash earlier today. That took them out of really contention for, the, for a good result. And so, you know, that new livery for, for Williams Esports not going to get its chance to, to finish off, I think, in, in GTD. Although credit where credit's due, Williams are still leading two of our three classes. And it's the silver ones that are still running. Those are the ones that are still alive. So maybe the more beautiful livery gets to continue running. Carl Janssen said it added a couple of extra tenths. This so is not, did Carl Janssen really say this is the more beautiful livery? Not specifically, but he did say a new livery adds a couple extra tents. New livery, yes. Uh, but I, I, I think unequivocally, uh, I'm sorry, Javi, if you are listening or anyone else behind the scenes at Williams Esports, the purple is just so much more beautiful. I just miss the creamy white one. Uh, that, that's what Lewis and I have said, Joey. We, we have made the plea that they return the chill blast colors, or as John Heindorf would affectionately sometimes refer to it, the chili blast, blast colors to, to the white. Because, yes, you're right. It was beautiful, it was creamy, it was delicious, and uh, now it's either silver or gray, and we couldn't decide which one it was. It's gray. Uh, gray. Because I didn't know if it was just gray because of the sky being gray. gray and reflecting off of it, but... No, gray. Gray. It's about as gray as gray gets. Uh, that is... Look at this. This is creamy and white. And then you've got the, the green and stuff as well, right? You get all sorts of... Delicious. ...fun little uh, elements going on. Do enjoy a, a, a Mahler Racing livery. Uh, and Marl has been a big supporter of sim racing now for going on four years or so, not just, of course, in their collaborations in the virtual world, but you, you know about regularity rallies and stuff like that, right, Joey? I don't know what a regularity rally is, no. So basically it's when uh, you, rallying is when you try and go as fast as possible. Oh, it's when you try and reach a time when, specifically? Exactly, there you go. I, was, I, I didn't know quite how to describe it, but you get a time and you try and hit it. And so Marla Racing Team have not just been competing in uh, one of those uh, eco rallies where I believe they even use like uh, electric cars and stuff, where Bikes Visser has been joined by oh, one of the BS competition drivers. I feel very silly for forgetting it right now. Uh, but they've actually become the title sponsor of the Eco Rally as well. So it's great to see, you know, uh, everything that Marla does, not just in the sim world, but outside with the BS competition guys as well. There you go. I was thinking Regularity Rally was some kind of, some kind of, some kind of engineering thing. Or is like the Mala the Mala Parts sponsoring some nerd stuff there? I don't know. But also Josh Chin says in the chat, stop saying creamy, and I refuse. I'm going to say that a couple more times now just because he said that. Yeah, Josh Chin on Photo Man duties as part of the VCO content team. So shout out to him. Shout out to, to Ruben Luque. And as uh, Josh Chin actually messaged me during the, the, the first couple of hours, let me go back and, and read 
the message. There's been a couple of messages that I've been tagged in. Uh, I don't know how you guys are doing this. I can barely keep track of everything going on. It was one of the wildest starts that we've ever seen. And boy, was it great. We're still watching, of course, Reina Talvo hunting down Gustavo Ariel as we see the con uh, sun rather, just continuing to set. And you take a look at where we are, 7.21 p.m. We're probably only around 30 or so, 40 minutes away from getting into those nighttime hours. And boy, there's going to be a lot of that dark running. How did Rainer, Ta Rainer Talvar do in the rain earlier? It's a good question. Was he successful? Was, did he live up to his name? I don't know. So there's... Because I... His Optikalpanen was very fast, and I, I, I gave him his new name of Wattikalpanen. Okay. But Rainer Talvar's already built in. If he's, if he's a good, wet boy, he's already built in. Rainer Talvar, I don't actually remember, if I'm being completely honest, how he, how he performed when the rain was at its peak. I don't even know if he was in the car, to be completely honest. That's one of the things that we got to remember. This is a, a two-driver lineup in the, in the Mahler Racing Team at number 10. So, close back up to the Brazilian Gustavo Ariel in the sole surviving red line car. We have seen three red line cars bite the dust. Two in GTP, one in GTD, and both of the GTPs as well, Joey, went out in basically identical fashion at Sunset Bend. Yes, they did. And also, I think you're exactly right. The Rainer Talvar hasn't actually driven a lap in the rain yet. It was Kornbach and Barneville that drove all of the laps in that car in the rain so far. So Rainer, maybe you'll get to live up to his name at the end of the race, but uh, we'll see if that actually happens. Rico Wenzel just finally made his pit stop. He's rejoined in uh, in second. And uh, Jonas Wanner not even in the same shot. The second place battle that was close for a little bit. It, it looked like it was going to develop rather excitingly. It's still only three seconds, but it's uh, it's not quite as exciting as it once was. door has got some work to do. I think technically that's actually a net win for door because I think when we last saw the Grid and Go car out of pit lane, it was closer to six seconds. And uh, Grid and Go, you know, they spend a bit more time with less fuel at the end of their run after door have come down to pit lane. So hypothetically, you do expect them to go potentially a bit quicker. So to have closed that gap down slightly, I think they will actually in some ways be quite happy, but long way still to go left in this race that is for sure and oh there's a smile on the face of young Jonas I mean look how happy he looks for a moment or looks for a moment I should say it's the first time I've ever seen a sim racer smile does he know he's on candid cam right now as well oh that that's the type of environment I love about endurance racing when you're just enjoying it not not even if you're in a fight for p3 which to be fair always makes it a bit fun as well I wonder what they're talking about. I wish we had team radio. They're probably telling some very funny German jokes right now. Uh, I think as we have learned in the IMSA Esports Global Championship, radio from the teams is not a great idea. What and is it's in German. It's in German. We won't know what they mean. What is a great idea, though, is having pit reporters in every single one of their radios. So when something's happening, we can steal information from them and go and figure it out. That was one of the great yeah. things that we did in the initial season back in 2022, uh, to which at some point we had teams going when they realized that we had joined just as something critical was said over the radio, they'd sometimes send us a message and go, uh, can you not be specific about what lap we're coming down to pit lane on? I'm just thinking about German jokes now. Because they have, they, they've got, they've got some of them. People think Germans are not full of humor. They think they're a humorless people, but that's not true. There's very funny Germans out there. There's very funny German jokes. Maybe when Jonas gets out of the car, he can come in here and tell us some of his favorite, uh, his favorite German humor. <laughs> yes, uh, that might. We've got about an hour left or so, I guess, for him before he's out of the car. Because traditionally, you leave your drivers in for about two hours at a time, so. Uh, we might get that chance to, to speak to him. He's been out on track for six laps or so. These are shorter stints in the P2 as well, going on 40 or so minutes. Bit of fog. Is that fog or what is that? Because it's a rather hazy sort of a sunset that we're seeing right now. Not quite sure how I describe it. In the you could just see in the in the in the horizon. There's something in the air. Arjuna, I haven't the foggiest. Oh, wow. Clear skies, by the way, so I'm amazed. It's not even that hot, so it's not heat That's a haze. lie. Clear skies is a lie. That's not true. What are these weather people doing? They're not looking at the sky. I mean, that... It, it, it could be clear skies and then just a lot of fog. It could be a forest fire, too. 
Is that is that seasonal for Florida? Actually, I don't even. Know. I don't know. I don't think so. I think it just there was just a torrential downpour about five hours ago. So if there's a forest fire, that means that a, a volcano erupted or something. That would, yes. be, that would be bad. Well, no, we would have to be very concerned. Been keeping an eye on the weather conditions, by the way. Uh, see if we can get you uh, an update on on that graphic in a few moments' time. But what I have sort of been noting is that. That rain isn't getting any sooner. It is becoming more likely. And we're getting closer as well to potential fog conditions. Don't know what that's going to mean. If it's if it's foggy and hazy now, in my opinion, just watching these shots, it's going to get more. Yeah, visibility is decreased enough in the nighttime, but nighttime and fog and potentially the spray of the rain at the end, it's going to be blind racing, basically. I've always had a dream of, of hosting a race where all the drivers are blindfolded and we just see how much they remember the track. That's going to be the closest we've ever gotten to that, I think, with those conditions. Yeah. Well, I think we're in for a bit of a roller coaster to the end, I think, in terms of seeing how many cars will survive. I don't know if we're necessarily expecting there to be too many chances for fights up towards the front. High humidity will make it look a little bit foggy is what uh, a comment in the race spot chat was. I did see 88% humidity, so that could have been it as well. And maybe that's where the fog's going to be building from. So, uh, you know, you need a bit of a basis to, to start to see the springboard. So, curious what's going to happen. So, as mentioned, get the graphic up on your screen in a, a few moments time that shows the, the weather patterns as they play right now as we head into the final three hours of this race get you an update a rundown on where each class sits how the storylines have been shaking out uh, as we get onto the either, uh, other side of pit stop cycles both lmp2 and gtd currently making their way through their uh, pit stop routines we're currently around 27 laps into this run there is the weather forecast you can see we've got three hours left to go the rain only coming after it yeah, I don't know. I'd be interested to see like two hours 45, if that's even possible, if there's a chance of rain then, because if it comes in the last like 15 minutes, the track can be fully wet in like a lap's time, depending on how, how, how hard the rain is. So even if it comes with only like six or seven laps to go, it could be a, it could be interesting. But that is not a, a glitch there. That's not a stationary image. That is the live radar and it's all gray and it's all unchanged. Yeah, I wish I could go there and draw some rain on for you and suddenly magically do a, a rain dance and it would appear. But iRacing's weather system allows you to play a god initially in terms of setting up the weather to progress however you'd like. But once that timeline has been created, you don't have the ability to go back in mid-race and, and change it to your will if the race isn't necessarily going to plan. Although that sounds like something that I would love to have in an AI race. You, you turned it up a bit too strong. They're too quick for you in the dry, but you're better than them in the rain. Well, those are just the, the Bernie Eccleston sprinklers. Exactly. There you go. You read my mind. It's Bernie Eccleston's plan come to life. The dream. And also the, uh, the representatives of Grid and Go have come into the chat to defend the German sense of humor. They say they're hilarious. And I, I believe you. I just want to hear some of the jokes. Well, th that was the joke. We're hilarious. Ah, Cody Deeth. very meta. Cody Deeth is out. Nico Rubelar going to jump into the 001 car. Uh, that did actually, as far as I can see, do one of its fastest lap times uh, in the closing stages of the stint. So we are seeing the conditions just get that little bit faster as well. And so while the virtual coach by Grid and Go entry is now down on pit lane, the Grid and Go.com LMP2 car has got Jonas Wanner within one second and now within touching distance. There we go. That is touching distance indeed. I mentioned that they weren't in the same camera shot a couple of uh, moments ago, but that's changed very, very quickly because Jonas has been has been destructive. He's been very, very fast, and uh, he's about a corner away from potentially being in draft range. He's still smiling, but I don't think his teammates are telling him German jokes anymore. He does have to get in the zone a little bit. Because, yeah, when you, when you can see the car that closely in front of you, when you're only a couple of tenths away from draft range, all you have to do is push a little bit, get in that range, get closer, try and make the overtake. And then, I don't know, they might be able to run away with how fast Jonas has been going. Uh, I've got a joke for you about Germans. How many Germans does it take to change a light bulb? 
I'm just gonna stay silent and let you say it. No, come on, come on, guess. Give me an answer. Nine. That's actually not a bad one. Uh, no, one. They are efficient and have, have no humor. There you go. Uh, that was what Reddit, by the way, uh, gave me as, as a joke. Well, they say, Gringo says in the chat, you want it raw, German, or translate? And I'm going to say both. Kala, drop me a DM. Let's, let's get some of those uh, jokes on air. What I will also do is, you know, that uh, it's that time uh, when we go into podcast mode that I also go and dial up ChatGPT. Let's go and get some suggestions. Oh, German no. jokes about motorsport from ChatGPT. Yes, that sounds like a great idea, Joey. Come on. Sounds like I want to go outside in the rain and drown myself, potentially. <laughs> uh, that was Team PGZ that left pit lane. They are one lap now down, though, from this fight. So you'll see them on track. You won't see them in the fight. It's the margin, which across the LMP2 classes, are quite considerable uh, in its nature. Now, we did mention that pit stops were going to be imminent for GTD. There's Felix Quirm back into the uh, Mahler Racing Team car, taking over for Rainer Talvar. Johnny Vecchio taking over from Gustavo Ariel. Two new drivers in this fight for second. Two new drivers in the same situation, though, trying to chase down Manuel Troncoso. And they've gotten a little bit closer. That gap was 16, 17 seconds a little bit earlier, especially after uh, especially after the Mala car fell behind the red line car. But it's now down to 14 seconds. Still three hours to go. Do the math. Three hours divided by 14. I think that's about one second every uh, 15 minutes or so. I think they'll have to bring down if they want to catch Drago. I think that's possible. If they stay in line, if they don't focus on battling too hard for second and lose even more time, I think we could still absolutely have a battle for the lead in GTD. It's just going to be a chase for basically the entirety of the rest of the race. And hope you stay out of trouble as well. The second red line car that is a DNF on the day. Got a bit of contact out through Sunset Bend that was, let's be honest, a healthy dose of a net code between them and a passing prototype machine that took them out of contention and you know, really not much they can do. You just got to give that margin at this point. You don't want to leave yourself with uh, no room to, to, to make a mistake. Uh, Chat GPT, by the way, I've asked it for a joke, a German joke about motorsport. Why did the German race car driver bring a ladder to the track? Because he heard the competition was taking things to a whole new level. Da -da -da. Chat GPT, ladies and gentlemen. Nope. I'm, sh I'm shaking my head in silence. I Humans still have the power of humor, everybody. If it's any solace, Yes. There's new, there's new AI things that can like generate whole new songs. I just generate, I just uh, learned about that the other day. You put in a prompt and you say like country song about the 12 hours of Sebring, and it just generates a full song with vocals and instrumentals. I don't like that. I don't like that that's happening. I like, I like human works. I don't like it. Uh, I did I'm ask. Scared. I did ask ChatGPT, would a German actually say that joke? And they then wrote a paragraph, basically a college essay, where you you know you're not actually saying very much. But anyway, um, I don't like the future, Arjuna. Yeah, I don't know if that was a very funny joke. It, it never. There have been some decent jokes on occasion, but we've never. It, it's never really lived up to, to all the hype that you would expect from uh, from what people say. Now, as, as these two get closer and closer. We are at that point where Sun is just continuing to set. I wonder how the balance of the car has played out. They forced the Falcon Sim Racing Audi just that little bit wide on the run out of Le Mans Corner onto the Ullman Straight. Now, PGZ weaving back and forth. Like I mentioned, one lap down. Jonas Wanner to the inside. I'm going to force Rico Wenzel off the optimal racing line. Lots of bumps and one contact between the two of them. But a change for second and Door Esports make their way through. That was aggressive and that was necessary and now Jonas can start to look forward if you can't even look forward at this point. Williams Esports Chill Blast, a full lap ahead. If you look at where they are on track actually, uh, they're, Williams Esports are coming through the hairpin right now, so they're about three or four corners ahead of, uh, of door, a lap ahead at that, so if you want to catch them. You might be able to get your lap back if you're fast enough, but going to be a whole nother game once you do that actually catching them again in these next three hours but second place will uh will at least be somewhat better than third place for Jonas Vanner at least right now now I did hear you and Lewis talking about um 
a lot of things along the way. Swindon, yeah. waffles, it, it was Dr. A, Pepper. There's a lot of waffling as well. Uh, I mean, that's Lewis McLeod's specialty. And 50 minutes away from having to suffer through more of the waffling, although it's going to be even worse because he'll be waffling with me once again. Uh, but, but Joey, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, first time you've had the chance to work with Lewis. Nah, sec second time, second I think. Second time. Uh, I apologize that you've had to work with him that many times. I know it's hard work. But uh, <laughs> the thing that I was really keeping an eye on, outside of the fact that he claimed to be correct so much, was he didn't talk go much about golf with you, did he? No, I suck at golf. Yeah, but he, did he bring it up once? Um, yes, actually, I think. I was going to say, two hours without talking about golf for Lewis. That's, that's he brought up golfing with Peter Berry. Did he? Or he, 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 it was some reference to some driver not being invited on the golf trip with Peter Berryman or something. It'd be performed bad. I don't remember. It was two hours ago. Okay. Now, now I've just learned there are Apex Racing Team golf trips, which are, which I need to get an invite for. Um, I tried Top Golf once and I sucked at it. We need to because I don't even know what you do. Like I don't know how the arm movement works. I don't know how you set it up. I don't know how you follow through. I just thought swinging would be easy, and it's not. We need to get you into VR golf. It's amazing it will change your life uh not as much as vr cricket will change your life um but yes it, it is a whole new world a whole new i experience. think vr cricket might be good to put me to sleep uh, no oh give me that as a sleep aid I, I i may have stayed up a little bit too long last night playing vr cricket um now the clocks have moved in the u.s with that happen in, in, in europe soon uh, these races only start at 5.30 in the morning for me, which means I only have to wake up at 4.30 rather than 3.30. So I thought, you know what, I'll play some cricket. Suddenly, an hour and a bit later, um, I'm 400 runs up. I was playing against Virtual Australia. Australia. I was very proud of myself. And then I look at the clock and I go, wow, I got to be up in just a couple of hours' time. How do you even win? Do you just have to, like, knock the, you knock the things off? Oh, you no. Knock it's, the, the in, pins? In VR cricket, well, so they have a, a, a mode where you could be the pitcher in baseball vernacular, right? The one that's doing the chucking, the throwing. Um, but but, but it's, it's, it's not very fun, in my opinion. It's much more fun to be the, the batsman and, and to, to be smacking, smacking balls all around. Because the great thing about cricket, right, is it is a 360 sport. Baseball is effectively, what, a 90-degree playing area? The right angle something like that yeah so so and trust me i don't mean this in a disrespectful way because i've tried baseball out in, in cages i've been to a couple of games and i'm going to be going actually to a couple more later this year and i'm looking forward to it a lot of respect and quite honestly the speed at which a baseball is is traveling the, the, it just instincts so much and so you've got muscle memory repetition drilling it in there's a lot that goes into it and making those those reads on the fly but i just appreciate in, in baseball, the ball only moves in the air, right? You've got your curved balls, etc., etc. In cricket, not only does the ball move in the air, but the ball actually, when it bounces off the pitch, depending on what the bowler has done, it will bounce in a slightly different way. So you've got that factor. You've got the fact that if you literally wanted to, you could stand square to the ball as it's coming at you and try and scoop it over your head, uh, which is amazing to watch. It's great. You'll love it. you love cricket. Come on. Maybe. Maybe we'll get you to. If they make, if they make it an Olympic sport, I'll watch it. I think there, there's an India-Pakistan uh, game in the U.S., uh, which is going to be a intense because you know rivalry across the two sporting countries, but also b because a lot of fans in the U.S. don't often get to go and uh, you know have migrated over, don't get to go and see these countries play. So I think there's going to be lots of people there that have never get a, really gotten to cheer for for, for their favorites, and so uh, I'm hoping. Where is it? I'll be honest, I don't know, uh, and I'm hoping that I grab a ticket in the... You know they do one of those ballots where you put your name in? Yeah. yeah I'm hoping that my name gets pulled. I would hope it would be in, like, New Jersey or something. Because you want to talk about a state with a big Indian population? You'd pack a New Jersey cricket stadium if you, they if they brought that there. Do you know where the U.S. headquarters for cricket is? Uh, it's not New Jersey, I'll tell you that. I don't know, Wyoming? Texas. Eh, makes sense. Yeah, Texas. Texas is actually a really interesting place for it. Sindre Setsource, by the way, in the iRacing Esports Network chat. You know the broadcast has been going for a while when they talk about cricket. Sindre, we're educating people here. Cricket's great. It's lovely. Uh, and at the same time, there's literally nothing happening on track right now with two hours and 45 yes. minutes to go. Also, India versus Pakistan will be on Long Island. Long? Oh, wow, that's incredible. In oh. Uh, okay, you know what? I don't know, maybe... 
Let's see, where on Long Island is it? Where on Long Island? Where do they have a cricket ground that can oh. hold 80,000 people? Because that's how many would actually want to go and show up there. Like, you need to use a college football stadium to actually pack in enough, you know, Indians. It's not helping me. This news article's not helping me. Al Jazeera is not helping you me. You need chat GPT, you see? 34,000 seat modular stadium in Long Island. So they, are oh. they building a new one? Modular stadium implies that, yeah, they'll probably just have, it, they'll have a cricket surface because you need a special type of surface to actually play uh, at the World Cup level. But then they'll be able to plug in grandstands when, you know, there's big events and they'll be able to remove them when, when there's smaller events and, and whatever the case may be. Drago Nassau Rachel. County International Cricket Stadium. Oh, there you go. Uh, James uh, Ho, I, uh, Ho, however you say it, I apologize for butchering your name, but I butchered plenty of things here today on the broadcast. Uh, Indian Premier League just started as well this week. So um, that I'll be honest, I used to, in college, uh, classes would run, whatever, like 8 o'clock in the morning to, to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I just had the IPL on in class and totally not be paying attention. Um, and, and VR cricket is solo, and so you can set the game length for everybody. So there's a lot of good points there. We are we are educating people on cricket. Let's also talk about IMSA Esports for 2024, because 2023 champions, they get an auto invite for 2024's championship. Uh, winners in the VCO Grand Slams and the GTP and the GTD classes, they also will get an invitation as well. So we'll talk about that in two hours and 40 minutes. Who's heading to the championship later this year? But Joey, it's been two fun years so far, and I'm very excited to say news is coming soon. News is always coming soon. You've always got something cooking, and I'm always excited to hear about it. And also, just to close the door on the cricket conversation, to get a standard ticket for India versus Pakistan, guess how much it is? 500 bucks. 1,248. Honestly? I knew I was underselling that, and... Uh... Actually, actually, that's two tickets, so it's actually 600 each. So but actually, actually, now that I now that I click on it, it's sixteen hundred and five each. So I think it's changing with every click. Ah, oh, okay. It's one of those things where it just keeps adding fees as it tries to figure out who you are and where you're trying to buy the ticket from. Um, I see. But yes, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, end of the day, uh, there are, like I say, a lot of people that will want to go to that game, and it sounds like I'm unfortunately going to be priced out of it. My Indy 500 ticket, in comparison, hundred and thirty something dollars this year. Yeah, easy. Deal. Forget what Daytona 24 tickets are. What, what, what's the price for a regular IMSA race? I don't know. Not much. Price for like IndyCar at Mid Ohio was like somewhere between 50 and 80 usually. So it's pretty good. A uh, good deal. I'm seeing that two day packages for Rolex this year was $75 for adults. So, and, and with that, you get access to the grid walk. And I'm going to make a controversial statement here. You know what that controversial statement is? It is. That the access that IMSA has is great. But it also means that it's very difficult on the grid walk to go and see any cars. Yeah, there's nine, nine billion people there. It, it was quite fun the day before the 24 because you had the IMSA Michelin Pilot Challenge race. And legitimately, I'm not saying there was no one there because it was quite fun. There was a decent number of people, but you could walk up to basically every one of the cars. Most of the drivers were, were around or engineers or stuff on the car for you to grab. And, and I've got a keychain now from random Vandals Racing. And a shout out to, to Kenton Cook. But yeah, no, it was just crazy. IMSA has really exploded, Joey, to the point where I got to the, to the, to the starting grid just as they opened the track, basically. I got... I timed it perfectly. I finished commentating on the DNLS. I got parked, and then I went down to the track. It was great. Except after people love, people love their sports cars. People love their uh, their multi-class racing. They love actual technical development and new cars being introduced. It's very inspiring. Yeah, Fifteen minutes in, I just said no. I'm going to go watch the 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 whatever you call it, the action from one of the grandstands. And to be honest. Uh, was also quite fun just to see all the, the community ex, uh, aspect that's going on. I saw someone asking for commentary about the race. Well, I, re what race? I regret to inform you that we don't have a single car that is within five seconds of one another. Excuse me, I lied, because the gap between second and third in GTD has just come under five seconds. Woo! 
It's come under five seconds for a brief moment, but I think that's because it's been expanding over five seconds over the course of the last couple laps. It's not a battle for, uh, it's not a three-way battle for the win anymore. Right now, it looks like it may be a two-way battle for the win. But it might only be a one-way battle for the win because Johnny Vecchio has just not been able to close that gap to, uh, to Manuel Troncoso. I really thought that Johnny was going to be faster, but Manuel has been very, very fast, very, very consistent. And he's actually extended that gap over Johnny over the last couple of laps. It was as low as 14 seconds, now above 16. Manuel, when he gets on it, he can he can get into a reign of terror, and he is the fastest driver in this field right now, I think. Yeah, I think maybe he was biding his time as well and just waiting for the conditions to maybe suit his car just that little bit more. The front light bar of the Lamborghini, by the way, is confirmed to give you a couple of extra tenths of a second per lap, and so that's why the Mala Racing team has strapped it onto the, to the front end of their car. We have GTP pit stops imminent for the likes of Josh Ladd. 46 seconds clear at the front. And so plenty going on. James also says, by the way, going back to IMSA Rolex 24 stuff, MX5, the amount of intensity and, and people that want to go and see that race now is incredible because those MX5s, they really do put on a show. Maybe the best show of the weekend, if we're being honest. Yeah, every any racetrack in the world you put an mx5 on it it's going to put a good race on because they have no power they have no aerodynamics they can bump each other it's like you're racing beans and that's that's beautiful yeah and you know when it comes to race winners there you talk about progression uh, we've seen sim racers go and succeed there most recently you know you look at people like connor zilich making the step up and he had a good run out on his NASCAR truck debut today at the Circuit of the Americas and someone that's actually helped some sim racers get into real cars. We talked about racing Prodigy and the Prodigy Week adventures slightly earlier in the broadcast, but Connor Zilich was on hand as Gustavo Ariel jumped into a Radical SR1 for the very first time as Sean Campbell into pit lane. And I wonder if he's going to take the 40 or 50 seconds that he has to come and say hello to us in the YouTube chat. I'm looking at the chat right now. He's only got a little bit of time. There's a little bit of internet delay, so we may have to wait a couple of seconds, but if he doesn't say something, if he doesn't give us some kind of some kind of feedback or some kind of comment, I'm going to be disappointed, and I'm going to hope he crashes out. Uh, now, the question is, if I pull this up on screen, does Sean Campbell's there you go. inner instincts, his body, his Sean senses, do they start tingling, and does he... Does he, does, he, does he open the YouTube? I don't think the answer is yes, unfortunately. Go on, Sean. stationary. Anything? You alive? Still got about five seconds before we'd expect him to roll off in the way. I don't think we're going to get an update from his race clutch number nine. He might be talking to other people who are cooler than us. Yeah, maybe more important than us in the grand scheme of things as well. It's off and away. Sharing that car, uh, the number nine entry with Robin Mass. Two car lineups. You can see how much marbles we have, by the way. It's very interesting as he rejoined the racing service, trying to make sure that the new tires don't pick up too much of those accumulated bits and then you try and shed them off as you try and get back up to speed. One thing that we talked about at the start when it was raining a lot was how the LMP2 cars were faster than the GTPs in some cases, and so there was a very real chance that one of them may end up finishing inside of the top five overall. Doesn't seem like it's going to end up finishing like that, although you have to give them some credit. They're only six laps down after going on 10 hours of racing. Yeah, they need more rain. They need to start chucking down again. Who knows, if there's a year where we have like 12 hours of wet racing with no dry running whatsoever, we could have an LMP2 car win overall. So maybe we, maybe we should look forward to that next year. Hopefully. I think we really have to try and wait for the year when it rains so much the GT car ends up winning overall like yes, back please. in 2015 uh, in Petit Le Mans when Porsche came out on top in the GTLM era. Uh, what, a, what an interesting race that ended up being. And, and really, you know, in some ways, uh, let's bring the, the weather radar back up onto, onto screen for, for everyone to take a look. Just look at how the, the, the scale goes, right? Uh, there's a blue on the left side. That's the lightest amount of rain to expect from the, from the uh, cells that start to build. Then all the way on the other side, there's pink. We never really saw more than orangey or even yellow in terms of rain. And even that caused uns a plenty of uncertainty for the drivers. Imagine what could happen, Joey, if we just got more intense amounts of rain. I want to see this track flooded. I want, well, I don't want aquaplaning necessarily because that's just totally out of the driver's control. 
but I've turned the rain up all the way in some test sessions, and it is, it, it's very fun. There's no visibility. You're sliding around. You're, you do have to avoid the giant puddles. I want to see it go all the way in. I want the heaviest rain possible. Yes, so we, we need more opportunities to go and do weather reports at the end of the day, and so the heavier the rain, the more chance we have to, to do something different. That Kimichev in the Drago Racing 696 is also now down on pit lane. And with two hours and 34 minutes left to go, he's not going to get out right now. You might see him in the car in the next pit stop coming out. It means Josh Rogers re-inherits third position in the VRS Kawanda number eight, the purple and orange that heads out of the hairpin. And it's getting dark, getting very dark right now. Virtual standard time, we're going on close to 8 p.m. in sim. Mentioned. We're going to have a long amount of dark running here for the drivers to really make the most of. Blinded by absolute darkness, but this is when it comes down to uh, your knowledge of the track, comes down to your night practice that you've absolutely had to be doing, and this is really where the, uh, the highest level of driver really takes their advantage, because you can see the track. You have headlights. You're not totally blind, but in those braking markers that you can't see, and in those, those orientation points that you really need. These guys have everything memorized, like the back of their hand. There's so much rhythm, there's so much practice that goes into this thing. Even when you shut the lights off, even when you make that visibility very, very low, it's still gonna be a very, very high level performance and you're gonna see the fastest laps of the race set here, I think, in the last couple hours. Looking forward to just keeping an eye on how much drivers are going to push the limits as well because one thing that we often talk about when it comes to track evolution is as the track rubbers in in a lot of ways it gets more understeery and so have we seen resets as the, the rain has sort of you know washed away rubber on the, on the regular racing line I'm entirely sure peter zuber brings the second of the race clutch cars down to the box drops behind mitchell the uh, Mitchell De Jong in the vrs kawanda number 18 that as joey mentioned is playing a bit of a sacrifice play in some ways and they're just out there and trying to feed data or whatever to, to the rest of the team that's still out there and trying to fight the front of the field. Dory Sport Pit in LMP2, followed in by BS Plus Competition. So, two hours and 30 minutes to go. 22 laps into the stint for uh, Dory Sports. Another five laps or so. Then we'll get Rico Wenzel in the grid and go car. Hope to see this battle kind of close up again because once the uh, Dory Sports number 120 got by the grid and go car, it seemed like that battle was going to be over. But I want a little bit of excitement. I want second place to be fought at least, even if the win can't be fought for. We can at least pretend it's the win. We can eliminate Williams Esports Chill Blast. We can block him with our hand, and we can say that uh, the battle for second is going to be the biggest, uh, the biggest battle on track because it'll be it'll be exciting. And second is better than third at the end of the day. Yes. Um, at least that's what I've been told and led to believe. Um, remember as well that not just spots in the IMSA Esports Global Championship on the line for GTD and GTP winners, but every single class winner uh, and each individual driver gets a very, very spiffing trophy courtesy of VCO. It's been one of those things that we've really been enjoying. Uh, it just makes these special events even more special, uh, a recognition of all the hard effort that the drivers put in. We saw Daniel Moraz slightly earlier saying that the, the budget for the trophies means that uh, there's nothing left for the commentators, so we're not going to get one of those. But I'm just saying again, we, we want participation trophies, Joey, just for being here in the commentary booth. Yes, please. Do we have a photo of the trophy? Can we bring it up? Unfortunately, no, we don't. The glass cube or rectangle? Especially not at li uh, the night lights right now, when it'll probably blind us with its uh, dazzling brilliance. Damn. I mean, there's probably there's cheaper options than glass. You could make it out of ice or plastic. I don't know if the ice one would last very long. As li race leader is in, there is Josh Ladd stationary on the jacks. Is he going to stay in that car? I mean, we see we, we were wondering if he was going to fall asleep. Now, he was he's still in the rig, don't worry. But it doesn't look like he's going back out there. Or is he just having a nice little swig of a coffee or something? And is he not race with gloves? He may not actually race with gloves. Hands back on the wheel. No, he's doing a lot of motion that doesn't look like hands are back on the wheel but he also hasn't gotten out of the car so evidence would suggest that josh ladd is going out continuing this stint and all he needed was a little bit of coffee he's still good to go 
when did he get into that car? It's been a monster stint from him, hasn't it? Yeah, he's it's on been years. He's on lap 307, got in on lap 220 or so, so he's been going for almost 100 laps at this point. Having said that, Ante Kalpinen ended up doing around 70, 80 laps before that, so maybe this is just the kind of way that they have built up the schedule, given that Ladd did end up doing a slightly shorter stint, I think, for a sequence of the race. Maybe Kalpin are going to get back in and push towards the very end. So someone mentioned that uh, if we're ever going to get to rain and, and conditions that show purple and pink on that radar, then we're going to need to add hail. Yes, isn't, please. Isn't hail like a red flag condition? Yeah, there's, there's no red flags in sim racing. That's we can do whatever point. we want. I, I don't think that, unfortunately, we're going to get that. But we can, we can do anything we want because there's no risk. There's no risk of drivers being pelted by hail at 200 miles per hour. There's no risk of injury. Not yet. Not until we can they, fight reality, Arjuna. Not until they buy my new invention, which is the... Uh, I'm trying to come up with a witty name on the fly, and I totally haven't already done almost six hours of commentary, so I'm struggling. The uh, helmet? No, 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 because it needs to throw hell, uh, hail and stuff at you, right? So imagine when you go off the track and you go into a gravel trap. Now suddenly you've got gravel being thrown at you. You go off the track and you're into the grass. Oh, I'm sorry. Interesting. You, 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 this is an, an element generator. It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's, it's an airbender. I'm here for it. There you go. I like, it. I like anything in sim racing where we can, uh, we can beat reality. Because with the power of sim racing, we can beat death. That's what it's all about. All I'm going to say is earlier today, I made reference to how in the world of sim racing, we need to do some more unique things and make it esports. And we need to do an elimination race where at the end of every week, we, we eliminate a driver. Uh, I have te definitely not got a message from someone that wants to do that proposal at a fantastic racing venue. News, hopefully, to come soon. Uh, that sounds like the, the crazy kind of thing that I am all on board for. What I am not on board for, though, is the fact that you take a look at those weather conditions. The first thing to note is that the first indications of light fog are actually going to come in about 45 minutes. So just keep an eye on, uh, an eye on that. It's not going to be clear. It will be foggy sooner rather than later. But again, I think we are getting potentially close to the rain unless that graphic is misleading me into thinking we might have rain at the end of this race. I don't know. It's been it's been changing with every time we see it. Last time we saw it, rain was coming in at like 3.15 after the race ended, and now supposedly rain's coming with 45 minutes to go in the race. I don't know I don't know who to believe anymore. Uh, the, the answer is not that graphic, because it was meant to say 2 hours and 30 minutes and 2 hours and 45 minutes. That, that's the less fun one right there. Yes, there you go. We are live updating all of this information if we get it. And again, because it's changing, right, that percentage has been slowly creeping up. And because we get the forecast at 15-minute intervals, it says no rain at 10.30 p.m. virtual standard time right now, and then rain at 10.45. Could the, the rain just end up moving in a little bit quicker and just look how dark the track has gotten now i don't want to imagine what the rain would be like for the drivers to navigate if it was to come like at this point in time it would be totally blinding but also they do have updated rain lights now that was one of the recent uh, recent updates in the recent patch rain lights originally weren't especially visible they were, they were somewhat visible but they didn't do the same job they do in real life now you can very well see through the spray it's brighter lights so you're not totally blind but if you're not racing around any other vehicles or if you're in a pack of about five cars you're going to be almost blind you're going to be struggling a lot and you better uh, you better ride on your muscle memory of the track and remember where you're going because it's not going to be the same sebring you're used to it's not going to be the same watkins Glen. it will definitely not be the same road atlanta when we go for those final two here, Grand Slams of the year. Rogers looks pretty focused as he gets ready to switch it back and go to the outside of the Simify Audi down in seventh position in class, still under control by Tristan Iglesias. He's not going to force the issue on the BS competition LMP2 car that he's now riding behind and out through Tower Corner. This is not a place where. GTP is necessarily going to force the issue. We saw Rogers make a bit of a dive on the GTP earlier, uh, GTD rather, earlier through that corner. And as they continue just 
cycling through. You can see the hybrid kick into gear and just fire. Rogers on forward and being able to one by one pick his way through all of the traffic. You were mentioning as well, we talked GTD earlier, Manuel Troncoso building his advantage, not just running away from Johnny Vecchio, but Felix Kronbach is being left in the dust in the Lamborghini as the sun continues to set. Nope, it's, it's unfortunate to be Felix. And at a level like this, unfortunately, there's always going to be a driver who is the uh, potentially the least fast at a certain time. Unfortunately for Mr. Felix Kornbach, Barneveld and uh, and his other teammates have been, and Rainer Talvar rather, have been very, very fast. And uh, Felix has gotten in the car, hasn't been quite as comfortable, I think, on this stint, and has been hemorrhaging a little bit of time. But it's not going to hurt him too much because Johnny Vecchio hasn't really been able to close down any gap either. He's been able to pull away from the uh, Lamborghini from the Mala Racing Team hasn't been able to close up to Troncoso still. I mentioned he needed to close down maybe a second every 15 minutes. It's been about half an hour since I said that, and he's closed down about half a second. The math is not adding up to a Team Redline win right now, but they've got two and a half hours to try and change that somehow. No, but in terms of uh, their success already in the uh, 2023 IMSA Esports Global Championship and at Daytona, they've already got two spots in the GTD class in the 2024 IMSA Esports campaign, uh, locked and loaded. So, you know, second place, they might be frustrated by it, but they've already been able to get the numbers onto the board that maybe they would have wanted. Here comes Rico Wenzel. Will we see him jump out of the car and hand on over to a teammate as up onto the jacks? A nice and tidy uh, execution of bringing that car in. Yes, he gets out. So Wenzel will be replaced by Jano Koch once again. And now just waiting to see Jonas Wanner, who's coming out of Le Mans corner on towards the Elman straight. Can he be able to make the margin just that little bit closer and really put the pressure onto a driver that's going to have to get to grips with uh, when he last was in the car? That was lots of sunlight. Now he's only got the headlights to figure out where his references are. So many, so many new aspects to this race now this year because... In previous years, you had two situations to practice in. You had daytime practice and you had nighttime practice. Now, in the same amount of time you've had to practice, all of these teams and all of these drivers have had to practice day dry running, night dry running, day rain running, and night rain running, and also heavy rain running, light rain running, moderate rain running, absolutely drenched torrential downpour running. That's like 10 different Sebrings you have to run here, Arjuna, and I do not envy any of these drivers who have had to, one, set up all those sessions and figure out the, uh, the, the, the rain settings themselves, and also basically have to learn all sorts of new things and, uh, and spend probably a lot more time than a normal 12 hours of Sebring practicing for this year. And some drivers did have an endurance race last week in which they had rain, and so, you know, they will have done their testing for that. And I talked to Ryan Barneveld in particular, who's in the Mala Racing Team car. One thing he had mentioned is for that race, they hadn't really done too much in terms of wet setup versus dry setup. They had just built a car that was good in the dry and it ended up working quite well in the in the wetter situations. Now, I'm not necessarily sure what all has gone on in terms of preparation and, and understanding for this race in particular, but, you know, all that all that work ends up paying dividends now. And, and, and Lewis and I were kind of talking about how teams that have more resources, we're talking engineers, spotters, and all of those little things, it's going to be a big important factor just to, to gather the, the data that ultimately you ultimately you need and then uh, to process it as well look at that humidity though by the way that's where the fog's going to come from 94 percent in the sunshine state and more humidity i'm no meteorologist i'm no weather scientist but the more humidity you have in the air the more water i feel like gets logged in those clouds the more likely it becomes that it may rain but I could be very long, wrong about that. I don't know about my science. I'm really hoping for a, a last second finale, Arjuna. Even when I get out of the booth in 20 minutes, I'm going to go get dinner. I'm going to step away and I'm going to tune in for the last half hour. And I really want to see some raindrops potentially falling in those dying couple of minutes. Uh, what is the, the plan for dinner, by the way? Uh, I haven't decided that yet. I need to figure that out in the next 20 minutes. I was going to ask, is it uh, pickles? Oh, well, yeah, there's going to be there's going to be some of those involved, I'm sure. Also, if anybody at home is interested in uh, in shots of pickle juice, I have about 10 of them in a box in my room right now. So if you want any shots of pickle juice and you live near Stamford, Connecticut, let me know because I got I got to get rid of some of them. Big shout out to Sucker Punch, who are a supporting racing prodigy on their journey of bringing 
uh, people along the Eaterio pipeline. But yes, Joey has eaten pickles live on air. Uh, a braver man than I am, that is for sure. As I was eating Hershey Kisses live on air today. Oh, that is, that's going to make me jealous. The 003 now ends up four seconds back from Door Esports. So let's see if Yano is going to be able to pull himself into the fight. Now, I can't believe that I'm saying this. We've actually got a fight on track. Yes, it's only for 10th position, but it's cars separated by half a second, and it's Drago Racing versus the Falcon Sim Racing team. Two Ooh. Audis going at it. Top 10. If you, if my noise cancellation wasn't so effective, you could hear me clapping right now. But uh, yeah, this this will be fun. Drago versus Falcon. Drago with their other car is in contention for the win, but the, uh, the second car still going for glory. You know, it feels good to finish in the top 10 at the very least. It's a nice number, but they're not going to be in the top 10 for very long as the 44 dives into the inside. Luca Wunsch, but it was just a Luca to the inside. It was not a Muva. Wasn't able to make that work despite how brave he was. It was a big old look, and that, that was kind of what we were talking about earlier, where that's something you often see in the real world, where drivers just lunge for it, and then when they realize they can't commit, they will back out, whereas... Often in sim racing, we, we, we live and die by the, the adage where uh, I'm alongside and therefore I'm entitled to the space, which is not necessarily always true. A jink back inside on the entry down into the hairpin. It's a very flat uh, entry in terms of elevation, but bumpy. And you can find yourself just hitting the ABS and uh, bouncing off of it and slightly increasing your braking distance, lowers your braking performance. But these are two uh, teams, like, like you mentioned, Drago Racing, one of their cars up front running for the lead. This car down in 10th. They've had uh, their third car that runs in sixth position as well. So basically running the gamut at the front, the middle, and the back of the surviving GTD pack. And that Drago Racing number 269, by the way, it, or not, well, it's, it's the 269 team. It's the 22 car in the session, very confusingly. They had one notable moment in this race a couple of hours ago. They were the car that got into the uh, the number 10 for the Mala Racing Team that turned Rainer Talvar around. But now they're trying to give themselves a little bit of extra glory. You got one negative story, and now you've got one positive story trying to hang on to the top 10. And uh, Alfonso Erutia has, has been pretty solid, but straight line speed and the draft may be no match. LMP2 gets to the inside. I don't know. Maybe we'll see uh, Luca in second try and go for the move again into turn one, try and scare Alfonso out of the way once again. I personally quite like turn one as a passing opportunity if your car has got enough grip to really send it because you just carry so much speed that if you're alongside, you can just really chop the car in and if it sticks, you'll be through. Now still alongside is uh, the 22 machine, but with traffic underneath them, I think finally realized that you had to let the Falcon Sim Racing teal and blue machine slide on through and the distinctive number 44 finds its way fired on forward. And now a full lap behind the Williams Esports Chill Blast car. It's basically just going to be these two tangoing to the very end. And I think there was a little bit of contact through turn one, but it was just the littlest of bumps and the uh, and Alfonso Ruggia backed out of it to make sure he didn't turn the uh, number 44 into turn one have to imagine that'll be the end of this battle. You're going to see that Falcon car running away. And uh, next car for them, as Arjuna mentioned, is two laps ahead, Sotomuto. I think they're just going to be hoping for some trouble up front now. P10 is the best they can ask for right now. they got to keep it alive for two and a half more hours-ish. So it's still a decent amount of time left to go in this race, and it has closed to within 10 seconds. The very front of the field, albeit... Uh... Still wait, we're still waiting, excuse me, for Josh Rogers to come down uh, to pit lane in the next handful of laps. The reason why I stumbled there for a second is my timing screen said he did a 117-126 last lap, which if that was... New track record! If that's true, not only is that a new track record, but he has teleported uh, around the track seemingly. Although if you're going to Well, if you think that's good, Alexander Davidson has just done a 6.2 second lap. Yeah, I, w w there's a few little blips here and there on the timing. He has just taken two seconds, though. He did just do a 43.792 to a 145.366 for your race leader. So there is a little bit of speed out on track, that is for sure. But it's also because that car's, once again, much like we're talking about in that LMP2 fight between door and grid and go. VRS Kawanda light on fuel, a bit of a rocket ship. Still a heavy car for Williams Esports Chill Blast. I'm going to do some uh, math calculations right now. I'm going to figure out how fast you would have to go around Sebring to do a six-second lap. 3.741 miles. 
6.2 seconds. Calculate. That would be 2,200 miles per hour. I think that's Mach 1. That seems like something you're probably not going to do while taking corners as well. You might just have a chance of doing it, though, if you were uh, trying to do it in a straight line and uh, not from a standing start as well. I'm going to have to take a look at the replay because there's been a moment highlighted for one of the GTP cars that's still out there and circulating. Remember, we do have plenty of cars still out there and just trying to finish. That's the bright yellow, fiercely forward car that... Oof. Now, which of the Audis did they have contact with? Was that red line? Good question. They all look exactly the same from the uh, the rear view. It's a Drago car. Excuse me. It's the number two. Yeah. It's the race leader. Oof. And those are four incident points they didn't need. With 50 in every 50 incident points, you're forced into a drive through And poor old Manuel Troncoso gets absolutely dived or divin by, uh, by Lena Sjernalund in the uh, fiercely forward GTP. And uh, I think kind of just doesn't lift there, but... Traffic interactions, they can always bite. The fiercely forward car is almost a full lap behind the car it's fighting. I say fighting in air quotes. Two laps uh, in front of the next car in line. I don't really think that was necessary to go for, especially knowing that that is the GTD class leader. Because imagine you take them out, and again, that would have been on them. Uh, I yep. think if that, based on what happened in that situation, uh, that was close. I don't think it really cost uh, Troncoso time in the end, but that's a uh... little bit awkward. Yeah, a little bit awkward. And it's a shame. It's a shame because Fiercely Forward have actually been on a pretty good streak recently. They uh, just came off a win, kind of an underdog win in the uh, the Ivor Endurance Series at Spa with Dennis Wolf and uh, and Lena Swernerlund, but Sebring's not quite gone their way so far. Yeah, and again, if you're, you're going to take out a GTD leader, there's going to be some questions asked, so situations like that maybe better not to force the issue especially given that we're now down to 34 Not left out there and running it does seem like relatively normal attrition for an iRacing Sebring 12 hours uh, but a lot of that attrition as we'll talk about once we get to the results I think at the end of this race uh, ended up taking place uh, at the start in those first couple of hours Danny Shivy Shabo says almost mark three uh, to, to get around this track in six seconds, which would be SR71 S speeds, which would be SR71 speeds. So, you know, that's uh, something just to keep in mind. I bet I could pull it off. SR71 speeds, though, with taking the corners, I wonder how many G's that would be. It's got to be a lot. That's got to be like, I don't know. Is there a physicist in the chat? I asked for a linguist earlier. I kind of need a physicist now. 2.12 left to go. We're less than a l regular race distance right now as for an IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship race. If we were to have, you know, IMSA Michelin endurance points and whatnot, those would have been interesting things to also look at at various uh, marks through the race, not just points paid out at the end, but points paid out midway through as well. Although I say that would be fun for us to have. I'd like for us to get that into the sim. The one thing I don't want, NASCAR stages. Stay as far away as possible from us on our racing, please. Yeah, not yet, at least. Maybe in like, maybe in oval racing, but on the road courses, nah. I don't, I don't know. The reintroduction of those is somewhat disappointing. I like, uh, I like seeing a race develop. And I think we just saw the first, the first reintroduction of the stages, or I guess after the Roval today, with the uh, with the truck series. I mean, I, li I like a long race. I like an uninterrupted road race, I think. Yeah, uh, yes. And the great part was, right, NASCAR last year, they made the call, the right call, to take away cautions at the end of stage uh, stages uh, and to remove effectively the stage breaks. They get one boring race uh, because no one crashed in that, apparently, and didn't bring out any other cautions, which is not the problem of the decision that was made. It was just a function of how the race played out. Um, yes. Uh, Anyway, that is getting us very, very <laughs> off topic. I'm, I'm keeping an eagle-eyed view on the forecast right now, and it's still 10.45, showing that chance of rain, although it's starting to go down in terms of chance of rain. Forecast still not showing us at least anything in the area. I don't think it's happening. I think I'm losing all of my hope. I hope I get surprised. I hope, I hope something magical happens, but 
It's been a lot of gray. It's been a lot of math that uh, hasn't added up to a, a very good outcome. I think we may be dry all the way to the end. I think it may happen. Yeah, I'm unfortunately on that same page. If you want to, to get wet at this point, the only place you can go is onto uh, the other side of the fence at the hairpin where uh, there's a pool at the, the hotel on track. Ooh. So, I mean, you know how Kimi Raikkonen- we like suck that up, spray it on the track? Yeah, you know how Kimi Raikkonen uh, in Monaco went over to his yacht? I mean, you just go over to the Sebring Hotel here. Yes, please. Freshly squeezed orange juice, trackside windows, one day. I'm trying to think where the best view in a hotel room could be in motorsport. Like, if you're going to have... So, because Yas Marina's got a hotel. What other tracks have got, like, hotels built into the structure? I'm not talking, like, oh, there's a, there's a, a hotel next to the track. I'm talking, like, you know... Because otherwise you could include the, 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 the motorsports resorts, the Virginia International Raceways and stuff. But I want to think about specifically things that are like, you know, we, we, we put it onto the track itself. You can live at Charlotte Motor Speedway with his condos. Can you really? Like, yeah. in the main building? I don't know where they are, but they're like, yeah, I think they, they overlook the track. We're going to have to go and figure this out. There's no... Apartments inside of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, there are some apartments quite close by, uh, but there's, there's not one actually that gives you permanent track access. Uh, we might have to petition Doug Bowles to, to let that be a thing in the future. But yeah, that, that's a good question, actually. I, I know there's hotels that actually, you know, let you drive your car basically right up next to where you're actually going to sleep. So if you have a fancy car, you can go and open your balcony door or something and just look at your car or something. But, you know. A motel by other by other names. No, 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 Joey. These are like you. You drive your car into a garage that's next to a hotel room, but you're driving your car into your hotel room. I have to go and find the video to explain it. The video I'm thinking of, the, the hotel or whatever I'm thinking of, it's in Germany or Switzerland or something. It's nice. It sounds like a motel. Lewis, I've been to those. I've been to those. Lewis knows what I'm talking about. It's, it, it's, uh, all that I care about, because at least I'm not crazy and dreaming of something. Uh, Danny should be Shabo says there are houses next to Inglis Lost Turn. Oh yeah, we, we see those everywhere. Like on the outside of the... Uh, yeah. They're, 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 they're all, it's got like the, the red roof. It's like traditional Italian. Shows you pay more attention to me. Here comes Josh Rogers though. 26 laps into the stint. Seven minutes before the top of the hour. I don't think he's going to be out of the car just yet though. He's probably just going to be top off of fuel, fresh set of tires onto the car, send Rogers back out there, maybe Charlie Collins to get in in the next stint to bring this car to the end. I like Daniel Sivishawa's other comment, by the way, he says, when I said I could fly a, an SR71 at 2200 around the track, he said that's the most male response possible, and I, I agree, that is my most toxic masculine trait, I could fly an SR71 around Sebring, and I always bet I could swim across the Long Island Sound in New York. Those are my only two. Yes. I'm going to hold you to that second one. I'll try. I'm not actually going to. It's like one of those things where someone says they're going to swim across Alcatraz, and you go, yes, you know you are. Well, uh, yeah, when you, if you go to Alcatraz and you, like, see it out there, don't you think, like, no. yeah, I, I can swim. I bet I could try that. No, you do not. No, at least I don't. Charlie Collins, Sir Charles is going to take over from Josh Rogers because the water near Alcatraz is very, very choppy, and I want no part of it. So I, there are people that actually do that every single year. Uh, crazy, crazy people. Mike de Turk says there are two in Germany that he can think of that match the description that I'd had. One where you drive your car straight into the living room of your suite. The other one, though, has a car elevator that moves it up to your balcony. But when I drive my car into the front of a motel, it's not okay. No, it's not. Uh, I don't have a car that warrants being in the living room of my hotel suite, though, is the problem, you know? I think that was an episode of House one time, where House drives his car into the living room of his ex's house or something. Dr. House. Uh, you know, that, <laughs> how, how many seasons did that show end up running for? Many. Probably too many. Too many? 
I think they it all is all on Peacock. It is. It's, it's available on a streaming service, I'm sure, somewhere for you to watch. But it's just crazy. You know how Suits has somehow had a big uptick in popularity recently. I was, I remember watching Suits 10 years ago and going, oh, this is a fun show, and then falling away from it, and then seeing it on Netflix and going, wait, how many seasons have they made on this now? And then, like, what else has been on for a while? What are they, they're still making The Simpsons, of course. That'll never end. That'll be until the end of time. They're still making Family Guy. They're still making Bob's Burgers, but that's actually still good. Yeah, but, you know... What was that Netflix show Netflix show about NASCAR that had what was it Kevin James the crew the crew did you ever watch the crew I did not that was that was a one season I, order I think I, it was a one season order and I, I will just say as someone who watched it it was a one season order for good reason uh, the new Netflix content that we have about motorsports as a whole is a lot higher quality 50 cars started, we're down to 34, we're about to kick Joey Tebbin out in four minutes time and head into the final two hours of this race. I mean, Joey, you didn't really unfortunately get to see much of the rain, but you got to see the impacts that it's brought into, let's be honest, one of the toughest special events of the year in many ways. Indeed, I'm such a shining force of the sun that I forced the rain away. I was the one man vortex theory, thank you very much. But yeah, it's been back to normalcy for Sebring in a way we really didn't expect. And in that way, it's kind of abnormal. We expected a weird Sebring. We expected wet and wild all the way. And we got that for the first couple of hours. And now suddenly you've got to readjust and, and kind of take it normally and kind of run it without those extra factors. So if you're on the back foot, if you didn't have the greatest run for the first 10 hours, you're not going to have the same wild cards. You're not going to have the same help from the unpredictability of the weather. You want to win this race now. You've got to do it the old and hard-fashioned way. And uh, that's what we do like in some ways, I guess, with no safety cars, is that, you know, you have to do it on merit, but, you know, it doesn't allow you to make a mistake and to be brought back into the fight. Grid and Go in our Race Spot TV YouTube chat saying that they actually like the crew, one of the few series with Kevin James that they actually like. It, I'll just be clear, it wasn't a bad show. It was just one of those shows where... After a few episodes, you'd kind of seen seen all of it at that point. It never really ended up going and, and being anything different. Uh, what, Maybe they, it was funnier in the German translation. Uh, good point. Maybe the... Yeah, yeah my Nazca is gebrochen. Yeah, maybe it was funnier in that in, in the translation. The, I, I guess other thing is we haven't really ever had a motorsports TV show like that. So I guess it's just the novelty is quite cool as well. And they, had like, they had like racing episodes of Home Improvement, but that was about it. There was nothing much else. Why does Michael de Turk know so much about the, the, the car loft hotels of Germany? Yeah, uh, because he's probably gone off and, and, and done some research at one point because he wants to go and stay at some of these hotels. Because I'll be honest, uh, I have done that too. I've actually done research on uh, automotive museums and, and racing museums around the world we had that discussion on some special events last year and so i've got a i've got a whole list circled at one point my goal is to try and slowly one by one knock them off what i will say number one museum in the world is the indianapolis motor speedway museum which is closed this year but uh, next year when it reopens it's going to be even better and you're going to get access to some of the skunks works uh, areas at the bottom of the facility. We'll take a look at the replay. And the 003, third in class, off no. the road at Cunningham. And that's the second time that 22 car has been involved in turning around a, uh, a higher class or a higher placed car. Last time it was the third place GTD runner with the uh, Mala. This time it's the third place LMP2 with Grid and Go. Yeah, that car is, is, is just had a magnet on the front end of it. Unfortunately, that's just the way the way it goes sometimes. It might not be your fault, but people, when you're about two laps down, they, they, they do kind of bowl you around a little bit, and it blended together at the bad moment for them as well. Uh, Mike Turk does say, by the way, he had a Germany trip that didn't end up happening. I The dream, the dream is at some point to, to buy a European car 
and then when you go and you are at the dealership getting the order signed off and everything, you tick the box that says European delivery, and you go and you pick your car up wherever the factory is, you drive it around Europe, they ship it back after you're done, and then that's your car for the eternity. Well, that is, unfortunately, eternity with Joey Tebbin in the books here. And now two more hours left in this second of our VCO Grand Slams, the 2024. 2024 iRacing VCO uh, Sebring 12 hours. Lewis McClay is going to rejoin me to take us through to the very end. And Lewis, we're in the darkness. We've got some excitement, but it's not because rain's on the horizon. Why do we have excitement? Because we've got cars on track. I, had to, I tried. I tried. I know. I mean, you, you really, you, this is the thing is that I am the voice of truth and reason. As Joey will attest to, I was correct on many a point towards the end of uh, my stint. I was very impressed with myself. Um, but the, the voice of truth here, I mean, this race has been fairly unchanged um, and thus sort of boring over the last, uh, let's say, four hours. It was okay. exciting with the last, with the last battle reign. But we do have the potential of some decent fights, particularly between Williams and Coander in the uh, in the GTP category I've seen. It's not too far away in the GTDs where we're definitely not going to get a fight. We, we, we still might. But for the most part, this is... You know that picture of, like, the um, the, 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 the drawing of, like, the, the stick man with, like, a stick being, like, come on, do something? Yeah. Oh, we're right there That's right now. this. That is, that is me and this right now. Yeah. It's close. It's not there yet. Now, do you think that if we had had more rain, we would have seen more unpredictability? I mean, the answer is obviously yes. Yeah, but, but the, the, I, it sounds like a silly question. But the reason I ask that is because let's say we didn't have periods where it came back to dry and then went to rain. If we just had solid periods of rain, what do you think that does to the racing? Well, I mean, look, I, I think, OK, so I think had we had um, another like rain period, I think it would have been more interesting from a, an inter like, from a, from a technical perspective. Um, but I think it would be less interesting in the race right now because things would be even more spread out. But if you only had it, though, to, you know, to, to what you just said there, where it was rain for, let's say it was wet for the entire first four hours of the race, and then it dried up once, and that was it. That was all we saw in rain. You'd have a much more interesting race because it's the transition periods that make things awkward, that make things different, and yes. that spread apart the entire field. When it is fully wet, everyone's fairly close on the same kind of speed. When it's fully dry, everyone's fairly close and on the same kind of speed. It is that transition period that causes problems, which is why I said earlier when we had the first one, I told you, I was like, this race is going to be really spread out in a moment, and it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and you have commentated on more of these variable condition race, oh, yeah. uh, races than I have, but you know, from the few that I've done on other platforms, the one thing that I kind of thought coming into this is it was going to be a bit samey and that it wasn't going to be such a wild swing, right? Because we, we haven't seen all the, 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 the mixed condition racing on other platforms at this level be like this. And, and that's where the intrigue has come, uh, like you say. We're looking at Johnny Vecchio in the Redline GTD. That's still 14 seconds off the back of uh, Manuel Troncoso in the Drago Racing car. And a Drago Racing Audi that, at least right now, I do have to say, looks very, very comfortable out front with the gap that it's got in hand. I do like, yeah, I, I, I'm liking Drago Race and I'm liking the idea of them potentially winning, although I can't help. But deep down, part of me is like, it would kind of feel right seeing Team Redline win. Uh, and that's not about, you know, because they're the great team, or whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's more of they've had two cars that retired out of the race through their own fault. Fair enough. But then there was that unbelievable net code for the uh, the 71 earlier on in the race with the Simi 5 car going through the final corner that kind of just makes me feel really bad for Redline where it's like yeesh uh, but Drago Racing I don't care about that they're only focused on uh, on one thing and that is taking the victory and uh, booking their spot into the IMSA Esports Championship later on in the season uh, into the pit lane and they will go for their penultimate stop I'm quite amazed by the way for someone that doesn't believe in the commentator's curse very what? generous to Team Redline there. Why? They should win because they've had their cars crash out. No, it wasn't the cars crashing out that's the problem. It was the net code that was the thing. Okay. If it, if yes. the, if it was just like the GTP's been in it, I'm like, oh, it, it, it feels kind of rough. Um, but that was all on the them. <laughs> it, it, it's like, you've done it. 
right. right. It, you you were the ones who binned it in those awkward scenarios, and even if it was kind of like around like a crash another car, like like I, I I feel bad for them, but I'm not sitting there being like, oh well, they should have yeah should have would have could have. Yeah. The thing was, the 71 got removed from the race through absolutely no fault of their own, and no fault of the Simi Fi either. No, right. I agree with you there, 100. percent They got removed from the race through absolute rubbish. And that's why I kind of like, I feel a little bit bad for Redline. And I say, maybe they should be. Let's be honest, whoever crosses the line first will win. Woo! What win. happened there for, is that, I think that's one of the Williams cars. That must have been Jaden Munoz, because race leader hasn't lost much ground. But technical issue that sees you get loose? Not very often I've seen something like that before. Obviously, it is the, uh, the number one. So it's the um, Williams Esports BenQ car. Whoa. It must have been a screen freeze. It must like 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 a, right. a, a large a large lag like a lag spike or whatever uh, on their end, which potentially would have caused a screen freeze because that's the only one of the thing that kind of makes sense with that kind of um, uh, sharp sort of like spin. There, it, it was it, it was very weird. Um, I've, again, I've seen that kind of stuff before on like other platforms stuff where um, you have like a screen freeze and then once it stops that's where you have like the really large moment uh it just kind of looked like that might have been what happened with the uh with the number one car there so very weird suboptimal but it is still Williams yeah. one and two albeit as we wait for the pit stop window to cycle on through and for uh both Williams Esports Chill Blast, Ben Q and the Drago racing cars to make their way down towards pit lane yeah, the rain's not indicating that it's going to come anytime soon, and the percentage yeah, chance for it even to come at 10.45 is starting to fall away. But I do quite like that, Lewis, there's uncertainty, right? We're not 100% sure that at 10.45 there is going to be rain. It's leaving us a little bit on the edge of our seats, even if we're not thinking that it's going to come at the end. It's just the fact that, you know, it's changing. That's exciting for the future. Yeah, I mean, look, it's the, uh, like I said, uh, it's not going to rain, uh, as far as I'm aware, in the next, you know, uh, two hours. So that's which is fine. Um, it happens. But like I say, it's, it's close enough where there's a little bit of a maybe, a little bit of uncertainty, which is which is great. I, I, we've, we've had conversations before about it, you know, commentating elsewhere in the world of sim racing and stuff. Um, I, I, I've seen it where it's... Um, It'll rain in, um, you, you know exactly how I'm going with this. It'll rain, it'll, it gives you like a readout. It'll be like 50 minutes, 30 minutes, and 60 minutes. And it'll say it'll rain in 30 minutes. That is 100%. If, and I've said before, this is on a different platform, obviously. Um, if you time it from when it says it'll rain in 30 minutes, it'll rain on exactly 30 minutes from that point. And I absolutely hate that. Yes. Because that doesn't happen with weather. No. Uh, it, it, you, we've all seen it where you, you've been sat there and all the weather forecasts, like every single weather forecast is it's sunny, it's sunny, it's sunny, oh, it's a bit cloudy, it's a bit, bit cloudy, it's a bit cloudy. And you're looking outside being like, it is about to, like the heavens are about to open. No weather forecast says it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Yeah, no, I, I, and I like, again, unpredictability. That's the main part, because when that second rain shower came in and, and you were commentating, right, we... We had the, the moment where it started to rain and then it stopped raining and people freaked out and then it started raining again. And it was like, oh, this is what this, the, the fun that we're in for is going to be like. Uh, you know how some of these teams have to, you know, they pay their drivers. I'm just saying some of these engineers are going to start thinking and realizing that they're going to be worth a lot of money moving forward. Yeah, we're going to start, uh, we, like I say, from our point of view, we're going to need to keep an eye as to who's got what race engineer, because that, that whole side is going to be worth a fair amount now. Now, obviously, though, your drivers and stuff, they all know their, um, their stuff when it comes to this, but that is going to be far more intricate, understanding the nuances as to how to deal with such a complicated system. I, I said before, I still think in, in six months' time, uh, or even let, let, yeah, let's, let's play this with, with this race next year right I don't think even if it rains in a similar fashion you know on and off and on and off I don't think it will be as wild as it is now because people have a lot larger understanding as to how to deal with the wet weather it's kind of one of those ones because it's brand new people don't know how to deal with it in a year's time everyone will probably be fairly set and having the, 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 the solid knowledge so that solid engineering is worth a lot right now in a year's time, it'll be worth a fair amount, but nothing crazy. And that's where I, I've already started thinking about how, how we're going to play God. 
uh, when we create these weather timelines so that we can specifically plan out the rain in a way that's going to cause maximum chaos? That's, that's very easy. What you do is you make sure that everyone can go around in the fuel tank for an hour, mm -hmm. and then you have a rain in an hour and ten minutes. Make it really awkward. Maybe, maybe an hour and five. Nah, an hour and no, six. No, you, you see, I... I I was thinking even... I, I, I've got some plans to be more evil than that. Um, right. The problem... The only... I say problem. It's probably a good thing. But the only thing is that you cannot control where the rain is going to be. Like, you can tell it that you want it to rain X amount, like heavy, medium, or light. But, like, imagine the Norschleifer. Imagine if you could tell it just to rain. Right at Hoa Act. And then for a couple of corners after that. But when I say rain, I mean Norschleifer level rain. Yeah. Like uh, that time when going down into yes. uh, Swedenkreuz, everyone binned it because it just started raining very, very heavily into uh, into Arenberg, and uh, everyone crashed. All, Good times. All we all we need to be able to replicate the time when it it was what um, it, it would be at uh, YouTube Corner around that section where it went from uh, oh yeah dry the, uh... to slightly rainy to really rainy, to hail to snow, back to rain, to hail, and then eventually back to, to dry conditions, seemingly in all about 30 minutes time. Yep, I have uh, been to the Nordschleifer. Yeah, it's like that, yeah, yeah. It's also very foggy, which is not a shock to anyone, but it is, it's, it's, that whole area is more foggy than I thought it would be. I always thought, I was like, I thought that was a myth. No, 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 it's, it's no, it's thick. It's, and, and like, when it gets foggy, woohoo, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's there's that. I think it was 2018, um, and it was it was very foggy. And it's kind of one of those ones where you watch it on YouTube and stuff, um, and you you watch it from home, and you think they've they've red flagged it for fog, right? Like, really? And I'm like, I'm I'm there, and genuinely outside, you could see clearly f for about 20 meters around you, and past that point, you were getting a little bit hazy on what was actually there or not. It's thick. Oh, Becky's finally arrived. Becky's... Oh, he's finally been able to come and join us. He's not in the right street. channel yet, though. No. We'll leave him to it for a sec. No, I tell you what. Let's not give him any time to wait. Oh, my God. He's uh, He's been waiting for about eight hours at this point to try and connect to TeamSpeak. Dylan Shrivens, do we have a copy? Hello. Hello. Uh, we were told you were retired from the world of sim racing, but what is this? You're back in, you're back in the GTP. I, I thought I was retired as well. So what um, happened? Come on! I don't know. Sim racing is kind of fun. Glad to hear especially you're having with, fun. Especially with rain. Yeah, so tell us about that, Dylan. What's going on? It's wet. Not now it's not. Come on! No, but it was. Um, it's fun. I, I don't know. I have no idea how realistic it is, but it's fun. What's it been like for you jumping in with the Fiercely Forward guys? I, I assume that you haven't been doing much sim racing, so... I've done next to nothing. What's it been like preparing, doing all of those hours? Are, are you are you understanding all of the pain that you went through in the last couple of years? Uh, I I don't know. I'm just I don't know. I didn't put that much effort into this. So I'm just happy to be able to be somewhat competent and still be able to somewhat compete. I mean, you've. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping in now. I'm kicking our junior out. Um, it's fine. Uh, you've obviously driven wet weather in other platforms. So um, I distinctly remember a, a certain victory on uh, on RFT uh, in person in 2019. Was it? Yeah, yeah time's flown. Uh, that one obviously had quite a lot of wet weather on it. This has had a fair amount of wet weather. How do you compare it? Completely different. Um, our fact, uh, the weather just ends up being a grip multiplier, and so. I don't know how to explain it, but even in the wet, you just want to drive on the racing line, uh, drive on the driest part of the track. And here, it's nothing like that. Perfect. I mean, you also avoided uh, Cam earlier. Yeah. Any reasons to that? None. No. Nice. We'll let you jump back to it, mate. Have fun. Oh, it's good to have Becky back um, for an interview. And the problem is now that he's back, he's no longer Bobbo. He's back to being Becky. He is back to being Becky. As to be fair, Bobbo, Bobbo rolls off the tongue really nicely. Uh, we do like we do like doing scribbles. He's, we've missed him. Understa obviously, to, to give you this, this story a little bit, um, obviously was, was one of the drivers from Urano uh, at the end of last year that when that team 
uh, folded. Didn't really have anywhere. Well, I wouldn't say that Dylan had nowhere to go because I think he absolutely did have somewhere to go. I just think that probably was like, now's a good time for a break. Yes. It sounds um, like he's having fun, right, as well. Like, that was the first thing he said. It was just like, it, it, there was nothing serious. It was just, oh, I'm having fun. It's great. Yeah. Right. Which, to be fair, there is this whole thing of sim racing is that too many people take it too seriously. <coughs> Present company. Um, a lot of drivers take sim racing too seriously. And there is a point where sim racing, when you're taking it seriously, but you're not doing it for a job, but you're taking it the kind of level of seriousness as if you are doing it for a job, it's not fun. It is not an enjoyable experience. It is stressful when it's supposed to be your, your calm and relaxing hobby. Um, whilst, you know, you're, 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 you're taking it seriously to a point of you want to do well, you want to win, everyone wants to win, but you're then removing the side of it being fun. And that is so easy to do, especially when you're in top split. And I think there is that point where a few drivers sometimes need to step back a little bit and think, how do I make sim racing fun again? Mm -hmm. Um, some drivers can't find that, and that's okay. Um, some drivers have to take it seriously, and again, that's okay. But if you can find that balance, that sweet spot, that's where you'll be happy in some racing for a long, long, long time. Yeah, and I think, again, it goes back to the point where competition is so high at this level, you're not always going to be on top, so you've got to, you got to enjoy what you're doing more than uh, be winning a bunch and be out there. I mean, off topic from uh, I racing competition, but... Uh, you know, we've been commentating on the Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland. I don't think Lewis, you or I have ever seen Max Benneke look so happy and relaxed when he goes racing. And that's also just seen him dominate in terms of speed and pace. Apart from right now, he wasn't particularly chilled there, was yeah, he? Yeah, but he also did tell us that he wasn't <laughs> looking forward to that round. He'd already qualified for the final round of the championship as the number one seed. Uh, you, can, you, can, you can give him some excuses, including some technical issues. What? Will you? Yeah, he did have some technical issues. To be fair, will you be giving him some excuses in the absolute final of that when it is at Road Atlanta and it is for money? No, because there's exactly fifteen thousand different euros on the line there. Different thing, isn't it, mate? <laughs> yes, but yes, uh, that one didn't matter so much. I guess that's the only yeah. saving grace that you can have there. It's a uh, pit stop time for Grid and goes 03, double 03. Now, I just want to say one thing: uh, zero three is a fake number. Zero, zero, 003 is even more of a fake number. Again, if it is purely a a branding thing, right, where it's like it is the three, but you've branded it as the double O three, I have no problem with it because it's still the three. No, I have got a problem with it. I don't really. Care. And Kala, who is team manager at Grid and Go, knows exactly why I have a problem with it because he is a fellow programmer. And we're not going right. to talk computer science anymore, Lewis, because I don't want to bore you and put you to sleep. It's already dark outside, both in the real world and the virtual world for you. But fake number. Uh, you know what's not fake? It's, it's, fake, yeah. it's a fake number. 100% is a fake but number. But it's branding, isn't it? You know what's even more fake than that, though? I'm going to take us into a direction that I think you will agree with me on. You know how in dirt racing, where they um, have like hundreds yeah. of entries, they'll do the 17A, the 17B, yeah. the 7... Those are fake numbers, come on. Oh, yeah. No, well, it's a letter. For start. It's, just, it's just not... Uh, it's, it's, it's just not the same. I know, I, I know when they do like the... Like, for example, like the Bathurst 12 hour, they'll, they'll have like the 97A or whatever. The letter there is the distinction of class. Not So you won't get the 97A, 97B, 97C. It's the fact that it is in... The, the, the whatever the class is of A, right, and then the 97 is the number, that's fine, because you'd still classify it as a 97, right? That's fine. Whereas in dirt, the, the A is only put on the, um, on the number board as a distinguishing feature for, for one, the broadcast, really, uh, and the technical side of it, but also for the fans and stuff that are there that are looking at a car going around, they've got no idea what class it is, but it says A on the side of it, so it's, they know it's, it's part of that class. Yeah. It's the same class as that car. That's fine, fair enough. But like you say, when you're having like the, the 97A, 97B, 97C, but that's not okay. That's that's alphanumeric numbers, like the, the systems for, for for car distinguishing is is not acceptable. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, that's the yeah, you you, you, L, you were able to articulate it much better than me. And it's 11 o'clock at night. I'm really tired. It oh, is. we go back to bed. I've been up since 7 o'clock in the morning. I, went, I had a round of golf at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. 7 o'clock in the morning. Ah, I wish my alarm was 7 o'clock in the morning. That's a weekday for me. Yeah, but at least, you know, you can get to 
go to bed after this. Just take your eyes there. What and then wake up, wake up. I was going to say, Formula what am I one. doing after the staying up to watch the Formula One? Oh, I'm definitely not staying up to watch Formula One. I'm going to have a nap. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to watch the first five laps. And then watch go back Max to Verstappen sleep. clear off to a 10 second lead. Go straight back to sleep. Wake up for the Dutch national anthem. Nice. And then regret my life. You know what? I, it's funny you mentioned uh, Max Verstappen. Do you know who joined the Team Redline stream? Yeah, it's, it's probably Max Verstappen. 30 I thought minutes ago, he joined the Discord and just went and said hello, guys. I thought I thought he was going to be on there when I tuned in uh, before, before I jumped on again, and he wasn't quite there. Um, I'm disappointed he's not racing. I'm not actually. Yeah, he can race with a controller. No, he can race with a controller. It's fine. No, uh, he's already He's won. missed out on the first ever wet special event in iRacing. That's not a bad point. Max Verstappen is as much a sim racer at this point as he is a multi-time world champion. And, you know, he is the reigning defending Daytona 24 winner in GTD. Yes, it's unacceptable. He should have been here. He should have been here. He should have been here for the team. Look, it, well, to be fair, to be fair, if he might have been behind the team, behind the wheel of one of the cars, they might not be in the race by this point anyway. So it doesn't really matter, does it? I, I do remember, was it Petit Le Mans a couple of years ago when he was sharing the car with Enzo Benito. They were what, 30 seconds clear until just one moment out of the final corner saw them caught up in traffic. I think that might have even been the same year that the two of them teamed up at Bathurst to not only win the race, but uh, become one of four, or two, become two of four two, drivers thank you. to do the entire race with zero X. I wonder exactly. who the other two were. Same. Um... I'm going to go and see Dan, actually, on the, in, 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 in a week's time on the way back from Alton Park. So uh, I'm sure we'll relive the memory of that moment again. Uh, just being on the same list. And I'm pretty sure I brought that up to him in Saudi Arabia. And Enzo was <laughs> if, like, as if, like, he didn't care. I, I, honestly, I was heartbroken. I mean, it's okay. You should just take that picture of Enzo Benito that I have and send it to him and he will care. See, this is the thing, is that, like... I, I know that it was something to do with what was written on that board, and I cannot remember what it was. This is what's so great. I have a picture of Enzo Benito writing on a whiteboard. No one knows what was on the board except me, because I've got the picture and the proof of it. But the thing is, that it's one of those ones, it's the same thing as like half the replays today. As soon as I saw it, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yes. now I remember. Yes. Um, but right now, I'm like, I can't remember. So I'll exactly tell you what it said, what it was. Just, so, just so you know. It said, Arjuna is better than Lewis. That is not what it said. It definitely um, Because it, Enzo doesn't believe that. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't believe it, to be fair. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Enzo didn't believe it. I do. I, I mean, uh, at the end of the day, I still am surprised that someone thinks that we're good enough to, to give us any Simi Awards. But, you know. Yeah, but who else are they going to give it to? Uh, apparently, either you or me at this point. We, the, the funny thing they're, they're, is... They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not going to give it to... To, to George Morgan. He's not watching this. I know I'm like firing shade at him, but. You and. You and O'Leary. Yeah, exactly. They're not gonna he give wasn't it, even nominated. They're not going to give it to anyone who is not part of Team Tie. So if any commentators want to win the Simi, just put a tie on. That's apparently all you yeah. need to do. But when was the last time we wore a tie on a broadcast? I'm thinking. It was like two years ago, mate. I'm thinking. It is genuinely like two, it was. It was two years ago. It would have been the, the VCO Pro Sim series because we wore a tie. Ben Constant, Jewish, and George Morgan didn't. I'm still thinking. I can't think of anything more recent than that, though. No, you didn't. I think there was there was plans we were going to wear a tie. I got. I still got the. Um, we got a VCO green VC, tie. VCO tie. Yeah, which is All hilarious. choice of color. All choice of color, but still. The, it was the first. Oh, I, I think like we both looked at it the first time. We're like, "Hey, that's kind of cool." Can't wear it though. Well, green. I can now because I've got a background that you know I don't need a green screen. That's for. true. Uh, but you're but you're not wrong. We basically looked at it and went, "Right, so we're never going to be able to actually wear this tie, even though it's yeah. really cool." And uh, what what other? Okay, so VCO. We've got VCO ties. What merch do we need, Lewis? Any sim racing team shirt. I still want. All of the red line stuff, all the Red Bull stuff, all the Porsche stuff. Uh, where, okay. where is... Um, we're going to have to find a way to, to, to dial up the, the guys over at Kawanda and get them to give us some stuff. Yeah. Well, to be fair, when I, I brought it up to them twice uh, last year. Uh, about le at least even some like Porsche stuff. Right. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll take any of that. Uh, and they, on, on, every time that I've said it, they're like, oh, no, we don't have enough. So How do they not have enough? I don't know. In the same way that Apex don't have enough. Uh, no, that's just because you're not good enough. 
turned you down to join the academy, Lewis. They don't want to give you a shirt. Oh, well. It's okay, don't worry. I'm not good enough either. That's why I had to steal the shirt inside your head. Uh, speaking of the Apex race team, I completely forgot to watch the end of the Formula 3 race. I watched the first half of it, then there was a safety car, and then I completely forgot to watch the next half to find out what happened with Alex Dunn. Alex Dunn, of course, making that step up, and he's been... We saw him at Daytona with the Apex racing team, so, you know, he's still actively part of the oh, yeah. sim racing community as well. Uh, did get involved in a bit of contact in, in free practice. Uh, we, we won't get into that discussion because... Well, we can do it. No, we're not, because I think we both have the same opinion, which is that penalties this weekend... If Instead, focus on the fight for the Getting lead. deafened by this car. And that oh too. We're going to focus on the fact that Sir Charles has now brought the gap down to within five seconds. That gap's been cut in half since the last time I was really paying attention to it. Yeah, like, I mean, like even when I was last since like two and a half hours ago, let's, let, let's call it three hours ago, you know, when uh, when the rain decided it was finally time to uh, to give it a rest here at uh, Sebring. The gap was about 35 seconds, so it's taken them a long time to get the gap down to five seconds, but they have closed it down. Um, Sir Chollins, as he should be known. No, be Sir Charles, because it... No, Sir Chollins. You know why Sir Charles? No. I, I, have a, I have a logical case here to make to you, because would you ever actually call Charlie Sir Charles? Would you ever call him Sir Chollins? No, but it, because it... Because it's such an absurd name, I think it's just funnier to call him Sir Charles when I it probably, I, th I think probably... You didn't call him Sir anything. He, no, he's not, and that's why I think he don't, you don't have to take anything more to it. You remember we were doing Chollins and Brolins at one point. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah too Sir much. Chollins. Too much. No, that's fine. Right, too much. What do you mean Chollins and Brolins isn't too much? Are we going to... Oh, is it Sir Brolins now? Is Bryn Collins becoming... Yeah, well, no. It's... Um, there you go. Whatever their step is below Sir. What is the step? Mr. <laughs> I don't know. I've got no idea. Uh, I guess it would probably would be Mr. Brolins. Mr. Brolins. Uh, Mr. Brolins and Sir Chollins. Mr. Brin. It's fine. It works. Sir Charles. It, I don't know. We no, can put Mr. it to a Mr. YouTube Mr. Brin vote. and Sir Charles sounds so terrible. Whereas at least Mr. Brolins and Sir Chollins sounds like a terrible animated series from like the 1980s. So, so what, what are you saying against Sir Chollins? Is that what we're saying? Sir Chollins. That's what okay. I'm committing to. I don't we're, care what you do. We are we are putting a, a poll into the Racebot TV chat. Sir Chollins or Sir Charles. Sir Charles or Sir Chollins. It has gone up. I will leave it up for, should we say 10 well, minutes? Until, until you're right. Or until I'm right. Whatever <laughs> comes earlier. I will say about 10 minutes. We'll leave it up. Sir Charles, Sir Chollins, let us know. Uh, because we need more nicknames. It's, it's been one of the focuses that we've had here today. Haven't had much on-track stuff to focus on in the last handful of hours. So if you're just joining us, you're wondering why the commentary team is, well, going crazy. Uh, you're not wrong. We are going crazy, and it's because there's not much to really focus on on track. This is the only grouping of cars where they are within five seconds, and it's been like that for going on almost 90 minutes now. Yeah, like I say, we, we, a lot of the battles are brewing right there's, there's just not really anything happening within them right now but they're fairly close obviously you've got the virtual coach G, uh, uh, gg by grid and go here very close with the uh, the back end of the williams esports benq car which obviously de uh, disconnected from the race a bit earlier on problem is in the gt3 I, I, what i'm finding with the gt3s is that they're just it's really hard to make a pass in them around here um we've, we've seen more passes in, in, in both the other categories than we have in gtd that's a good point. Uh, you know, they... I wonder what compromises are being made on setup for this particular track because it's so bumpy, right? That maybe he's actually meaning that you, you're a bit s softer in your suspension, which actually gives you less aerodynamic performance, which means you can't follow through some of those faster quarters. Maybe like through Sunset Bend, for example, you might struggle might also help you if you're running a softer suspension with some of those curb strikes and explain why some of the drivers are taking such liberties with the curbs around this track. Yeah, maybe. I mean, let's be honest. Sebring at the best times is actually quite difficult to overtake at generally. Um, and it's always been a bit of a, a tricky one for, um, uh, for GT3s in particular to race around here because I, I think part of it, if you've ever quite a lot, it, one, it is quite a difficult circuit to overtake at the best of times, but for two, everyone's so well practiced around here. Yep. Like, this is this is not a circuit where, like, in, in normal circumstances, particularly in GT3s, in normal circumstances, i.e. being dry, clean, clear and everything, 
right? If we had an entire GT3 field, I would be shocked if many people made a mistake at all. Like, just generally. You just, at this kind of level, you just don't see it very often. In Because they're all well-practiced in the GT3s. They're all well-practiced around here. So we don't really see that much. Which means your opportunity to make passes is a lot lower. In the other categories where they're higher speed, missing your braking zone by five meters, uh, and just going a little bit deeper into the corner, missing the apex slightly, is a lot more likely. It's not it's still not common, but it is more likely when under pressure. The GT3s, they're used to just soaking it up and getting on with it. Especially with ABS and traction control, if you're a little bit you know, aggressive with your inputs, you don't necessarily pay as harsh a price, depending on how you have uh, those parameters configured. And parameters as well, that you know we didn't talk about it during the rain, but uh, iRacing did release some, some information about the, the traction control, the ABS settings, and recommended adjustments for teams to make in the rain to move the brake bias back so you avoid locking the fronts as much. Uh, but at the same time, also adjust the, the traction control, so maybe it's a bit more aggressive in cutting in and out and uh, giving you a little bit more assistance if you uh, get too uh, aggressive with the demand out of the rear tires. Gap for the leads now down to four seconds. They are still very offset in terms of pit cycle, though, so as much as I want to get excited, Lewis, uh, I don't think there's much to get excited by. Um, yeah, maybe. The thing is, um, at the moment, the from what from what I was basically working out is the VRS commander has the simplest strategy from this point. I.e., they will stop twice more. They will take fuel and tires on both. Um, the Williams Esports Chill Blast car. I still reckon, uh, unless they save a bit of fuel, which they might be saving fuel now. Fair enough. I. I um, from what I'm working out, they're still going to have to stop the same two times. One of them, though, is going to be a splash. Uh, obviously. Um, but as far as I'm aware, they, they've both kind of got to come down pit lane the same amount of times, but then you know my rule. What's your rule? They've just to commentate his maths. Yes. Um, I, I, you have many rules, so I was just making sure which one you were referring to there. Uh, yeah, uh, thinking about other rules, but then most of them aren't really appropriate for broadcasts. No. Um, so... Uh, insert imaginary rules here uh one rule um i don't care whatever the vote says <laughs> i'm still right because you've just noticed which direction oh, it's I, trending I, oh no I, I as soon as as soon as i saw the first few votes coming in i was like everyone said charles or whatever i don't care so charles the challenge uh, i don't care that is i'm a, still gonna say Sir Charles. i don't care that is a binding resolution in the race bot community uh, yeah sorry the same the same community that voted that the car was brown or <laughs> sorry was orange on the front when it was definitely still brown uh, Williams actually went out of their way to change the color on the front of the car. That's just because you're colorblind and they wanted yeah, to make but, sure they helped you. But if, it was, if they were colorblind, if, if, if that was the case, they just wouldn't have changed the livery. They'd just be like, tough. Okay, should we scientifically prove this? No. We can go in to, to, the, to the race bot archives, we can open up the paint file, yeah. and we can check what it is. No, because that's not the point. That's not what that's, that's, that is. That, oh, I know, I that's said, totally not I what said, the point is. Oh, uh, sorry. Let's be honest. We have all, you've all done it where we've all like made a livery for a, a car in um, iRacing or whatever. You, you pick, you, you, you know, whilst you're making it, you'd be like, oh, yeah, no, I really like that blue. And then you stick it on your car and you think, Alex, terrible in that light. And that's exactly what I was going to say. Remember, we were talking about the Williams Esports and the, the new livery and the way that, especially from the rear, sometimes you get purple hues, sometimes you get the bluish hue coming out of it. So, you know. You, you, yes, you're right. But that was orange at the end of the day. It was, well, no, it wasn't. Really. No, it was not. Uh, team well, management. They've, they've, well, they've changed it. They changed it just because Lewis, we what, complained enough. What color have, sorry, what color have they changed it to? I don't know. We haven't actually seen what it looks like on the new Well, they've livery. changed it to orange. Well, so you were apparently arguing with Joey about whether the Williams Esports Chill Blast car, which is now only 2.3 seconds ahead of Charlie Collins, is gray or silver? It's, well, it's, it's definitely not silver. It's grey. Was he saying yeah, it's, it's silver? He, he, said, he said it was silver. Oh, yeah, okay. I was like, well, okay, not I'm silver. agreeing with you on this one then. Okay. It's, it's, it's grey and, and... Not to be that guy, but it's not very nice grey either. Because um, uh, I said, I said it would have looked better as a silver or a chrome. Okay. I still think it would, we've agreed it would look better as a white. White, um, yes. Because I just associate Chill Blast with white. Uh, this but point. it's this... It's this weird, like, gunmetal, almost, like, slight hint of greeny grey. Right. Um, that I'm not a huge fan of. The good thing is that in the dark... You can't see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you can't I, love this. I love this delivery. 
<laughs> also can't really tell the difference between this and the Williams Esports BenQ livery, which does have purple instead of the, the grey slash silver hue, whatever you want to call it, that is definitely grey. So Charles is there. Uh, he's within two seconds now with an hour and 25 minutes to go. And we got told by drivers that the Porsche was expected to struggle in the rain. Yes. How much of a variance do you think that we would have had? I I'm, I'm phrasing my words carefully here because mistakes aren't often in the sim racing world, uh, you know, frequent occurrence from the likes of Rios Coanda. If they had chosen the right tire, yeah. might they be leading right now? <laughs> Possibly. Um, also, they might have not pitted at that point, and then maybe they wouldn't have. I don't know. Like, there's again so many ifs and buts. That basically, the, the wrong tyre you're leading to is Josh Rogers and the team went onto the slick tyres when it was wet, and they were losing genuinely about 11 seconds a lap at one point. Um, and yeah, it was an absolute disaster. I actually kind of think. Um, Attic Alpen and that Williams car, by the way, I think they are desperately trying to save as much as possible because they're already pitting once more for me. I don't think it's possible, but I'm not going to commit either way. You say that, I'm not going to disagree with you, but they best, the best lap time from that car is a 43.4, last time by a 43.9. Yeah, but it's cold, isn't it? It is cold, but it's consistent. So maybe you're right and they're hitting a number because it's another 43.9 yeah. at the line. And through traffic past the Marla Racing car. Cut underneath for uh, Sir Charles. That now, by the way, has 64% of the vote. The binding resolution is very close to passing, Lewis. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say, do you know what? As a commentator uh, in the world of uh, motorsport and sim racing, I don't care. It, I'll say what I want. It was hilarious where I made a joke slightly earlier when I jumped off the broadcast and you jumped back on and uh, I, I made the, the comment that... Uh, uh, what was it? That I, I was going to fire you in real time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, again, oh, I don't care. That was great. Uh, I can't remember what it was about, though. Nothing uh, important. <laughs> no, I can't remember. But, uh, whatever it was, whatever I was saying, I stand by it. Uh, oh, it was about your, your horrible weather report. Oh, the weather report was great. And which, I, which, which I respect, but it was the worst weather report I've ever seen. Okay, which weather report are you complaining about? But to be fair, both of them. For one, you were too tall. Uh, yes, I'm too and tall. Then you, and then you took a seat, which was the exact opposite problem, because then you looked about the same height as you and O'Leary. Right, so the problem was that on literally two minutes before the weather report, I decided, mm -hmm. you know what, there's not much really to report on, so instead we're going to see if we can get this Telestrator to work. Because right. Lewis, what I have discovered is a way oh, that you can be in control of the yellow pen. I don't want to be in control of the Do yellow pen. Do you not want control of the yellow no, pen? No, God, no. That's fine. I will have control of the yellow pen when Hugo's producing then, and I'm going to draw all the sorts of analysis on the screen. This is the, pro the, the problem with like, the danger with me and a yellow pen is what will be drawn. Oh, yes. No. And it will be exactly what you're thinking right now, that 100% yes. right away. Yes. Two lovely circles and then <laughs> the rest. Uh, yeah, it's just, no, it's not, it's not worth it. The, the, also, by the way, can we talk about your second weather report for a second? No, let's not, because that was the here's, one that was really here's, together. Here's the weather report. Here's what the weather has done, and here's where the weather that has passed us is right now. Good day. What about the weather that's to come? There was no weather to come, though. Let's say that. It was terrible. It's very funny. Uh, I think, zero out of ten. I think we need an Emmy for uh, the best uh, production of weather reports. Um, and I, and I think we will be nominated for that moving forward. No, I don't think so. No, I definitely don't think so. The first weather report, though, I love how I, because I was so concerned that I wasn't going to fit in the frame, I don't know if you could tell that I was basically just talking about colors because I was, I had no idea what else to look at. All, all of it. All of it. It was great. All of it was high horrendous. Quality. High quality is what you mean. That's, that's the race spot TV guarantee right there. Yes, uh, and we will. Uh, we are trying to work on ways to try and visualize some of this stuff as well because, you know, I, I was looking at the dry line that started to emerge as, uh, you know, the rain dissipated, and it was very difficult actually to really try to get the sense for where drivers are wanting to place their cars. Yeah, uh, it's, it's, that's, that's the whole thing about it. We had a couple of angles. Um, 
which obviously we saw at inopportune moments because Dane was uh, the one bringing us the uh, cameras at that point. Um, we had some really good angles of showing, like particularly down at the T1, where you could see how narrow the line was. The thing was is how narrow the line was at some parts of the circuit, how not narrow it was at others. It's all very, I thought it was very interesting. Uh, but that was ages ago now, um, and we could probably do with some more spicy rain. I think Charlie Collins has started fuel saving as well. He's 26 With laps Collins. into the run, run, so he's probably going to be into the box two, oh. three laps at most anyway. So yeah. that's why the attention's turned away from them momentarily. We jump on board with Johnny Vecchio, who has closed the gap to Nicholas Mateo. I mean, Manuel Tranco uh, Troncoso was flying and had the gap up to 16 seconds at one point. Eight seconds, it's been cut in half. Yeah, I mean, this is one that, again, it could be them controlling the gap, which sounds crazy, but um, there could be a little bit of that in it. I think let's see how it looks in in 40 minutes time if uh, if the gap's half the it's 9.2 seconds if it's four seconds in 40 minutes time they're in trouble because if there's a team that you do not want breathing down your neck in the final moments of an i racing special event red line's probably very high on that list how many races has has red line won here across of the years of course they won uh, they are 61 61 well they're back no to idea. back defending uh, winners in gtd so you know they're trying to make it three on the trot there uh 2021 they won the prototype and the gte class as well so that's four total class wins in the last three years then if you add in the pure racing team uh to that another two wins so you know they've just got some history here yeah, probably they, they've won in, uh, would have won one of the races in BMW Sim Cup. I can't remember, I think they might have won the Mon Virtual. I, honestly, that stuff is so far hey. in my memory behind. Uh, they would have won in, in the, because when we had the VCO, um, that would have been ERL. Uh, obviously, we came here, we did the, um, the, the school circuit in the touring cars. Probably oh, yeah. would have won some in that. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, there's a lot of chances where they would have won races around here. Do, do you remember that ERL round at Sebring when we had cars on fire? Was it, uh, it was an Apex Racing Team car. It was well, either Johan Hart or Gal Valero, wasn't it? That was that was when my internet decided that I didn't want to be a part of that broadcast. Oh, okay. Uh, so you that was that broadcast. You don't have a so I don't remember of that. I, I, don't, I don't remember any of it. Right. I don't even remember who won. To be fair, that's not a shot. Mm, fair enough. Uh, Sebring BMW M Sim Cup Sim GT Cup by the way I was just thinking I don't they, they definitely would have won here but my memory of Sebring and BMW competition is yeah. always back to that, that iconic race where Phil Dinez uh, where they didn't win yeah where they didn't win where Phil Dinez and Reina Talva were able to close them down on the final lap and there was contact at the hairpin that left us a little bit unsure as to who would actually be declared the winner after race control had their say was it, who, was, who was in the car? Was it Holtzman? It was Holtzman. Yeah. Of course, uh, no longer with Redline. No, no, no. Disappointed not to see a mouse car out on circuit, by the way. Um, no no mouse entry to the, uh, the Sebring 12-hour. Of course, they did jump into the uh, into the Bathurst 12-hour as Sir Chollins, don't care, in the pit lane. It doesn't look as nice with the yellow light, the yellow ambient light, does it? Which one, sorry? No, card. No, just just any, any car, to be honest. With that, it's particularly coming into pit lane with obviously some of the GT uh, D lights that are all that sort of like sickly yellow. Right. No car looks good in that. It, it is nice though because you, I think you were commenting on an incident slightly earlier and trying to figure out which car it is. White for the prototype, yellow for the GT D yeah, yeah, actually easy. does make it a little bit easier, doesn't it? Oh yeah, it makes it. It's that's more so um, to do with. When you're, when you're driving around, let's say, for example, you're in this car right now, the 001, you look in your mirrors, you can tell the car behind you is a GTD, right? I.e. a car that's at the same speed as you. Whereas when you see a white light, that is a car that's faster than you. That's really the main reason as to why the, the, the lights are differing colours. It's so that you know what's happening, who's lapping you and what the dealio is. Whereas um, yeah, if you didn't have it and they were all just white lights, you'd be looking in your mirrors thinking, I've got no idea what's behind me, what's catching me. Yep. And oh, I've been battled off the road. Cool. So as Sir Trollins, I'm going to say it once Thank just you. for you, leaves pit lane, hour and 16 minutes to go. We saw these cars go as long as 50 plus minutes in that first stint when the rain 
uh, elongated the stint, but that is, like you were saying, going to be a splash and dash for, for them at the very end. And I'm going to assume a splash and dash that's not going to see them take tires. It will be fuel only for them to the end. Yeah, um, I don't know, like I say, it's fascinating moments on, uh, on on strategy, on the build-up towards the end of this race, to the point where, I'm again, I'm glad I'm not on anyone's pit wall, because it's far too complicated. Uh, what are we going to call Josh Rogers, then? Uh, he's got a nickname already, doesn't he? What is it? Is it a bogle? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, but that's apparently his nickname. Surely it's, sh again, surely it's Karen. It's, it's but, Josh K. It's Josh yes, K. Rogers. For people who did, it, it, I was, I was, I was internally struggling not to cackle uh, because for people who don't know, Josh Rogers, middle name, middle initial K. Yeah, we don't know what it is though. Oh, that is great. Oh, that's no amazing. One, no one knows what the K means. Well, I was pretty sure Josh does. I, I hope he um, does. I'm pretty sure I brought it up on one of the ESL. I on one of the um, one of my Thursday streams. His girlfriend wouldn't even tell me. Mm, we're going to have to do some forensic investigation here, aren't we? Uh, I, I, it, it's going to be something really boring, like Kurt. Yeah, that's not a very Australian middle name. Is it Kurt, Australian Kurt, middle name? Yeah, Kurt's, Kurt's like... No, I nearly did the accent then, but I can't do it without swearing. <laughs> it, um, it's very easy to fall into to the exactly. trap with the, with the Aussie accent, isn't it? We are live on broadcast. Yes. Don't do it. Or maybe um, you do it, and that's the way I win another Simi Award. I don't think you're winning it this year. I hope not. Uh, I got I got faith in in one of my boys. I I I, I mean I don't think I again. I, I'm still surprised that we, we, people think that we're good. Uh, we've got so many talented commentators. It was great as well when we had um, Joey Tebbin join you, Lewis, because you got to experience his terrible puns as well. Uh, I've dealt with worse. I've honestly, I've He's dealt, not going to be with, happy with that. He's going to be trying even harder now. I've dealt with much worse. Um, if, like, honestly. Uh, I'm not going to name names. Uh, but there was someone I was commentating with uh, on a Bathurst race on a set of course of competency only once, who I am not joking, every sentence there was a pun. Uh, to the point where it genuinely started to annoy and impress me at the same time. <laughs> Being in Lewis is good and bad books at the same time. It's, it's impressive. That's an impressive normally, feat, yeah. Normally, most people are in my bad books. Yes, and no, they know about it immediately. Your, your good book's pretty thin, isn't it? Yeah. It's not BBB. The no, old, it's not your big book. The old big BS. book. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 that, that is full yes. with other commentators. <laughs> what they've done right and wrong. We're going to start talking about wrestling at some point. I know you're. No, not we're a, not. I know you're not a wrestling fan, but there was a really. You know, there, there are a lot of wrestling fans in the world of sim racing. I don't know what it is. It yeah, was, I don't know why. It's terrible. The wrestling fans. There's golf fans. I know that makes you happy, Lewis. At golf least golf fans does make me happy. There's yeah. cricket fans as well. There's amazing. cricket Very. fans. Makes me happy. There's uh, Manchester United fans. That makes no one happy, except Manchester United fans. Um, don't want to alienate, you know. Are they technically still the biggest club in the world in terms of fan base? Probably less so recently because I think they all hate each other with all the ownership drama they've all been having. Yeah, but now they've got a new owner, don't they? Sort of. Yeah, it's okay. The Jim Ratcliffe. Yes, it's still they're still up against the the mighty pool. Uh, of course, John Henry, who uh, owns uh, iRacing, is also part of the investment group behind the scenes that owns yeah. Liverpool, and. Uh, it's always interesting to see iRacing tweet about the Premier League when, when Liverpool are doing well. Well, um, they might not be tweeting about that too much after the season. Or maybe they find a new manager to replace Jurgen Klopp. Uh, and you know how we talk a lot about doing virtual to real Lewis in, in sim racing? Right. Uh, what I have just figured out is oh, God. Liverpool Football Club. New manager yeah. challenge. Football, well, manager, football manager, no, football manager that? 24. They, they, they'll put an open call out to anybody that can bring Liverpool to win five consecutive Champions Leagues in the next five years. Whoever can do that gets the job. Yeah. Um, no. <laughs> yes. Look, we're all we're all interested as to who's going to take over. Uh, well, I say we all win. And anyone in that likes football is interested. Uh, anyone does like football. Simulator, by no, the way. I don't. I, I, well, I've, I've tried a few times. Every time I'm sort of like, I just don't enjoy these kind of games. Fair enough. 
Uh, I, I do enjoy a good football manager game, although Fast it has, has been a while because the problem is you, you get sucked into it. You get sucked into the spreadsheets. And oh, I don't. You don't? No. I like... Okay. I like... I, I like that it keeps all of the stats and stuff, right? Which is, one, which is the main thing that really irritates me about things like FIFA, right? Is that if you play a season, then you play the next season or whatever, go and find out what you did last season. In Football yeah, Manager? Can't. Yeah, in Football Manager, it's all there. That's, oh, that's, that's yes, great. Yes, okay, I see, yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, in FIFA, it's not. Uh, you just lose all of it immediately. It's, it's like, not brilliant. FIFA anymore, mate. EAFC. Oh, I don't care. Um... So I like that side of things, and at the same time, just kind of like I don't know. I just, I just don't really care about this. What we will have to do at some point, we've threatened this in the in, in the past, but we do need to do a sim racing EAFC competition where we God, get no. each of the sim racing teams to go out and do. You say, oh no, but Lewis, I don't know if you know this, but like the likes of Team Redline, they will actually go and play where they get you know six or seven people going and controlling just one player and playing together. Uh, and our good friend Luke Crane has been apparently dubbed Luke Craneinio. Nice. Which rolls off the tongue. That really does roll off the tongue. Um, nice. Uh, no, I mean, I mean, look. The reason why I don't like playing games like that against good. people is because I'm. Uh, it's not that I'm not good. It's that I'm terrible. Okay, don't worry. But Lewis, you play. I'm really bad. You'll play but, AFC with me. I'll play VR golf with you. It's You'll fine. suck in one. I'll suck in the other. Bob's your own. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a top 1,000 player in uh, in golf, in virtual golf. Don't worry about it. Lewis, Lewis is, is, is making Don't the worry rounds about it. In, in virtual Don't. golf right now. Don't worry about it. Good fun. What we, again, this must be so boring to watch, though. Uh, yes, uh, this broadcast as well must be pretty boring to watch at this point, given all the different... It's two people, it's two people waffling about... Cars driving around the circuit because literally nothing's happening. And when we say literally nothing is happening, I pr oh, something happened. Whoa, there. he had a moment. <laughs> something happened there for a moment, but we don't even want to get too excited about Johnny Vecchio half losing the car out through Sunset Bend. But it's that phase of a of a 12-hour race where you've got 34 out of 50 still out there and running, and all just trying to to make it to, to the end of of the race. So. We saw the attrition come at the s with the rain. Attrition hasn't really been because of crazy traffic incidents, Lewis, or even silly mistakes, really, outside of the changeable conditions. It's crazy to think how many strong names have been taken out through, I, I was going to say no fault of their own, except, you know, they could have not crashed. Sorry, I, 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 honestly, I'm not going to lie. Okay, prepare this for some information. I was not listening to a single thing That's you fine. just said. Because it was a very I was, thing. I was, I'm so sorry. I was reading. <laughs> I feel so bad for saying it. I just got, uh, I just got a message from Williams. Okay. Okay, um, well, here we go. Uh, they said it was brown. Uh, what I do was you mean? Right. <laughs> That's not what they said. Um, they have, s well, I, I've sent, by by Javier, the logo of, of Chill Blast. And I've also been sent by all people, Seb Hawkins, who has um, checked the colour and has found the name uh, with a 97.9% .9 match of the Chill Blast, the grey. Okay. Right? What colour do you think it, it's 97.9% it's .9 matches? The one that's actually on the car? Yep, apparently. Grey. It's dark mint green. What? That's what it says. So, you know, if, if, if the whole brown orange thing, if it's orange and what that's what the, the world says, then clearly it's dark mint green. Because that's what computers tell me. Wow. I'm fuming. Wow. It's it's great. Wow. All I will say, by the way, is during Daytona, I had Stephen English Lewis message me to tell me that it was orange and not brown because our okay. conversation managed... We got onto that conversation in literally the first 15 minutes of the race. Uh, yeah, and, and we're still talking about it a month and a bit later. And we're never going to stop talking about it at this point, even though they've changed their livery. Maybe in in a way to try and get us to stop talking about it, but in the Streisand effect, you know, you try and divert our attention away, we're just going to become That's even so more intense about it. Also, the picture that you sent, right? I'll the top... The, yeah, the, the actual, the, 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 the TGA car. The Williams Esports play seat car, yes. Yeah, right. So the top right of that is definitely orange. Where they, which I don't know which part of that was. Was that from the wing? 
Well, it's just Williams Esports. You know what yeah. that is? You remember, you weren't around. I think it was with Joey uh, a couple of hours ago. I was talking about how many of the t teams had uh, pit boards where in the oh. pit lane they've actually got them painted and with their right. logos. I think that's what is very orange. That makes sense. That is very orange, right? The rest of it, not really. Not really. Um, no, it's a little orange. To be, for, to be fair, it's more like... It's, to be fair, it's, it's, it's kind of yellow in that. Uh, again, this is the whole thing of though, is that when uh, a, a livery in, uh, in a, when you're in Photoshop does not look the same as the livery in the game when it comes to colours. So you need to um, go through and find out what colours actually work and then apply them to your livery by taking the hex codes and, and learning from them rather than just slapping it all together and hoping it looks good. And then trying to change the colours afterwards, don't try and do yes. that because you're going to be there all day. Ron Sanchez does confirm that it is dark mint apparently, so... I don't care. Being educated, being... We're learning here on the fly with 64 minutes to go. I did say there's a bit of green in there, to be fair. You did, you did. You gave them a little bit of leeway, but... 64 minutes left to go. We'll give you a rundown at the top of the hour as to how things stand, but at least right now, margins at the front of each of the classes. We're talking 60 seconds between two Williams Esports cars at the front of the GTP class, and we're talking a full lap at the front of the LMP2 class. In fact, there is the leader coming out of Tower Corner. Where is the second place car heading off to the hairpin? It's almost a lap and a half lead at this point now. Yeah, I think Carl Jans is going to be into the end of the race. So I was having a little chat with him earlier on. Um, we were actually talking about food. Um, Swedish of all sausage, things. yes. Swedish sausage, absolutely. Uh, and uh, after all that, we were discussing apparently a certain member within the uh, Williams Esports camp. And he didn't, he couldn't remember which one it was. He gave two suggestions as to who it might be, I don't know if I should say, okay. just in case. Um, because if, if I'm perfectly honest, I think what he said was a crime. Uh-oh. Pineapple uh, or pizza? No. Which, again, we'll come crime. back to that topic in a second. No, it's not. It's just people... Most people who, who say pineapple on pizza is terrible have just never tried it. They're just thinking they're one of the cool kids because it's... Uh, try it. But, obviously, you're not going to. It's fine, whatever. Oh, I've tried uh, it. Well, yeah, most people haven't. Um, it's the same as, like, like uh, a, a gammon steak. Uh, typically, that's served with pineapple on it. Right. Right? Uh, because it works, because the salty and the, the sweet, blah, 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 blah. Same thing on a Hawaiian pizza. It's just whatever. It's just a, a method of it. No, the, the point was, is someone in Williams Esports apparently has a pizza uh, or, or only likes pizza with, with no tomato sauce. What? That's, that's bread and cheese, mate. That is a cheese, that is a glorified cheese sandwich. What are you doing? <laughs> So, so we're not even talking about a pizza where they, where, they, where they do like an alternate sauce, like a white pizza? No, bread, cheese, <laughs> done. What is that? That's not a, that's not a pizza. No, it's not it's, a pizza. It's, it's a cheese sandwich. Uh, it's an open-faced cheese sandwich. You know um, how I said forensic investigation is going to need to start? I mean, I, I think we need to find out what crime against pizza is going on inside of Williams Esports to yeah, make know, sure right? that we root out the riffraff. And again, how Jamie Fluke eats his pizza is almost a little questionable. How does he eat his pizza? He gets a slice of pizza, gets another slice of pizza. Oh, no, he doesn't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He eats it like a sandwich. Again, it's, it's more sandwich talk, weirdly enough. No, he does. It genuinely, in Saudi Arabia, it, it, like, I walked past, because they were eating in the, obviously, you know, the cafeteria, so obviously where our little green room was, where, right. was really, where there, was little ca there was a little cafeteria, and all of the Apex boys were sat there, as, uh, by the way, the, uh, the Williams Esports Chill Blast car has come into the pit lane now, so Carl Janssen uh, brings it down. Um, yeah, they were all, they, they'd, they'd all grabbed themselves uh, a piece of, I think, pretty sure it was Domino's, there was Domino's nearby. Um, was, and they were all right. sat down, eating it, I walked past, I genuinely had to stop and turn around and be like, what have I just seen? Um, and he, yeah, he was eating two pieces of pizza in one go, uh, one on top of the other. I distinctly remember walking past them eating pizza. I'm glad I didn't see that because Jamie Fluke is one of the nicest people in all of sim racing. Love the guy. Uh, but that has just made him public enemy number one, uh, at least I in can't, my I can't humble get opinion. It, but I no, can't, no. I kind of get The thing is, is, is surely if you're going to do that, the toppings get lost a little bit because you've got a lot of bread in there, a lot of dough. Yes. 
Do you think it gets lost a little bit? Oh, also, Janssen's not finishing the race because he's passed over to uh, Gilbranson. Never mind. Oh, interesting. 60 minutes to go. They think it's worth changing back over. I mean, at the end of, end of the day, they lead by a lap and a half. They could pull over to the side of the track for 60 seconds, wait, and, and still go and be a, 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 a considerable margin out front. So there 60 seconds spot. less ahead. Exactly. <laughs> I, I didn't cool. want to be as obvious as you, Lewis, <laughs> uh, but we could focus on still fight for second. Now that Grid and Go have come out of pit lane, this is their outlap just to keep you guys uh, informed. Jonas Wanner is still in second, but what was once a five second lead, last hour or so, has been slowly been chipped away, and the pit stop cycle has seen them close back up. Trying to work out what the uh, the cutoff will be for Williams Esports Chill Blast um, for them to pit as well, and it be their last stop. Uh, I believe. I reckon they, they might be able to do it for 50 minutes. Uh, bearing in mind what they are currently doing on on, on, on terms of uh, lap times and and stint distance. I, re I reckon like 50, 52 minutes maybe. Uh, what one? Three, five, eight. That graphic is having to work hard right now as well. My brain is having to work hard right now. Oh, my God. Uh, they're not going to be pitting for... Oh, no, they can do it on one more stop. Can they? I think so. Because yep. they'll be pitting in, what, six laps time? I think so. Uh, six laps time's going to be 50 minutes left to go. They're already extending the stint anyway. They're doing 28 lap stints. Yeah, they can get to the end on one more stop. Now you can see how they've been offset as well. The... Number six and the number eight. It's, not, it's, a, it's a handy graphic. We'll get that working a little bit more useful in terms of giving us the information <laughs> on tire compounds and stuff as we uh, work through the rest of our special events. The first time, Lewis, we've actually been able to analyze their stints. Very helpful. Um, Dane couldn't get that graphic to work, though, could he? Did he not? he not? Well, he, he, didn't, he didn't pull it up once. Uh, clearly. Um, in four hours. Clearly, I am... No VCO Simi Award nomination for him for Best Producer. He did, though, show us a replay of absolutely nothing. Okay. And gave us a close-up of the safety car at one point accidentally. I did hear you get very excited about a safety car. I wasn't sure That's where that true. came from. He just he, we, At one point, we just looked at the safety car. Not 100% really? sure as to why, but we did. Might, might just have been like a, one of those glitches where someone was, you know, blinking out and there was a just static camera that happened to be where that no. safe. No, it was just, you know. No, he was no. definitely looking at the safety car. No, because well, he was, he was, uh, he, someone was leaving pit lane and I think he wanted to move to the car ahead or something like that and oh. then just focused on the safety car. And I was like, well, hello, it's a safety car. Great. Thank you. Um, and then we started looking out to see if people had ponchos or um, umbrellas or anything when it rains. Joey did mention uh, they don't. The, the poncho discussion. Did you know, by the way, uh, we've known that the iRacing safety car driver has got a name for quite a while. Did you know that iRacing has named him as well? No. Yes, but we're not going to listen to what their name is because what it's not Benny. It doesn't matter. It's not Benny. But what have they named it? I think it's Fred. That's terrible. Yeah, it's not Benny, is it? That's yeah, that's, that's unacceptable. Benny's, Benny's got, got a Twitter, Twitter account. account. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's got a the Twitter tw account. He's been voted driver of the day in a series as well. Yeah, that's unacceptable. Oh, like in, I racing, mate. Endurance yeah. racing commentary. Uh, we're, not, we're not totally oh. unhinged, but we're, we're getting there. Do you hear my suggestion for the iRacing April Fool's Day video? No, what is it? Come on. Get well, they need to, they, they, I, I even set the scene and everything. I said that what they need to do is they need to have like a, like, imagine it, plays dramatic music, the clouds roll in, and then it's just loads of people opening umbrellas and stuff because we're going to have an update which is going to introduce umbrellas for the, um, for the fans because they all got very wet earlier. We did the, like, the, no, no one had an umbrella. Are you joking me? It was raining so hard. I, I, I love how, you know, Lewis is, we've got this brand new weather that we're all trying to figure out. And Lewis is like, you know what the biggest problem I've got now? Spectators don't have umbrellas to protect them. Yeah, but they don't. That, that is where the attention to detail comes in. Now we've got pit stops underway for what should be uh, final pit stops for GTD, especially with 56 minutes left to go. Nicholas Mateo up on the Jackson waiting to go. Gianni Vecchio sitting in currently waiting as well just to drop and get the final amount of fuel on the car let's keep an eye on the margin between these two as they roll off and away Lewis because what was what was it you were looking for about a four second gap 40 minutes left to go all right 
Yeah, um, I mean, because it, it was nine seconds. Um, so if it's around the four second margin, then yes, um, we will be all good to go. There goes the Drago Racing Team car. More than four seconds. Little that is cut. Uh, the, this, yeah, the, it's probably not far off the nine that it was. A little bit more. We'll get the update as they leave pit lane and uh, get back up to speed. Can also tell you that Ray Natalba brings the Marla Racing Lamborghini to the box. So, uh, followed by virtual coach by GNG, Cody D takes over from Nicholas Rubelar in uh, that car. I think it's actually going to end up being around seven seconds, but you know, seven still closer to nine than it is to four. <laughs> It's it's not it's not looking great for the idea of the 70 being victorious this uh, this evening. Um, but it does lean towards very heavily uh, the Drago Racing team. Uh, again, as much as I say, like you know, realistically, like considering the day that Redline have had, it kind of would be right. I mean, let's be honest, Drago Racing just not put it wrong. You can't you can't fault them. Not that car. Unfortunately, the other cars have had the the issues. One because yeah. they, of course, entered with a three-horse stable into the GTD class. And this is a team that we've seen be fast in prototypes, in, in downforce cars as well, you know. Uh, but we haven't necessarily seen them be able to put it together in the GTDs in the same way. I feel like this is the first time when it's all come together. And uh, Nicholas Mateo going to take that car to the end alongside Manuel Troncoso. It's always hard to make the judgment as to which of the team cars is the strongest one but i'll just be completely honest in saying i'm not sure this was the car i would have thought would have been their forerunner i think that the, the more logical call would have been to say that you'd have thought that aaron vasquez and ricardo rico who currently sit in sixth would have been the ones pushing the pace up front oh yeah absolutely i mean we know how fast aaron vasquez and ricardo rico are um, aaron vasquez though wasn't in um top split of Daytona though so that's what that's what it was because he he was the Drago driver that had a lot of I rating and the others didn't and they didn't make top split right yeah unfortunate uh, a very unfortunate um pick better teammates I understand why they did it it's because they they were hoping that what well, see Daytona there was the, the the split cut off a lot of the GTDs so that we only got like what 12 yeah there weren't many yeah, and, and they were, for one, expecting more GTDs, but fair enough, it's a good assumption. Uh, and also, by having your higher I-rated driver with a couple of lower ones, you're kind of spreading the I-rating out across them so that you're more likely to get two into top split, or three into top split, right. I think it's two in the, in, the, uh, in the GTDs or whatever it was. Um, and I think they were, like, as far as I remember, when, like, like looking at their entry into the uh, second split, I think they were out by, like, two cars. Um, which is not a shock. But it's fine margin in terms of I rating nowadays, that's for sure. Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's I mean, again, when, when there were a couple of cars um, at Daytona where their average I rating, well, there was, there was, especially in the GTD category, there was a lot, um, where your average I rating across the, the drivers in the car was over 10K, I think the strength of field was 9.8. <laughs> Right? At that point, you can't afford to have the, oh, let's stick our 11 point whatever K drive with a couple of nines and hopefully, you know, we'll, and we'll, we'll be in top split. Because you right. won't be. No. Yeah. Cody D. 9.5 wasn't enough, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, it's just insanity to even hear those sort of numbers and it's not enough for top split. Cody D, the small mistake, he ran wide out of turn two, three, four, five, six on the exit and doesn't lose too much time to Parker White. Parker White. That car started on pole position. They've been through their share of woes, you know, the disconnection that they had earlier as well. They still find themselves within a minute of your race lead. It goes to show as much as we're saying Drago Racing haven't put a foot wrong. I think it's very easy to say that Williams Esports could have made it three for three. Although having said that, why has Kenneth Goulbranson brought this car down pit lane? This is a drive through penalty, isn't it? What's the penalty? What would it be for? For speeding a pit lane? No, no, no. 50 incident oh. points, I think. Oh, right. Yeah, that well, makes sense. I think. Um, Let's message Carl and find out. Uh, are, are you going to message him or do you want me to message him? Let's He's, both message him. At the same time. Poor guy. He's going to get spammed. Uh, you, um, you say spammed. I say uh, that. welcome to the life of a commentator. 
I've had multiple people, people ask me if there's going to be a replay provided of this race afterwards so they can go and see what oh happens in God. qualifying. Now, that was nervous, and that was two Williams Esports cars that almost came together. Two Williams Esports two cars in the lead. Two Chill Blast uh, cars as well, with their dark mint green. Thank you. Um, Sorry, I'm in, I'm in shock right now because Carl's just responded that there may actually be something going on. They apparently had a 55-second hold. Oh, right. And they've just come in for a drive through I think they have to come back in to serve the 55-second hold. Oh, right. I said, oi, mate, what happened? He didn't respond. Because he's too busy, unfortunately, I think, trying to fill me in. And yeah, also, he was, yeah, he responded to you. He's also trying to figure out what's actually happening now. So if this is a 55-second hold, Lewis, add the time in pit lane, they're losing 90-odd seconds. There are going to be cars back on the lead lap for sure. Oh, yeah, back on the lead lap, and they'll still be leading it. It's hilarious. That's how, <laughs> that's how much they've been in the, the lead of this race. Because they built up that gap and didn't get complacent with it, isn't it? Yeah, but they've uh, legitimately given up almost two minutes from this then, haven't they? Yeah, which is really weird. Don't really know what's happened here. Let's see if it's going to come into pit lane. Uh, it is indeed going to come back into pit lane for this hold. So we're not 100% sure as to what's happened. You can see the stress. Really, really important to just remain calm. There is Carl Janssen messaging you and not me. Uh, it's okay. So... Let's just watch it here because genuinely, 55 seconds may be the time it, it, it gives you if you're taking service. If you're not doing anything, you're just here to serve the penalty. Maybe it's actually a slightly shorter amount of time on pit lane, but already door, grid and go, back on the leading lap. Still 90 seconds though, off the pace. Atik Kalpanen has brought in the race leading machine though, and I think that will be the final stop of the day. Yeah, very stressful uh, moments here for Williams Esports. There's probably going to be plenty more, much less than 55 seconds. It was just 30 there. So like I said, I think once they've turned off um, the various bits in the pit stop, they are now rolling. Hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is set and sorted. But the one lap lead now shifts down to only God forbid, 60 seconds. You say only, Lewis. But we've, got, cut down. we've got 48 minutes to go. One more disconnect. We have had some teams that have had repeated issues with disconnections as well. Lily Williams Esports. <laughs> never say never. Uh, you, you, you want the margin. Are we going to see a swap for the lead? Kalpin and off and away from pit lane, releases himself from the speed limiter. Ch uh, Charlie Collins is there, but Sir Charles still two seconds back and still owes us a pit stop as well. Williams have got them covered off. Yeah, the, the Williams Esports chill blast car. At an absolute worst, they will have a splash. An absolute worst. Uh, realistically speaking, they've got enough fuel to go and reach the checker flag. Um, they should be able to save. Uh, nice grey box that appears in your bottom right. Nothing's happening. No rain. rain. No rain. And the chance that it will actually even start 15 minutes after the race end, Lewis, continues to go down as well. Yeah. Um, speaking of things towards the end of the race, by the way, I did get told that there might be a little bit of... I, I, I don't know. I think it's fine. Uh, there might be a little bit of drum in the GTD category. Um, Team Redline apparently took one lap less of fuel Ooh. than Drago and Marla. Um, I, I don't think I'm in. I think it's fine. 40.4 seconds stationary for Vecchio. What's the time compare for Nicholas Wittek? So that is a, a 1.2 second delta. Yeah, I don't know what the fuel rate is. The fuel rate is probably it's probably something like two or three liters a second, which is probably not far off a lap. You know, the Second only thing that's concerning is that because they're GTDs, they've got no certainty as to how many laps they're going to go. Uh, they that's are true. The, the behest of Ate Kalpen as to how many times that he is going to put a lap on them to, to figure out exactly how many laps they needed to put into the car and see if the gamble pays off. Gap down to six seconds, though, not at the four that we're waiting to see it come down to, but it is starting to close. There's second place, Charles Collins, still only 1.6 now, back from Ate Kalpinen. Now, most of the time, I'll tell you a second and a half on your fuel stop. You just take it the safe option, just take the extra second and a half from the bar. But I will say, Gianni Vecchio and the Team Redline squad, they're, 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 they're closing down on Nicholas Mateo. Um, but it's at such a slow pace, they may only get one chance to pass. If you take a second and a half out of your 
stop to try and close in. Well, that's the second and a half you no longer have to catch, meaning that you might get more than one chance. That's not great, though. I, I, I don't think they're going to get a chance. No, no yeah, it, it, you can see that the last couple of laps, Vecchio, as much as he's trying, managing the fuel situation as well, over the last three, he's actually bled a couple of tenths of a second, and the give and take that is... Whoa! Give and take that is Motorsport. Now, he's flashing the lights a lot. He also ran very close up to the wall. Don't know why he's flashing, to be honest. There's no boredom. one in front of him. You're bored him? I don't know. Does he have his uh, push to pass map? Yeah. The same well, it's, it's going off yeah, again, so. It, exactly. Maybe he's trying to communicate with the team and is, uh, is, is, is pressing the button constantly. I don't know. It was, it's happened before. Yeah. Let's see if it starts to fire again as he exits out of turn two, three, four, five, six. Yep, yeah, there you yeah, go. There he goes. So it's not frustration. It's probably just uh, him communicating on the radio or something with his teammates do have some cars that are now getting closer and closer together though so let's hopefully build to some excitement in these final 45 minutes with the grid and go.com lmp2 car only around 1.3 off the back of door fight for second in the prototype category and fight for fourth in the gtd category this is the one that we've been keeping an eye on for the last couple of hours yeah exactly i say a couple of little battles kind of like lingering out on circuit this one's been separated by more than half a second but less than a second for a very long time um chance of a move in the in the last part of the race i i i'd say chance of at least an option fairly high because he's rocked with you they're right there the williams esports banking car we know they're very fast we've seen it earlier on in the race but uh, it's just not I, I i don't know I'm, I'm trying to work out if they're not getting within half a second and getting right to the rear end is out of um, skill and pace, right. or if it's out of strategy, and I can't work out which. I don't. These I just I don't understand why it would be out of strategy. So Williams Esports Ben Q are two laps longer into their stint than anyone else around them. They pitted seven laps or so ago, which I think if you work backwards, mean they basically came in right at the top of the hour. I heard a breathe of the throttle into the hairpin from Parker White. Another slight breathe there, but hard to tell because maybe you just want to shift the momentum of that Audi on the entry into tower corner. Might be just a little bit of fuel mileage at play here. Listen to the car into Le Mans. Yeah, that's fuel saving. No, Listen there. I don't know. I don't think they are fuel saving as much as you... As a small <laughs> amount, but it's there. It is, it is small, but this is where, like, if you were close... This is one of those ones, right? If you're close to the car ahead, you can save more fuel because you're getting more slipstream. And this is the thing is why they're holding it around that sort of... Why, why they were holding it rather around that sort of, like, second. And they're not lifting that early going into sunset. No, that wasn't early at all. You're correct. Car well, I, think, I, think, I don't think there is fuel saving. I think it's just where the balance is. Very right. weird. Have to keep it. We, you also correctly have highlighted we haven't seen much passing in the GTDs. It's, it's yeah. not easy to get alongside, let alone to actually make the move happen. And maybe that's something that these drivers are really struggling with back over to GTPs because Charlie Collins has brought it down to under a second to your race leader. Thankfully, we uh, might actually see a change for the race lead, even though it might be completely pointless. Um, well, I, I say completely pointless, that's not fair. Um, moderately pointless when it comes to the race victory. Could be important for VRS Coanda and at least grabbing second place from this race because Williams Esports Ben Q car, 55 seconds behind. They'll want to get past the Chill Blast car uh, and, and, and pull as much of a gap. To be fair, Williams will want a 1 2 here. Uh, they feel that, I guarantee Williams will feel that they were absolutely robbed a 1 2 at Daytona because they did have a disconnection late. Right. You know how Urano was dominant force in many ways I think in GTP yep. last year have Williams taken that mantle over from them me and Cam had a conversation about this earlier on about we had we had the same conversation we had at Daytona of like who's the best team in team racing da -da 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 -da. we all reckon it's Redline blah, 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 blah. who's the second best team and we came to the point that it probably is Williams uh, yes yeah, Williams no yeah. doubt yeah no doubt just look at how they are in the special events. Look at how they've been across the world of sim racing and ACC. You know, compare their results over the last three years on, on RF2 and things like that. And I know they've lost like Nikita Vyshnevsky and Kyu Brzezinski. Uh, compare how they've been on, in, in ESLR1 and Rensport. 
like, yeah, they are almost certainly the second team to Team Redland. At, at, at plenty of points. I think they do have the capability of beating Redline on their day, and we've seen that before. Yep. Today is one of them. Uh, Daytona, one of them. Um, and on you know, various other events, we've seen it. Um, I think they're, they're absolutely uh, one of the top two teams. I'm trying to think who else really can make the case across of the Sims, you know, and all of that, and I think you're probably right. It's only maybe the VRS Kawandas and the Apex Racing teams that you can really include in that in that mix. It, it is interesting, actually. You know, we're talking about big sim racing teams that we didn't get to see the Mercedes AMG Patronus esports team uh, here today. They were going to have James Baldwin paired up with Bono House and then a, a third guest driver as well. But apparently, not enough I rating for them to make it up to top split. It's crazy. Oh, it's absolutely. Oh, sorry. Insane. No, I shouldn't love that. Uh, no, it, yeah. I mean, to be fair, it's not a shock. Um, I can't remember what the average is of their car. I think it was like a 9k, 8, 9K something. Mm, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be that high. I think it's lower? Yeah, I think it's, I think it's a higher 7k. Okay. Because I think, it, like, isn't, isn't Bold, Baldwin's around 7k? I thought it was high, to be honest. I really yeah, did. I don't think he is. I don't think he's... I don't think he's, I don't think he's it, I'd be shocked if he was much above if he was. Um, he's certainly not in like the 9k kind of category. I don't know what Bono is and stuff these days. Bono's probably not bad. I know Bono likes to pop into some random indie car oval races and stuff on iRacing. Very easy to find out. Yeah, oh, you could just go and search it. That is not a bad point. Um, uh, and go and, and, and take a look at the iRacing. Let's, let's stalk some people, shall we? Yeah, the um, iRacing stat book will tell you all. Bono House. Oh, go have a guess. But, uh, we'll go, 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 because it's slightly different. Obviously, it's more relevant than this. Go Sports Car Rep, because even though it's, right. he's not on many races, but they are slightly different. Let's go 5,078 and 3 I rating. For Bonner House? For Bonner House. 8,377. Oh, I was way think it was that low? I've no idea. Why do you think he's done... He's done Look at the iRacing uh, Grand Prix World Champions. You said it would be a high of 7K, so I just assumed that Bono had lost a bunch of iRacing. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's James Baldwin that's that's dragging the team down. Could you throw me under the bus? Yeah, but now I have to find out which James Baldwin's which. Because there's nine of them. And two is missing. <laughs> Why? Uh, and seven's missing. So, th so what those accounts probably did is they added like a middle name, and so they're now no longer with the number. Um, yeah, so we're, we're never going to find James Baldwin. Rest uh, in peace. You may never find James Baldwin. I think we might be able to go and dig it up afterwards, but that is a topic for uh, 40, after 40 minutes from now. Actually, no. See, I know, I know exactly where I can find it because I was talking to uh, Henry Moore, who was in the same race, because I joked about how Henry got beaten by... Uh, James Baldwin, right. and it showed the I rating. So give me one moment. There you go. You'll go off and you'll do your investigation. We're still watching virtual coach uh, by Grid and Go. Cody Deeth holding off for the Williams Esports Ben Q car. By the way, Cody Deeth, former Williams driver, so I'm sure uh, he's wanting to hold off his former teammates here today. Back up front, it's within half a second. And Sir Charles is going to owe us a pit stop in roll, uh, probably around six laps time or so. And this is where I was kind of speculating. A full service trip down pit lane is going to cost them going on s over a full minute. That's going to drop them behind the Williams Esports BenQ car in the fight for second on the podium. Do you think that right now, Lewis, they may just save a bit more fuel, try and extend this stint a bit more, and then do a pit stop where they don't come in and change tires? No. What's no? the point? What's the point? You're not going to save that much time in doing so. You might as well just push to the end of the race. I'm pretty sure they can cut the stop in half or something. In, in half? I don't know. I mean, their, their normal stint's been 45 minutes. I don't know how long they'll be going for. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe you'll be able to save enough fuel, but the, the thing is, because of how the fuel and tyres work, you know, stationary time and stop, blah, 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 you're only realistically going to shave maybe five seconds off of that, which you would probably gain back from fresh tyres anyway. Uh, I, yes, uh, uh, much like you earlier, Lewis, you said something that I'm probably uh, was very intelligent. Um, and you just didn't listen, that's fine. No, because uh, I'm trying to send a message no, to Josh Rogers it's asking how long they expect the pit stop to be. What his middle name is. Oh, and thank you for reminding me of that. I'll also ask him that right now. No worries. James R. Baldwin, by the way. Um, 
So that's another middle name we don't know. Uh, the I rating is um, 6,000. Told you it was going to be low. It, low, it, low comparatively. Comparatively. 6,727, yes. um, at least at, uh, at the, uh, the point of that race result. So definitely not high enough for top split. No. Definitely, definitely not high enough for top split. Obviously, quality driver, fair enough. Uh, and we know, like, James realistically is the, is the pace of the driver that I'd love to see in top split. But, um, he, he, yeah. He brings experience. I think that's what we want to see as well, right? As the, the Mercedes AMG Patronus team gets more and more into iRacing, those drivers spend more time. We want to see where they stack up to uh, iRacing's finest because we know they're at the top of sim racing across the board. There's the look on board, though, with Charlie Collins. You can see Alton Kalpin and those rain lights still blinking. There are still some puddles around the track, but no moisture for us to worry about with the 34 minutes to go. It's a fight for the lead, but a fight only momentarily. We'll pretend to get excited. Uh, Kawanda can clip this, and when maybe Collins goes for the lead, Lewis, we can get all excited. They can post them on social media, and we'll just pretend that they don't have to, to come down to pit lane still one more time. Can you get excited about this, considering how they just pulled to one side and lifted off? Um... Pass for the lead. It's Kawanda on top. There you go, Lewis. You can always get excited. I can't. No, I can't get excited about a move which doesn't really matter. No, sorry. It doesn't matter at all, does it? I'm so sorry. We're just we're not we're not Debbie Downers. We're being realistic with you, um, and realistically speaking, whilst it's great to see VRS Commander uh, doing strong again, whilst it's great to see them uh, on on great pace, great form, they're finishing second in this race. Williams have been way too strong. Are you uh, actually going to say that Will, the the Commander number eight car finishes in front of the number one? Okay, they're going to finish at best second. Yes. It's already pulled two oh. seconds out on Ante Calvin, by the way. Yeah, I mean, that's because that's the gap. Of all of the gaps between them, that's the gap that matters the least. Um, it's more about the gap between Collins and Farrow. That's the gap that really matters now. Um, we, and I say we have to wait until the, uh, the pit stop and see what the whole dealio is. Uh, Josh is uh, typing Karen. something out, so we're going to figure out what the pit stop strategy is going to be for them. 57 seconds to Matt Farrow. That, like you mentioned, is the gap to keep the eye on. At least three laps or so before they're into the box. Back over with virtual coach and the Williams Esports Ben Q car. Still waiting to see if, if Parker White's going to get any closer than a couple of car lengths uh, to the back of that yellow and blue machine. Really hasn't ever given us the side-by-side the -side that we've been waiting for, the, the promise that we've been sitting here and waiting for. It's bad that I can't think of any other name that begins with K other than Kurt or Karen. Kyle. Oh, see? See what I mean? Genuinely never crossed my mind. I, I know a bunch Josh, of Indian Kyle names, Rogers. but, you know, they're not going to fit Josh. You know, that's the problem. Josh Karthik the, Rogers. That's not Josh, see, this is the thing is that jo Josh Kurt Rogers kind of rolls off a little bit. Uh, it feels he's the most told likely. me what his middle name is. What is it? Uh, do you want to guess? Because you, you haven't got it yet. Well, no, I was going to say Kurt. So no. no, Kenneth. Oh, that's <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, bless him. That's so so much more middle of the road than I was expecting. It's not a bad middle name, actually. It's, it's absolutely fine. It's not the worst middle name no, I've ever it, heard. It, that's it, Oscar Hardwick. What's his middle name? Oh, Rigsby. Really. Yeah, it's hilarious. His parents thought that was a... <laughs> Though he, again, this is why I've always said, uh, the fake name oh, that I always guy. go for in sim racing is always Rigsby Hufflepuff because it's two digs at Oscar Hardwick. <laughs> one of them is Rigsby because it's his middle name. And I think, it's, I think it's, Honestly, I think it's one of the funniest things I've ever been told. Uh, and the second is um, he hates, absolutely hates Harry Potter. But everyone always says to him, like, if you were in any house in Harry Potter, you'd be in Hufflepuff. So I was like, bang, slap those two together. That is my fake name. I am um, absolutely dying right now. Uh, poor guy. Poor guy. I mean, I like how we throw him under the bus with stories about 24-hour races. And, oh, know, it's true. I've got so many. Yeah, yeah indeed. You, you know the one that I'm thinking oh, about Oh, yeah, in absolutely. But, yeah. Uh, wow, poor Oscar. Poor Oscar. Um, Josh has also said that they do expect to be behind the Williams Esports Ben Q car. So, recognition that when they come in... They're going to have to push in order to fight their way back forward. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it's, 
Look, they've gone. They've gone for um, a, a moderately uh, aggressive strategy, I guess. Uh, but then, it was the whole position they were put into with, um, yeah, with, with with the wet weather and going onto the slicks too early and experimenting with that. There is the Chollins. Um, he just. It, do you know what? This is, this, is, this is the interesting bit of information of the day. Are you ready? Go for it. Charlie Collins looks far calmer behind the wheel than Josh Rogers. Especially that is over in the, the rain, entire of the day. Right? Yes, I agree. Oh, I, 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 I'm pretty sure I've never seen Josh look this stressed before. Never. Meanwhile, Ch Charlie looks bored. Yeah. It's almost like he could go and grab a burger and, and wolf a bite down on it and uh, put it back in the bag. But no, that would be his uh, younger brother, Bryn. He did actually do that, sorry, by the yeah, way. No, no, sorry, my alarm started going off. I think it was, like, it was, get, it was, it was me getting ready for a Formula 3 race through <laughs> yesterday. Um, I, I, look, I've honestly, from Zach Campbell, as I'm sure you have been told as well, the exact same stories, I've been told many a stories, story about the, uh, about the younger Collins. Um, most of them I find very interesting I'm, and bizarre. I'm just getting old is what I'm clear. Whenever I hear a, a story about Bryn, I just, yeah. I just realize I'm going to be 30 this year. Only 30? Only 30. How old are yeah, you, Yeah, because you, you, you come across as someone much older. How old are you? Come on. 18. Uh, Charlie Collins enters pit lane. I'm 18. Uh, Charlie Collins enters pit lane uh, as we'll move swiftly off the top of the rage. I'm trying not to think about the fact that some of these drivers that we commentate on um, still can't drive a car in the real world, but are faster than us in the sim. As he's got Ben Q out of Tower Corner, that was past the Apex Racing Academy car of Lorenzo Benfagoni, who are running in the eighth position just got to now navigate through onto the almond straight and then really fire it out of sunset bend and then we'll get the sense of the gap collins has been that station stationary already excuse me for 20 seconds and doesn't have long to go before he can release himself off the limiter yeah and then uh, we'll see exactly where they're going to be comparatively with the uh, williams esports benq cart which is coming down oh there we go in second place 31 seconds so they did a they were able to chop out half the time off and so now what's it seven six seconds something like that the margin between the two give me a bit of hold it um 28 minutes left to go they've had the pace we'll see wait and see how they're uh, how they're vibing how things are going to be but it could be a close fight here for uh, seconds what's well, five seconds basically and they did go up on the jacks by the way lewis so you are 100 percent correct there was no point in them risking it and, and not doing it I've been, honestly, I've been right so many times today. It's 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 um. It's worrying, right? Because now you're going to have a broadcast coming up where you're wrong about absolutely everything. That's so true. <laughs> what broadcast am I on next? What are you on next? What's the schedule? For Lewis? I think I think it's probably Porsche Sports Calendar, isn't it? Oh yes, we've got another round of that coming up. This and then Thursday. And then at the weekend, I have that ridiculously long Saturday about things I can't talk about. Oh, yes, you do. And then, what's the weekend after that? Uh, is there something the weekend after that? There is some, yeah, there is actually something the weekend after that. What is it the weekend after that? Porsche Esports Germany. That and, is right. Uh, NGK, NGK, Esports uh, Cup. You know what's My, even funnier about that Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Deutschland? Same, same round of the Porsche Esports Super Cup finale. The Super, yeah, right, I know. That is hilarious. Um, so I get to sit back and, uh, and enjoy it in Germany. Yeah, and I, I will be uh, uh, jumping from one Porsche broadcast to another, to another. We've got a lot of that coming up in the future as well. As Lewis mentioned, here on the Porsche Twitch channel, coverage powered by Racebot TV, Porsche Esports Carrera Cup Canada, and uh, Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada. We've got double dose of competition. And join us on Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, which at least for one more week, Lewis, is not going to be too early in the morning. Yeah, um, we found I've locked out work on Fridays from now, so it's a whatever. Um, is Pesk on a Saturday or a Sunday? Saturday. Season finale. Yeah, so yeah, but isn't, isn't Porsche Germany on a Sunday? No, the this season finale. is oh, okay. on a Saturday. Why wouldn't it be? That's, that's, that's the entire season's been way. on the Sunday, but you know, the first, yeah. Yeah, finals going to be on Saturday, I know. Yeah. That's a, that is a hard schedule, that is, when you could just leave on a Sunday and it's fine. 
Uh, I would highly suggest, by the way, if you are in Germany, based in Stuttgart, the Porsche brand store at, uh, in Stuttgart is going to be hosting a, uh, whatever you want to call it, a, a, a celebration of a, the season that has been. You can go and you can watch the action uh, from the Porsche store. Um, and I wonder what you'll buy at the Porsche store. Uh, I'm sure they'll have Porsche watches, Porsche shirts, Porsche pens. Not me. Are you not a, are you, do you not want a Porsche pen? Um, I'm already bothered about a Porsche pen. What do you take want a Porsche, Porsche watch? You a want Porsche? a Porsche watch? Oh, yeah. oh, no, actually, I don't. Do you know what? Okay, I don't want a Porsche. And this is this is where this is how I know I'm getting old. What do you think the reason is that I don't want a Porsche? Uh, Fuel mileage. <laughs> Genuinely, all I think about is I'm like, so I've got to drive this car to Walton Park. Oh, well, it's going to cost me this much in fuel. I'm like, God. Yes. Uh, that is such... Uh, that's, a, that's a ridiculous thing to be thinking about. You, you're not wrong, uh, is, is all I am going to say. Yeah, well, what's, what's the fuel mileage in your car? It depends. How many miles of the gallon does it get to? It depends on, on how heavy my right foot's feeling. No, normal drive down the, down the highway, whatever, I don't know what is over we'll, there. We'll get back to that in a moment, because finally we might have a chance to see a pass. It's been a while, side by side. Parker White, the long way around, and try to set this one up out of Sunset Bend to get the momentum into turn one. Wide exit from Cody Deeth, who gives the Audi a bit more room uh, than maybe I would have thought initially on corner exit. No move made. Action picking up. Yeah, indeed. Uh, these uh, these drivers, they don't care about their fuel mileage. They've already made their last stop. They've got themselves ready. They've got themselves in the window uh, to go on the attack uh, or, in some cases, on the defence as well. So you'll see the... Uh, Virtual coach car pull over to the left-hand side, take the defensive line down into two. Now hopping over the kerb on the uh, right-hand side, firing out towards Big Ben. There is going to be an opportunity. I mean, the pace advantage is definitely in the hands of the Williams Esports BenQ car, but the times isn't really... It's 24 minutes, yes, it sounds like a lot of time, but trust me, that will go very quickly if you don't get the move done instantly. And I think at this point, just trying to pressure a mistake out of Cody D. He realises that... If the 001 can place the car in the right place just to block the momentum, to block the lines, I don't think there's going to be the chance for, for White to take advantage. And Parker White has been a revelation in the last 12 months or so, just getting stronger and stronger, more confident on the road side of things. Last year, crew with the Apex Racing Team, and now with Williams alongside, they've got prototype traffic taking it three wide for a moment as through Tower Corner. That was the Kawanda LMP2 that got on forward. Cody Deeth holds the position for the time being, but nervy moments for sure. It was a good attempt. It's kind of one of those ones where you're, you're sat in there ruining the idea of lap traffic. Had there not been any lap traffic, I'm pretty sure we would see the position switch having already happened. Uh, obviously, these two fighting outside of the podium positions, but... Um, Still, it'd be, uh, it would be very frustrating uh, there for the Williams Esports BenQ car. Still plenty of opportunities to go. But like I say, all, uh, all that grid uh, the, the Virgil Coach um, car is going to do is just it's going to focus on holding nice, clean, defensive, predictable lines to make sure that, that car does not get an opportunity to pass. Into Sunset Ben one more time. Time is ticking away. 22 and a half minutes to go. We are estimated to hit probably just under 400 or so laps in this attempt. I'm not sure what the distance record is, but one thing I can guarantee you. We ain't hitting it. We're not breaking any distance records anytime soon with this raid. No, absolutely not. The uh, I think the, the, the time of distance records uh, are absolutely done in the world of, uh, of iRacing. Uh, unless we get incredibly fortuitous with some uh, some conditions uh, in a race with cars that are running pretty quickly. There is the uh, the 003 car rolling off of pit lane, second position uh, in LMP2. Yano Cock departing the lane. 24.8 seconds stationary, and that means you may be wondering where's Dory Sports, not even out of Sunset Bend and back to the line. It was a full 10 second delta between them in terms of uh, pit stop times and so I think grid and go now 21 minutes to go they'll feel pretty confident about holding on Lewis to that second step on the podium yeah which to be fair you know seems uh, seems just about right um, for the 003 car been good uh, all day LMP2 has been a very chaotic class I think the the main team that's probably sat there thinking about what could have been is probably the uh, the 199 the Apex racing team car that obviously had that incident with Standard Lannis I know there would be plenty of other ones but they were battling for the race victory and from that point on after, yeah, after that point which is in 
the opening hour and a half, basically, in the opening 90 minutes of the race. From that point on, Williams Esports Chill Blast have been in control uh, of this category, and comfortably so, even despite having a whopping stop and go penalty. Which, by the way, I got sent. A I'm sure you got sent the same video of. Yes. No idea where that came from. Uh, it, it was just the issue with the, the the car being, you know, considered out of the track because of the technical issues. It's unfortunate and it's a good thing they had the buffer that they did because otherwise we may very well have actually seen a change for the lead the uh, tighter exit for parker white there has almost looked as though for a moment cody deeth was going to be heading off to the tire barrier this is where as well if you're parker white you want to pinch the car you're fighting with really compromise it on the entry give yourself the chance to sweep around the outside carry more speed through the corner Whoa. but a big wobble parker white saves it but back into line Great attempt, though, from Parker White. Great bravery uh, from the Williams Esports Ben Car, but no opportunity to pass. Great defence being dished out there by Cody D. Uh, like, really, really nice attempt. Really, really nice attempt. Instantly on the uh, the replay machine. Then in hard. Problem is, just a bit of mid-corner snapping. I'm assuming it hit a bump, maybe. No, it just went just a bit too heavy on the right foot, to be honest. I don't know. That, that, that move wasn't going to work anyway, but... Um, Good catch, just got to say it. Had to go for it as well, I think. Absolutely. The the day, like, you haven't had many chances to pull alongside. When you get the chance, go for it, force the issue, and see what happens. Race leader is in, and Kenneth Goulbranson, I think what Williams Esports have done here is covered off any risk of a potential issue. Carl Janssen is going to take back over and leave the pit lane with 20 minutes to go to bring Williams Esports to victory in LMP2. Yeah, like I say, I think it's the right call for one. You're just covering off any uh, major issues. Also, Carl Janssen's not had any real technical problems throughout the day, so at least taking that one out of the equation um, as uh, clearly one of the two Kenneths um, on the grid now jumps out of the car. Kenneth's apparently a race car driver's name. Apparently so. Are there any actual racing Formula One drivers named Kenneth? I'm sure there are. There have to be. Like there can't be none. I don't. No. No. Surely not. Actually, I was going to say surely there'll be one in the 50s and stuff. But I don't think Kenneth was a particularly common name back in the 50s. So um, I don't one. really know. I've got Do one. You? Kenneth. You've, lo you've looked up list list of F1 drivers in alphabetical order. No, no. Let no. me guess the year. I literally just went F1 Kenneth. Um, so that was great. I guess, by the way, we should also have realized, technically it's not Formula One, but there is one great Ken that I promise, Kenneth, that I promise you know, and I've just pulled oh, yeah. it there. Yeah, no, well, yeah, as soon as you, as soon as you said yeah, Ken. I know. It's like, oh, right, yeah, Ken Miles, yeah, fair. Um, no, I'm going to say 19, whoever this driver is, I don't know, we'll figure out, but I say I'm going to guess the year uh, 1962 was when they did Formula One. That's what I you're going to say, 1962. No, this driver was born in 1957. So unless they drove an F1 car at Why not? age of five. Look, Max Verstappen's driving was driving it quite young. That's true, but not at the age of five, I would hope. Ooh! Whoa! Ooh. Dane Warren, like a bat out of hell, trying to make amends for what was a difficult start for him in that VRS Kawanda car alongside Lucas Perez. That was, that was scary. Bye. Lots of lots of connection uh, issues there. I'm going to blame Arjuna uh, for that because they both disappear at the same time. Um, but who knows? I wasn't checking about myself. Uh, no, who who is this driver that you're talking about? And when when, when do they race? Kenneth uh, Kenny Atchison. Kenny Atchison. Uh, I don't know how you say Aitson. Maybe that's how you say it. Where are they from? Northern Ireland. Oh right. Took where did they race? In eleven races, started three. 1983. Uh, there we go. There you go. Was Which that coincidentally was when Arjuna was born. Oh, I no, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be going on. Oh, Lewis, I'd be going on 40. I would not. I could not be in sim racing. Um, uh, no, I'm going to play golf. My, a good friend of mine, um, Greg Samfire, it's his birthday on Monday. It's his 40th birthday. We're going to play golf, obviously. <laughs> I, I already feel quite old in sim racing at 30. I don't want to think about what's going to be in another 10 years' time, uh, assuming that I haven't been run away from, from commentary. Still focusing on Parker White Cody Deep because, well, Dane Warren made that desperation lunge. Desperate Dane makes it happen. Uh, and now no one else really within a second or so of one another. So I have to just wait and see if Parker White can make a way forward. Desperate Dane, that's a good one, by the way. 
Desperate Dame. Goodness me, that sounds like a horrendous nickname. I'm going to call Dame Bed that. Desperate Dame. Yeah, I just realised what I've done. Full guy. Dame. Hashtag blame Desperate Dame. <laughs> I was going to say, it just rolls off the tongue as well. Yep. 15 odd minutes left to go. No rain again expected. The rain that we thought might be coming about 15 minutes beyond the race finish. It's almost looking like a bit of a certainty in some ways right now in terms of the percentage chance that we're seeing. But if you go and check out the radar, as far as I can tell, still no change, about as dry as you could hope for. Yeah, that is uh, looking pretty dull. Like I say, it's, uh, it's expected to rain 10.45 in game time. It is currently 10 minutes past 10 uh, in game time. So in about 35 minutes, uh, it will rain. Whereas if you look in the top left of your screen, 15 is slightly less than 35. Is it? That's what the, uh, the maths people tell me. Um, so, yeah, we ain't getting any rain in this race. But if you were doing the whole podium ceremony, um, I would ask to cancel it because uh, it's bedtime and also I don't want to get wet. Yeah, we would definitely be happy to do that. I do see a bit of damage on the left rear of the grid and go machine. I did think I saw some contact as well between these two drivers. So once more into Sunset Bend, are running out of time. They may get another seven or so laps after this one uh, with which to fight. But at some point, Parker White's moves going to become that a little bit more aggressive. Long side of the turn one this time by. He pulls out late, really opens up the entry. He tried committed around the outside once, got a nasty snap of oversteer. This time the car's settled. Much it better. contains its momentum and on the outside, not last of the late breakers, door to door contact through turn number three. Yeah, a bit, uh, bit of contact. It was definitely with the front wheels there was the brush there, but once again, uh, getting much closer to a potential overtake coming off from the Williams Esports BenQ car. Not quite able to, uh, to complete it, but certainly a good go. Uh, maybe threw it in a little bit too hard going down into turn two, and uh, the virtual coach uh, car was able to hang on. It's tough. Like you say, it's really hard to pass around here. Um, I do like the overtake, the, the attempt in two. T1, but it's such a hard move. And this is what we're talking about is that we said, well, you know, I, I said 24 minutes left to go. It'll feel like you've got a lot of time to play with. You really don't. Here we are 10 minutes later, half of that time basically gone, elapsed, and still you're sat behind. It takes a long time to get past. It's not easy. It's not easy. Identical cars as well. They may have slightly different setups, but I racing, you know, all the Audi RA GT3s in the field are identical, the amount of horsepower they put out, etc., etc. So I uh, don't have to be too, uh, too concerned that you have a bit of a dud car. It's more just about the setup that you bring. And, uh, one of the, 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 the lines and the release notes that was really amusing to just see was that I racing removed, I think it was a one in a million chance that your oh, engine yeah. could randomly blow. Hopefully no one too worried about that here today. Parker White again, not close enough to look to the inside into the final corner. No, but again, this is more about setting up the move down into T1. We'll go for the up and under and once again, we'll try and get to the outside. Uh, but maybe we'll try and sneak one to the inside, but no, surely uh, it's gonna have to be, it's gonna be forced once more to get to the outside of the circuit down to the first corner. Ooh nearly contact between the pair of them. Uh, surely this one's not going to work out. Picking up a bit of the uh, the marbling and running out wide now coming down towards turn two. This time it's closer, Arjuna. Maybe he is going to go for it. I got the traffic behind. He'll give it a good go. Will Parker White GTP stays out of trouble? It's the Drago Racing entry that's going to hold its hybrid power and kick it off the corner here. And still single file they'll stay as they work towards the hairpin one more time. Not close enough for White to have a good look under the brakes. Like we've seen a couple of late lunges come. They do have a driver closing from behind, but that is not full position. That is a car, I believe it might even be the Lamborghini of Reina Talvar. Um, well, no, it's an Audi. I was going to say, surely it's not. Um, but then again, I, what, I can't remember. I think it was on ACC once. I thought there was a Porsche and it was actually a GTR. Um, because at night time, lights are just shapes. And normally, with a lot of bloom, and you just guess. Yes, I was, I'll was. i be honest, I guess just because I saw the, the LED number board, 
I kind of saw it at an angle, and I saw I just, you know how the Audi's got it? Yeah. Flush? I just assumed it was the Lamborghini. Yeah, fair enough. Um, each their own. I, I will tell you, Reina Talvaz has come through the final corner. It's definitely ain't a part definitely of this. Definitely not yet, now. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, either way. Again, a couple of close attempts, but still 10 minutes and 50 seconds left to go on the clock. It's just not long. And again, uh, every, uh, every opportunity you, you, you go and you don't manage to work your way through, they're, they're, they're going to be painful ones to swallow at the end of the race. This could be a bit close coming down to the sunset. He's going one lap after another, just trying the same thing at some point, though. Uh, insanity, in some ways, is the, the definition of it. He's trying the same thing over and over and expecting results to change. Now, a lot wider. Cody D didn't have enough fuel. He comes to pit lane with 10 minutes left to go. <sighs> or is that a drive through penalty? Because I am. there is no way that is on fuel that surely is for incident points surely it's just disappointing isn't it well what a battle robbed back to podcast mode ladies and gents sorry we're getting so excited as well that was that was a good battle was, no in fact that was, that was for this time in the race that was a great battle well uh, well battled between the pair of them uh, very disappointing end to it um alas uh, the double one's not going to lose any more positions than where it is. It's just going to drop down uh, into fifth spot. But what an anti-climax. Yeah. That is actually kind of similar to the end of the um, of the uh, real Daytona 24 hour when they threw the checkered flag too early. <laughs> what an anti-climax. Or even, I guess, kind of Sebring this year, right, where we had the caution drop at the end of the race. And yeah. uh, I, I, I guess some will say ruin the finish but you know the fact that you needed the safety car is because we were having such a great finish anyway uh, there is I was gonna say, it's a little different is, like you say very different actually i guess there's the lamborghini marla racing team they sit what now 22 seconds off the back of gianni vecchio in the red line number 70 he's now within five seconds of nicholas mateo but it's not going to be enough to really see a fight for the lead you'd have to think the Lamborghini did seem to start to lose ground once we got into the nighttime running. Yeah, it's just maybe not kind of adapted to the slightly cooler conditions of the race surface. Um, don't know. Maybe um, maybe it's terrible strategy run. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> we just, just don't know. Uh, all we know is that uh, Drago Racing are, are leading the race. They're looking pretty comfortable with it. They're probably controlling the gap more so than anything else. It's fairly tight in the GTD category, but it's just at the point where no one can make a mistake. One mistake, and this is wide open. Uh, but for right now, yeah. The only the only issue that I, I don't expect uh, there to be a mistake from uh, Nicholas Mateo, but that's not the only place that a mistake can come from that would end their chance of being victorious here. It can come from an LMP2, it can come from a GTP, it can come from a completely outside source and they'll have no control over it. Right, yeah. Eight minutes left on this clock. Sun has been now set for going on almost two full hours. We've enjoyed these nighttime conditions that have seen some close action here and there, but for the most part, as Lewis mentioned, uh, you've been sitting through us uh, in podcast mode, so hopefully you haven't been too bored along the way, but as much excitement as there was going to be with rain, it's always a bit of a, a, a climax after that, right, where all that adrenaline is dumped. And I have to assume that for many of these drivers, Lewis, tomorrow, they're going to be drained. Yeah, but at least they get to wake up nice and early for Formula One to get aboard. Um, so, you know, every uh, cloud has a grey lining. Yeah. Look, is he fair? The Grand Prix might be all right. Who knows? Um, in all likelihood, it won't be, but it might be. The thing is, can't, as I say, I'm, just, I'm going completely off topic because now I'm going to go into an old man round about what they've done with Albert Park. Oh, no, don't get what me started with on Park? that. Don't get... They've made it, one good change, and you know the change I'm talking about, I hope. Which I actually still don't believe is, is that great of a change. Really? No. I think what they've done to reprofile one of the final cut the corner, not the final right. corner, but one of the final corners, that, that which is now a heavier, Yeah, I don't well, know. Well, 11 corner. now, isn't it? Yeah. I, I was going to say, I don't know the corner numbers, but that's the only good change they made to Albert Park. Um, yeah, I think it's no. 
I think it was better how it was. I think oh, circuit, I agree. Oh, I, I agree. Better how it was. Better how it was. was. Yes. The, th the thing is, right, is I sit here. This is this is, this is why I know it's old man talk, right? Okay. It's because Albert Park arguably races better now than it used to, right? Okay. But it is a worse track. Yes. Which is, again, such, such old mantle. He was like, yeah, but it, yeah, but it races better. And look at the F3 races. So, like, they've been crazy. And the one, the sprint race yesterday was so good. Um, and yet still I'm saying, I've been like, yeah, but the track's worse. Getting rid of the 9-10 chicane, Shaw has made that run into a very fast corner, way more dangerous. Um, but I guess better. But it's removed all the character. And making the circuit wider everywhere has just made it worse well they have to make it wider because we keep making formula one's car big uh, formula yeah, exactly. one cars bigger so what we should really do is make them the size of these hypercars which are compact packages i think drago by the way yeah they're gonna have to pull to the right hand side and come down the pit lane we have five minutes left on the clock oh does williams esports ben q have enough fuel to get to the end Have we seen many stints beyond 27, 28 laps? Well, I've done 28 laps. Um, in fact, pull up, pull up, the, pull up old, old, but old the, stint. The stint, problem stint with count. that is it's very difficult to actually figure out what's going on with it. Yeah, we can look. We do some. We can do some maths. It's fine. Okay, are you going to do the math? We'll do the maths. <laughs> what lap are we on right now? We're on lap three. Oh, I don't care about that. That's really matter. No, you we, do. I need to see. I need to see the previous two stints. That's the thing, though. You do need to see all of that. There three, you go. Three, yeah. See, look, three six three to three three four. Right, uh, we know we know it's on 25 laps, but 336 to 334 is 29. That's a 29 lap stint. Previous one was 28 before that. Previous one was 28 before that. Yeah, oh, I'm not talking Chill Blast. I'm talking Ben Q. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. But kind of the same thing. It was 28. It was it was, it was um, uh, 29 laps in the previous. They can do a 29 lap stint. Okay, I think Ben Q might end up being one lap short here. Three laps. They're Where's your 20, race leader? They're on 25. In towards Cunningham. Nah. Two to go this time by? Nah, I think it'll, yeah, I think, I think it'll be fine. They're on, they're on 26 now, so it'll be two to go from there. It'll so be it'll a be 29 laps. Three, so it will be on 29. They did 29 on the so previous day. right on the money. Yeah. Did they do 29 the previous day? They did, you're right. Yes. Thank you. God, I'm, I'm always right on this broadcast. How uh, dare you? Uh, how dare I'm, you doubt me? All I'm either. gonna say is I hope you're ready for Porsche Canada when you're not oh, gonna be able to make the cack, you're not gonna be able to make the excuses of oh it's early in the morning anymore because uh, after today I'm hey, thinking it's, it. it's way past my bedtime. I want to go to bed now. Oh, um, oh, oh I didn't want to wake up initially. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> you. Um, uh, yeah, got no words. Uh, I'm the I'm the maker of my own pain. Yeah, yeah you could you have go. you could have, you could have stuck yourself on for only two hours at the start of the race. Probably should have. Um, Duck, Mister Too Busy Blogging or whatever it is about football on. Yeah, get you and O'Leary to come and join us at Sebring so that we can talk about how much he wants to repave the entire track. Yeah, Which, by the it? way, have we gotten through 11 hours and 58 minutes without really bringing it up too many times? No, I brought it up twice. Okay, you did. Okay. Yeah, of course I did. Good. No, yeah, again, no, he's, 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 um, I can't remember what he was doing. It was something like, like live, but I can't remember what, it, what his It was role Tranmere was. Rovers, wasn't it? Tranmere Rovers and Crawley Town. He was, he was logging some football. So but yeah, so it's, it's like some blog or something, sorry, I don't know. So you and O'Leary, unfortunately not here to talk us through all of the racing action. Uh, instead, uh, his words describing to you, I'm sure, uh, do you know what the score was between I was and Rovers? Actually, I was literally about to look it up. I've really, part of me is like, I really hope it was a boring match. It was 3-1 to Crawley Town. Okay, so at least he had a fun match, it sounds like, to talk about. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, Crawley Town scored twice in the first 10 minutes. Tranmere brought it back then 10 minutes later. Uh, yeah, and then Crawley Town... We're talking scored. about the, the football that you play with your actual feet, by the way. If you're yes, because uh, generally speaking, if you're going to call a sport something like that, you should generally use the thing that you named the sport after. It, it's called it's called American football, though, because they run. American hand egg. American hand egg. Yeah, this exactly. doesn't have the same ring, but regardless. It's great, great name, though. One more lap to go. I mean, it started off as a wild 20, 24, Sebring 12 hours. 
the dryness has brought a little bit more calm and sanity into the proceedings of Windland Esports Tour Blast. One more lap around Sebring before they can go back to back here on the VCO Grand Slams in 2024. Yeah, really continuing on the old sweep. And to be fair, I don't hate seeing it. The, 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 the way they've been, it's been fantastic. Uh, and also it means that they can win in back-to-back -back, uh, VCO Grand Slams in two different liveries as well. And this one has no controversy about being brown. No, but it does have controversy about whether it's mint green, silver or grey, apparently. It's, it, it's, it's apparently dark mint green. Yeah, actually, no, actually, this is becoming a theme, isn't it? Colour controversy, yes. Yeah, with them winning a race with a car colour that's wrong, from what they've said. We've got a few of the race leaders overlapping right now, LMP2 and GTD leader on the on the bottom of your screen. I hope the Americans, by the way, don't uh, take too much offence to us poking some fun at... Oh, I don't care. Yeah, about football and soccer, because let's not forget the Europeans are the one that called it soccer first. And uh, yeah, if that makes the Americans oh, happy yeah. that we called it hand egg. I just wanted to make sure we were clear. We, we don't care. Enjoy your sport. All sport is great. Calling it soccer doesn't bother me that much. Calling it American football. Yeah, but it's just not, though. Also, calling it a touchdown <laughs> when you can just run into the area. Joke. This is the rugby side of Lewis McClay that is it coming really out is. as we come really down is. the Alban straight for the final time. I mean... We knew the rain would be the great equalizer. We didn't know quite what it would bring. It's brought victory for Williams Esports. On top of the success at Daytona 24, they continue the momentum. New livery, same form, same victory. It's Williams Esports Tour Blast victorious, not just in the GTP class and heading to the IMSA Esports Global Championship, but in the LMP2 class as well, as Kenneth Colbranson and Carl Janssen dominate across 12 hours of racing. Drago Racing, Nicholas Mateo as well as uh, his teammate in that number two car, Manuel Troncoso. Fireworks go off for them in what was a well-earned victory in the GTD class. Lewis, what a great way to get the new era of iRacing underway. Race of two halves, uh, and you know, one of those halves being filled with rain, the other one being filled with boredom. Uh, but it was still great to see. Williams Esports Chill Blast victorious and very, very deservedly so. Uh, Drago Racing keeping Team Redline at bay. Uh, I, I, and again, they needed a perfect drive towards the end there, and they got the perfect drive. Drago Racing on top of the GTD category, and again, very, very well deserved. But how many more tournaments can we throw towards Williams Esports so far this year? They have been absolutely fantastic, apart from whatever on earth this is. They're trying to make a baby Williams right now. A uh, combination of the GTP and the LMP2 car to be, like you say, very, very proud with the performance they put on and the drive that they were able to deliver over the, not just changing conditions, uh, but even across of the dry running, the relentless speed that they were able to build. This is going to be an interesting lap. No headlights. Oh Ooh, look at that. Um, yeah, this will, this will be an interesting one for Janssen. <laughs> Trying to do the in-lap in stealth mobile. I'm sure, to be fair, those two that were met in the barrage might, what car was that that's just driven past? Got one more car to come to the line and we'll get the results on screen. Hopefully get a chance to chat to some of the drivers as well before we can look forward to the next of our iRacing special events. That is it. All cars officially across the line. The fireworks have also come to an end as well. Let's take you down to those results where I take Kalpanen in. Uh, the Acura leads across the line by 36.3 seconds, dominant drive, and Williams Esports 2 for 2 in 2024 in the VCO Grand Slams. Charlie Collins, Vera's Kawanda, a call in the rain for the wrong tire may have cost them, but their Porsche was flying second for them. And then Matt Farrow, the third car and final car on the lead lap. It shows just how much some struggled in the unpredictability with this GTP machine. Dominic Coffin one lap down after that late pit stop. Race clutch in fifth position and then just in front of uh, fiercely forward and Dylan Strivens. Uh, VRS Kawanda second number 18 machine and then race clutch are the official final finishers I would say and then HS racing along with Parnell uh, just uh, puttering around at the back along with some others. BMW M Team BS competition, Brabham Esports Hissing Sid, Apex Racing Academy and then two Team Redline cars that both had big crashes through Sunset Bend. Hops custom by Drago and then Altus make up the top 17 of course and well 
big, big drama for many of them. LMP2, Carl Jansen, that margin of victory slightly brought down by some issues in the final two hours, but still 50 seconds clear of the gridandgo.com machine. And interestingly, not quite sure where uh, we saw the Door Esports car end off, end up, excuse me, falling away, but they don't end up finishing even inside of the top 10. Uh, Team PGZ third, VRS Kawanda fourth, Simu 5, PGZ second car through the top six, and then BS competition, WSI Esports, Butt Kicker eighth and ninth, and Shera Esports. The first time I've seen them in a prototype, uh, showing some speed on occasion and getting to the very end. Simu 5, Apex Racing Team, BS competition, Sim RC, Door, Grid and Go, and Brabham amongst the troubles. And I just wonder if seeing Jonas Wanner drop down to the very back of the grid, if potentially drive time infringement has me uh, meant they are not classified. We'll get you an update hopefully before we wrap things up. One more class, GTDs, where Nicholas Mateo and Drago Racing heading to the MC Esports Global Championship in front of Johnny Vecchio and Team Redline, who of course won at the Daytona 24. Reina Talva third for the Marlow Racing Team Lamborghini. Williams Esports BenQ, Virtual Coach Grid and Go uh, through the top five and all on the lead lap. And then two laps down for Drago Racing. Five laps down for Simify and then Apex Racing Academy, Williams Esports Tube Blast, as well as the Falcon Sim Racing Team, all do see the end. Drago, Door, Fire, Redline, Williams Esports Academy, and gridandgo.com esports. That's the look, top to bottom, at your race results. Don't feel as though we're going to get the chance to talk to any of the drivers, Lewis, unfortunately. So I guess instead, let's look forward to the next of our special events. I don't think rain's going to be much of a factor, but instead you've got two rip-roaring machines, that Nissan GTP, the Audi GTO. We're going vintage into racing for the Road America 500. Yeah, something crazy, something different, something a bit of fun. Uh, I'll, I'll see I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Love uh, events where we kind of dabble into the uh, the joys of what you can do with sim racing, kind of venturing to the, into the historic, but still done to the highest level. Uh, I do want to update you, by the way, the Dura Esports car that you were kind of alluding to, uh, I do believe it was a drive time issue. Nicholas Lowish was on the car, uh, but did not do a single lap uh, from, from the day. So, uh, yeah, uh, DQ. I did actually notice that he was registered. I was waiting for him to drive and he didn't jump in. That's a bit frustrating for them. And I guess that's not how they wanted the, this VCO Grand Slam to go. They wanted the podium. They also wanted to be able to fight and contend up towards the very front. Here's a look at the schedule that lies ahead because Lewis what a schedule it is we have a lot of endurance races at the start and then we'll really get to diversify in the second half of the year to explore motorsports dirt road dirt oval oval and endurance we get it all in the special event journey Indeed, uh, obviously taking some of those uh, best events from the world of motorsport and turning it into their uh, their sim racing counterpart a lot of uh, events in there that I'm um, kind of got my eye on a little bit obviously i'd love to do the indy 500 don't think i'll get the time to do so uh but uh still i'm, I'm sure i'll be uh, watching and uh, keep my eye closed on it obviously the spa 24 last year i have to give that one another go and uh hopefully you can have a run with fuel saving being a uh, not such an important factor if rain is going to be a factor for that one lewis though as we get ready to say goodbye closing thoughts from you i mean we had a wild opening two hours settled in after that i think in many ways you got to experience more excitement midway through the race i think now like you said though when we return to sebring 12 months from now teams drivers will have so much more information hopefully not as unpredictable it's the first stages of a very long learning process getting used to the wet weather here on iRacing yes i know everyone's uh, been playing about with it in various races in practice sessions and testing but taking part in the real thing dealing with it in an actual race very different kettle of fish uh, some teams have uh, dealt with it very well williams esports being the prime counterpart on that winning in two of the categories and realistically without the uh, dis uh, sorry the disconnection from the ben q car could have been the clean sweep today they are working well with the wet weather conditions everyone else has got to find ways of keeping up you say ways of keeping up but i think in a lot of ways when we make our way to those next special events that still lie ahead not all of them are going to have the rain it's these vco grand slams where at least initially the rain's going to be the great unpredictable factor for the team behind the scenes though thank you so much for joining us across 20 uh just not 24 hours 12 hours of uninterrupted coverage so much that it managed to scramble my brain this does not happen 
Cloud team. So thank you to all that have not just joined us on the broadcast, but those behind the scenes that have made it possible in the weeks and months that build up to it. So much work, so much effort, and we'll be back and ready to do this once again for the next of the VCO Grand Slams. That will be, though, as we head to upstate New York, to Watkins Glen. That's a ways away in the middle of the summer. But for everyone, thank you so much for joining us. The new era of iRacing is underway, and the rain had some surprises to tell here at the Sebring International Raceway. See you next time on the iRacing Esports Network. <laughs>